uh, was messing around with sound. I guess now I have the space running on screen. <laughs> it took a little bit. Well, you've got a lot. You've got like, what are you on Twitch and Kick today, or yep. just, and YouTube? Yep, yep, all of it, all of the above. And the um, CBD Twitter space, <laughs> like the CBD. <laughs> okay, I really suck at this job, you guys. I am not holding my weight. All I did was like make my coffee and hit the button. <laughs> Sin's gonna fire me. <laughs> No, it's all going according to plan. You're the star of the show. Uh, what, what's on the agenda today? <laughs> oh, let's let's talk world domination, um, creativity, um, hmm, like landing on the moon. I don't know. I don't know. For all dope shit, dope shit. I mean, speaking of dope shit, I, I know that uh, I think Yolanta shared this with me. It's happening today, and she has an exhibit for it. It's called, like, Audacity HQ. It's for, like, Women's Empower Empowerment Virtual Summit. And um, she's being uh, featured in one of those... Uh, uh, one of the exhibits so that's pretty cool uh she was uh telling me that after 5 p.m eastern she wanted to invite some friends to come check if anyone is interested oh that's awesome yeah do you have something to pin at the top i don't but maybe she does I'm hoping she pops in and talks more about it. I, I, I'm wondering if I did any justice for it. Maybe you should send uh, her a DM and be like, so, can you come talk to us? It's, it, it, yeah, it seems like uh, I forgot to uh, reply to a DM. I, I, I suggested her to come, but I, I forgot to reply after one of the one of the many casualties of my DMs. Rip. Ugh. Yeah, I have that but problem I will mess too. Like for some reason on my phone, all my all my DMs are like answered, and then now on my laptop, there's like ten on Discord that I that are showing me new messages. So if you haven't heard from me, um, there might be a reason. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to keep up with it. Yeah, I'm just going to message uh, her now. I mean, if she's around, she's around. She can come through real quick and just tell us more about it. And, uh, yeah, about it, maybe any other artists in there or uh, even who's putting it together. Like, you never know. Maybe some cool people can, can meet some other cool people. And then, yeah, magic happens. I did want to talk about, like, Art Week because I saw like a recent post by I think the Dow or Decentraland and then it was like okay it's on my radar like it's it's let's see it's just under a month away or a little over a month away um but I wonder if Yolantis is doing anything for Art Week or Julianne I don't know if you're doing anything for Art Week or anybody else in here I know it's still a ways away but kind of exciting that's the next thing on the radar I would be excited to know. I, I I think I've been seeing. I don't I don't know. I don't know if it's like bait or if it's actual real people. I'm waiting to actually like see them speak or have an, a conversation with them or you know an uh, an interaction with them to determine if they are human, proof of human. Uh, so. <laughs> But, but like from some of their comments or hashtags, they're like uh, tagging like Art Week and stuff like that. So maybe I'm maybe I'm being a dick to like some people that really want to talk to me Are or something. Are you talking about the people who have been posting on Twitter like about Art Week coming up and they're like new builders in Decentraland? Yes, perhaps. 
but the accounts are like very low following and stuff like that. Like, you know, it's like overnight they just started uh, yeah. fo- uh, retweeting everyone's posts and stuff like that. So, like, that's why I'm just like always like, you know, worry. Like, until I have that human experience, God, a person to person experience. Uh, with uh, with uh, them, then I don't like kind of confirm them as human yet. Well, you know, I mean, think back to our good cop bad cop convo uh, a few weeks ago. With somebody trying to enter the community, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm 99% sure you're a scammer. And Sin is like, welcome to Decentraland. How can we be of assistance? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, oh, check it out. You have some marathon stuff. <laughs> like, you, you, do you, are you an athlete? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, trying to make conversation, and Knessa's like, all right, now back to the serious stuff. <laughs> yeah, marathon runners, just because your body's releasing dopamine doesn't mean you don't want to scam us all, but turns out that Knessa was wrong, and so far this person's pretty nice, and I apologize, and just, you know, just, just, Mama Bear came out, and I'm like, I'm Decentraland is my. You guys are my cubs. I have to protect my cubs. Uh, good morning. <laughs> um, yeah, we briefly talking about may potential bots. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Art Week. Art Week's coming up. Oh yeah, you wanted to talk about Art Week. <laughs> um, yeah. oh, anything okay. in particular? Um, no, just like, I mean, Mesh is a part of it, and I've been seeing, like, if, if you guys know, like, Mesh, I think they had, I want to say they had, like, 15 judges, um, panelist judges, and if you look at the judges and, like, what they've done, there's some heavy hitters, like, I don't know, I was, like, getting, like, a little scared for everybody, like, like, oh my gosh, this is, like, whoa, um, and then somebody else, I think on the Twitter space was like, did you see who those judges are? Like, they, they brought in some, you know, some pretty pretty big people um so there's that and then just seeing people like build for the mesh fair and you know like learning the i don't know somebody was posting like how they built it in sdk6 and now they gotta turn it over to sdk7 so i think there are a lot of new people coming in and building for that and like it was cool because the the sentiment i got from their posts are like they're super excited that they can be doing this like they're excited that they're able to put something 3D in the metaverse. So I don't know, that, that like excitement, motivation is kind of refreshing and just like the new pair of eyes. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I guess I, I'm, I'm hoping I can build something for Art Week. And so that's where I'm just like, I think we, like, I guess I was thinking about it before this space started. We could spend four hours talking about the DAO and the freeze and blah, 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 VP equity, like all this stuff that really doesn't change. And we, we were talking about it a year ago from now or we could talk about like what can what can we really be in charge of and like the next thing on the radar is art week so like how are we pushing the boundaries with what decentraland can do because you know you can just put art in a frame and put it up on your your wall in your build but like how can we move past that how can we like push the boundary and, and make it like something that you cannot do in this world or or in like you know any other metaverse world like are we doing that? Are we like pushing the artistic boundaries? <laughs> so yeah, stuff like that. Push the boundaries on, I mean, first what needs to be established is what is the product that we uh, have? Like, you know, I, I, I feel like in one of the all hands, uh, Yamel has no, uh, like mentioned, it's like, okay, so what is uh, the central lands, uh strength and then he mentioned something about being like the only uh inner like you know 90,000 parcel uh inner synced metaverse out there so it's like okay so what do we do with that um <laughs> so yeah i mean i uh, think of like what does decentraland do differently like we don't have to solve all the problems but like what do we do differently and I don't know, like i try to make mental notes when I find something that it's like, aha, like, yes, this other game is way fun, way more fun. But um, if I rage quit, I can't sell my Fortnite skins. <laughs> I can sell them here. Let's see, last room, there's 
it looks like it bounced you down. So try again if you can. Hey, good morning. Back. Um, no, I just <laughs> want to jump up quickly and just shill IWB and see if that was a and if there was a way to maybe build for the art week inside the Inworld Builder, and then um, like export your scene for the foundation to deploy. That could be something interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, gosh, I mean, there's so many different ways that you could do that. Like, I'm thinking traditional artists that, you know, if I'm an NFT artist and I hang my NFT on the wall, it, you could make an awesome gallery, but then you could also use your assets in the in-world builder to create, like, organic, totally new art out of the scene itself. I could, so, like, two different ways you could see that happening. Yeah, because I think, um, like, it'll probably have to be SDK 7 for the art week i think we should just i would love to get in touch with bay actually if you if you know bay or something that would be great because um like our builder would be basically sdk7 so you can just drop in your model if you're like a 3d artist and you don't know how to program and then you can just export it and say hey foundation here's this like programming file i don't know what to do with you know yeah i wonder if um what, yeah, I wonder if they could lend us some land. Like, I get that the, you know, Genesis Plaza, the whole art plaza, that's done. That's taken care of. Like, people are building on that right now. But I wonder if there's other areas, other land, or even, like, even landowners like myself. Like, I could let people deploy on land, make, like, a grassroots effort. Like, hey, if you have land, you know, deploy all these scenes and make it almost like an art walk of the inward are, building. Are they not doing an art plaza again? No, they are, but I think everybody, oh. like, the the window to get into that closed, I want to say, like, a month and a half ago. So the, the artists oh. that are coming there, that's already, they're already chosen, they're building, yada, 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 you know, and Mesh Fair, they're already chosen, like, so this would be outside of that. Which what, I if, think what if we did this? Do we know somebody that's signed up? Or could we talk to Bay or Shibu and basically do a one-by-one -one portal? So in Art Week we portal to um a world maybe maybe it could be <clears throat> somebody's iwb world or the builder world lobby or we do uh, iwb art week and everybody can build you know something like that basically just have like a, a one by one scene in art week that portals to community art week yeah so let me ask this because there's nothing like putting a bunch of work on at the last minute after you've already taken on too much world could Derek or somebody make us a portable experience where you would have like, where it would literally like walk you from scene to scene or something if they couldn't, if they couldn't do that, which I think they, they could, but it would be so cool if a portable experience, like you got to the scene, you're looking at it and it like opens up a, like, I just love to know I, who the artist, like more about the artist, like who are they? What is this scene? You know, what was your inspiration? Something like that. Like, uh, like enrich the experience even more. But I yeah, don't know. I mean, totally possible. I don't know what they have planned for Art Week. Um, you know, if like there's a way that when you visit an installation or a build that the artist info is popped up, I'm not sure. But that's definitely possible. Is that something that you guys could put in? Like, I just don't even know, um, you know, with smart assets in the scene. Um, is that something that you could put in in World Builder so that people could kind of have that as a trigger point that pops up? I don't know. Like, am I, I'm bring, I'm thinking about it as I'm talking. So I'm like, yeah. That so um, okay. So like, to a couple things. You know, I think I do, in World Builder would be cool for people who are 3D artists that don't want to download software, that want to use SDK seven, so they can drop in their asset, they can upload it, and then. Um, it's, it's in world and they can place it in world. And so then they're like, okay, well, I don't know how to program. This is great. They click export and they get a zip file. That zip file <clears throat> is essentially their scene, which they can give to the foundation because the foundation probably has to deploy to the, um, the plaza, but in their scene, they can totally put an NFT frame or a picture or anything with a little hover. Um, it can say what they are, or it can click out to a link. Um, there's many ways to do that. That would be awesome. Um, so this is March 26th through 29th. So we, we literally have like a month. Yeah, I, I think the cool, let's try to get Bay and let's see if two things, 
one we can get a one by one in art week you know or maybe even um um like be a part of somebody else's scene already that can uh, be a portal to a community world like for all the people who didn't make it in the plaza i love that i mean i think there's no reason that anybody that wants to create art there's no reason that they can't be shown and exhibited i mean i think everybody should be able to be included you know like i mean i get that there's the plaza and that's limited space and they you know kind of kept it to just a certain amount of um, parcels but i think that would be an awesome way to do it i think i think also the way that bay described it is there might be galleries in the plaza that would be showing typical like put on the wall nft art so if anybody is um you know typical put on the wall nft kind of art person maybe also get in touch with Bay. but um i'll start some dialogue and see see what she thinks i think that that would definitely be something that we could see happen okay cool yeah that's all i wanted to mention yeah so there's the um the contest for the in-world builder i've been seeing some awesome um tweets about that i saw bubble gums it's like filled with candy and sugar and sweets so of course i love that um what is can you tell us a little bit about i think the deadline is closed right oh um yeah sorry i was actually just about to step down but quickly yeah. um yeah the, the build competition is done um now voting ends tomorrow so anybody can jump into the builder world lobby and go teleport around to the 23 different build their scenes and cast their vote um, and you get three votes so you can sprinkle them across multiple scenes um, and we don't reveal who received the votes until the very end and the winner uh, so t after tomorrow the voting will end and then on Friday we will announce the winner for the competition and it's been really fun we've learned a lot we found some bugs and that was the whole point of it um, is to sort of have public beta testers help us out and they did immensely and the tool is uh advancing super quickly um and there's been some amazing builds like actually amazing things um i don't want to favor anybody but definitely go in there and check them out because i was blown away at the creativity <laughs> that's awesome um let's see uh, is rustan entered yes i think he is so therefore <laughs> no rustan just makes everything like he touches pretty darn awesome and I did see his too so okay cool that is awesome to hear yeah and just lastly on that we'll have more competitions we'll follow up in a couple weeks with another um, we're still finalizing the details but um, it'll be multiplayer um, so you'll have a team that you can build with and you'll have um, a larger um, spot so maybe like a three by three or a four by four and we're thinking of toggling off the scene limits which is unique because we we impose sort of like dcl build limits per parcel but it doesn't make sense it doesn't matter because it's in our own world server so we can sort of blow it out of the water and see how creative people can get um so uh that'll be our next competition multiplayer you'll be able to use custom assets uh so really elevating the next competition to, to more dynamic content. It's going to be super interesting. But for this competition, it's already done. Rusan said he doesn't want votes. Um, he's a part of the team. So we have some team members from IWB who uh, built things. Uh, I guarantee my scene will get zero votes because it's just a bunch of Minecraft boxes with an, a door that opens. So um, please do not waste your vote on that one. Or on Rusan's, even though super creative, um, you know, just quickly took an escalator and stretched it out and makes it look like a, a staircase. Um, there's some other ones, Nianki, Bubblegum, uh, Hayabusa, Mariana. Um, I mean, there's, there, there's, there's some amazing ones, um, amazing creativity where you wouldn't think that like, oh, wow, that, that wasn't one asset that was multiple. So yeah, we're, we are really excited about the competition. We have more coming. Um, we want to get more people building. We have big plans for what IWB can be and hopefully we'll sort of circle back to what you were talking about before I came on which is you know what is I what is Decentraland sort of help identify the identity and maybe add some more features to uh, 
you know, what's available to an expanded user base. Yeah, absolutely. Will will any of those be themed? Like I know a lot of times contests they'll, they'll have like a, a theme that you have to stick to. I'm just curious from the the creative yeah. side. That's a that's a good point. The first one, you know, we didn't want a theme because we kind of wanted people to just like get in there and sort of faffle around and tell us what's wrong and see what they could build. The next one might have a theme, but <clears throat> you know, elevating uh, the potential with multiplayer, bigger scenes, maybe no limits, custom assets. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any ideas or thoughts, like what theme they'd like, sure, please shoot us our way, and we could we could possibly outline it. I like that for the next one, you might, but you would do teams, like getting teams to work together. Cause I feel like that's how brands and that's how like real teams come together in the metaverse. They like, they're like buddies that see each other at Wondermine. And then they're like, Hey, you want to do that build that game jam? And then they like do a game jam together. And, you know, two years later, they're like a business that is doing that. Um, and on that note, it would be cool if everybody that did your next one just put their name in a hat and you like dis you select the teams or somehow like even even like put new builders that have like, you know, no experience, put them with like a mentor team or something so that so that you'd be like facilitating kind of these these other groups of people that then, you know, in turn learn to work together or maybe somebody new that would love to do it but it's pretty intimidating you know to i mean if i want to if i if if i heard that like rustan and brandon and kj were on a team together i'd be like i quit <laughs> not even starting you know so yeah. like, new users maybe they'd be like intimidated to go yeah. up against these giants <laughs> well that's a good point um i think you know what we, we well firstly we did everything in world right the, the signing up the voting um, the building, obviously, but we're not exposing any of the voting or anything. And people in this one, it's pretty easy to see who, um, who's, who has build rights, who's, who's building. Cause it's just one person on a team. So when teams get created, we will have to figure out how we do that in world where it's anonymous. So maybe KJ Bruston and Brandon all get on a team, but we don't know that team per se. We just know that, you know, or they know that their plot is over here um and you know maybe they come up with a team name or something we'll have to figure out how to do that but i don't think you would know who is on other people's teams per se um but yeah the team building is awesome that's what iwb is really cool not only can you see other teams building but you can actually build with other people live and so that's what we want to do for the next competition and then you know iterate into the future with more things in Decentraland that is more like what's happening in the metaverse realm right now. So we're super stoked on that. That is awesome. And I did see Mariana threw up a heart. Really, Mariana, I'm trying to get Survivor going. I'm trying to get like in-world builder Survivor and like every week, like there's just cutthroat, somebody goes to Exile Island, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. And there's just so many, so many different ways to make it, you know, fun and user friendly and just, I don't know, it's uh, it's good to bring people together in this uh, stage of the game. Yeah, thank you. Um, we're, we want more feedback. We want more people to use it because we have big, big plans for what IWB can be. Um, it is the only in-world building solution right now. And so we want to make it the best one possible. So yeah, these competitions help. And they also hopefully bring in new people in terms of uh, creativity. And then, you know, building in, in teams as well is, is something new um, in, in real time too. So as, as a programmer, it's pretty isolating. Um, you know, I program by myself. I <clears throat> send something and I say, okay, Madamus, that's done. He says, okay, cool, last room. I just did my thing, that's done. And we don't see it until you know, I download it on my computer and then run the scene. I'm like, oh, wow, yep, what you did works, okay. And it's very isolated. Um, so IWB hopefully will make that a more cooperative, collaborative experience. Yeah, that is awesome. I, I do like that ability with other platforms where you can, you can like build with somebody in your scene, actually you can like destroy them you can like mound land on top of them and don't worry they pop out but it it is kind of fun to me <laughs> like to um it's it, you're a little closer to being god than in um 
yeah, like the wor- the world builder in the traditional builder tool does feel a little bit more, you know, disconnected. You make the scene, you deploy it, you load in, you take a look at it and you come out again. So I think, I think people are going to want, uh, they're, I think they're going to ask for that more and more, just um, the real world ability and then building with others because yeah, building as a group is a, a challenge at best. Cool. Thank you for the time. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Hopefully we'll see something come from that. I don't want to overload Bay, but I, I feel like Bay probably will ex- invite it with open arms. And welcome, I see some new users. Make Jared, Jay, good morning, good morning. Judas, Kronos, 044, Sax, Waifu, Mies, Kenji, Mosca, Jim, and sins alt <laughs> welcome everybody it, it is our alt yeah good uh good morning everyone or good afternoon uh thank you for popping in and uh all all of you on the central land looking drippy i oh i even see bitfiend over here in the corner i didn't i didn't catch him what up bitfiend <laughs> it's so good to see all it's so good to see all of you thank you for coming um <laughs> I, I like how today we're all kind of um sophisticated and we're sitting on the chairs or like on the floor like all in a circle like looking good <laughs> this is the boardroom meeting uh, well wait somebody's passed out on your lap what is up with that <laughs> uh, he he said uh wolf wolf in the chat so i am I'm guessing he is a dog. I thought he had uh, one too many last night, so and needed a rest. But <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on, but I I don't judge. So it's it's all good. He looks comfortable. He's safe. He's among friends. So that's what matters. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Jim is still uh, crushing those cove. Uh, those Cove beers brought to you by Knessa and Rustan. <laughs> I saw Jim um, eating some cake. He sent me a little video um, after that amazing, amazing party. And he was just eating cake, just just slice after slice. The guy, he's never full. He's, he's got an insati- insatiable appetite. You should eat, see him eat paella. He's an animal. I know, I know. Jim is the most underrated. He, Jim is my spirit animal. And you, Kenji. Yes, you guys are both my spirit animal. But I, I, I appreciate Jim so much. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I guess I did find some more information on Audacity. Um, uh, Yolant, the, um, what do we call it? The exhibit that Yolantis will be featured in. It is on on cyber. Ah. So, so yeah, I mean, would be a good opportunity for some of you to uh, to bust out the <laughs> the headgear and uh, head over to on cyber and you know check out Yolantis's thing. I was just so hurt to know that my like headset won't work in where Rustan is trying to take me in what, Horizon Worlds because it's too old because it's five years old. I'm like paid five hundred dollars for that thing, and now I can't go in there. So I wonder if Audacity would work. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we need. How we need a VR expert. Doing? Good morning, Jared. How are you today, Sinful? Sorry, I'm a little late. <laughs> Lilu says hello as well. Have, oh, hello. Has, any, has anyone read the 49-page document attached to the uh, draft for DAO strategic framework yet? Because it has like 3.6 million yes votes, but I none of not not from anyone I talked to, for, uh, besides Fez. And Fez is also. Well, Hugh, Hugh Pow? I don't talk to Hugh Pow, but I don't know them. But I was going to say, everyone else seems like they're sus. Like a landlord Dow, Dingia, Coalition. I was just like, does anyone actually read this thing? Because it's so long. It has an important sounding name. 
I was just wondering if anyone has had been able to set aside an afternoon to do that, or has any intention of it, or if I have to do it. Because I want someone to tell me what it says. I, I, I have not. This is actually the first time I'm hearing about it. I have not touched out <laughs> in the can't last you, week. Can't you ask ChatGPT to just summarize it in a 500-word essay? Well, the problem is, is it's too. Like, you could if it wasn't forty. Like there's a there's a link to an attachment that is, which you actually have to go to the governance page. You can't even actually. I don't even know if you can see. It. Oh, there it is. It isn't. It is also on the forum, I think. But uh, ChatGPT has an input limit, and I believe forty nine pages is well beyond its input limit. So I'd probably have to like break it down into like section or subsections each to like really get a. And then by that point, ChatGPT would have fed me, you know. 15 pages, which I then have to get chat, a new chat GPT instance to summarize so that it would be something actually easily digestible, I feel like. It's so long. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, I, I imagine that, like, a, a comprehensive DAO strategic framework probably does require lots of pages, but I also just could see it being very easily just, like, you know, padded and designed to be cumbersome to read so that they can slip some kind of shenanigans through, because... You know me, I love a good conspiracy theory. Well, I mean, could you ch could you upload it one, you know, max yeah, I, limit of chat GPD and I mean, I would- I guess that is the better, I guess that's a more respectable option than hoping that Sinful will read it and then tell me what it says. <laughs> but it, it, it is very, I think Mimsy was saying they might read it. I'll have to get, was, you know, to be fair, it's, uh, sorry, sorry. Oh no, it's 35 pages long, I guess. I was misremembering when I thought 49. It's only 35 pages long. Still, still way too long. 50% or 30%. Ooh, Mies has read some of it. He's got a comment on it here from December 22nd. Mies, come tell me about it. Are you in here or did you just like my tweet about the space? You're in here. Mies also commented in this document, so maybe Mies has read some of it. Other than that, it's just like Lord like. Uh, Fez and Juan, which I'm not actually sure is Juan Pom, which which is, I don't know which one Juan Castellinelli's name is in Discord, but I think it's one of the GSS. But anyway, I guess. Yeah. What's, what's up? So yeah, I've read some of it. I think I read about half of it so far. I kind of had a lot of other things for our projects to work on, got sidetracked, but I did get about halfway through it. Um, I will say that, so, you know, it seems to be an all encompassing kind of just document that gives overview of things in addition to, you know, obviously suggestions for things that, that want to be done in the future. Um, I would say that some of the things in the first half that I read, um, some of it's like data and out of the data, you know, some of it just, it's like they copied and pasted from other documents that are other places. And, you know, even the, the information that's in there, it is probably the best information as far as like, I'm talking about the data that's out there at the same time, you know, the accuracy of that data is, I don't know, it's not really the best I would say, but it's the best that we have, if that makes any sense. You know, it's like when people go say, oh, there's 38 users in Decentraland, uh, it's kind of like not that bad, but you know, it, it's not, as accurate as you know it would probably we would want it to be but at the same time there's not really a better way to maybe get more accurate information easily but it so pretty much i guess i'll say a little more about it so you know i'm not looking at it right now i'm just remembering from i think i read it like a month ago so just so everyone knows they originally brought this up i don't know you see when i wrote you know that date the comment on there um this is probably over a month ago originally when they put this out there and they had like a strategic working group, I think, and they had put it together and they created this document and then they were asking for input for the community. I want to say it was around new year maybe. And so yeah, you, you commented on, I think the 22nd, I said, let me walk back to my computer. I was just yeah. So it was like during head. the holidays, it was like Christmas and new years. And then like the 8th of January or the 10th of January is like when, they stopped getting input from the community, which most people were still on vacation probably. And then that was kind of like the end. And so that's the document that we have today. And so I really think only like four people, maybe maybe there's more commented. I saw only a few other people that had comments on there or recommendations. Um, 
but pretty much it looks like it's a lot of copy and pasted documents from things that already existed that were already done within other working groups or the core groups in the past and then just kind of putting it all in one place together and then adding some additional things from what i could see okay so in conclusion the 39 pages aren't quite as intimidating as i feel like they would be because there's a lot of graphs and charts that's good to know uh and so we're saying yeah so okay well the good news is is about the, the governance process is it's like in the draft stage is still you know ample time to give your feedback and thoughts on it it's not like you know not it's not like the draft is set in stone per se so you know we can still you know give thoughts and input into it because and I, and I think it's for the uh, best that more people manage to motivate themselves to because like things like the code of ethics which i think we all agree like in theory is like a nice idea but like also if you actually like when i actually got to reading it you're like wait a minute like some of these things kind of contradict themselves or some of these things don't necessarily like actually properly articulate what you're trying to accomplish fez um and i like fez i don't want any he's he's very nice he's always been he's only ever gotten too irritated to talk to me one time and in his defense you know most people get their way sooner so and especially the people who have ever banned me from a forum for a year um I'm not, but anyway, I would, I would, my, my gut instinct is though, is that the, uh, like three million yes votes besides Fez and probably Lord like probably did read the document he wrote. I suspect Landlord Dow, Dingia and few in Dingia didn't necessarily uh, give it a thorough reading of all 39 pages. Cause I think, I think a lot of people just think like, oh, like strategic framework. That sounds like a thing we should have. I vote for it in the same way that they read code of ethics. That seems like a thing we should have, but then you, you kind of just like, uh, you know, you glance at it, you kind of imagine it for yourself. You're like, oh, like, here are things I, like, I, of course it's going to be logical and have everything I would want it to have. And then you're like, you know, six months later, they're like an action is being based on it. And you're like, oh, wait, like, I don't necessarily know if that's, that's reasonable. So it would be cool. But it's so like, it, I absolutely understand why absolutely no one would actually want to do it. I feel like that's why DAOs are such a like tricky, like cumbersome and like hard to make a really solid tool with just because it's like never ending school board meetings you know and like and like your children's education isn't at stake it's just like you know it's hard to like really motivate yourself to care about never ending code of ethics strategic planning documentation when like you know especially when most of us don't have you know millions of dollars invested in mana or you know the outcomes of the DAO necessarily so it's uh it is hard to stay constantly motivated Especially when, like, when you do come up with ideas, often it's much easier to get people telling you exactly why your ideas are trash versus, like, you know, solid suggestions on how to improve it. So it can be a very exhausting process. I so. do want to add, so you were mentioning, like, 30-something pages. Uh, you know, obviously, using different Zooms is, you know, you, you get different page numbers or accounts. Oh, but, that would have, that, that might have explained something. But, but really, there's more than that. Like, I want to say there's 49 plus, there may be even 50 something or 60 pages. And so there's different sections within there and it's kind of hard to see, but they have like a down arrow that collapses a whole section. And so some of the sections were collapsed in the document. For me, I just un kind of like unwrap them. And, you know, I'm about 50 pages right now and I, there's probably more that I can unwrap there. Okay, so I wasn't crazy the first time when I said it was 50 pages and then I backtracked. Oh, yeah, it was okay. it was a hefty document. And yeah, it's it's pretty hefty. Which, I mean, it does, it, it makes sense. Like, uh, but that, at the same time, I also think that perhaps from a um, system, like from a creating it and incorporating the community, it might make more sense to have kind of piecemealed this across maybe multiple proposals. Because like you really just you really just can't expect most people to invest the time needed to give really thoughtful analysis of a 50 page document that spans, you know, uh, analytics, financials, grants program. I guess I should just read that one first. Um, you know, compliance. There's actually a section in the strategic framework called strategic framework, which feels potentially like a flawed um, yes. Well, it's it, they, they call it strategic planning is the I think the document, but the uh, oh, strategic right, framework. Right. Yeah, that's the, the, the framework the, for the, the, the planning. The grant proposal or the the DAO um, draft is called DAO strategic Fram framework dash plan. Uh, so you're right. I guess it, the document itself is the decentral and DAO strategic plan with a subsection for the framework. So it's and to be fair, 
that's probably just like a language barrier gap thing because like Fez is Ukrainian and living in Germany. It's not Fez, um, Lord Like, LL as I like to call him because I think Lord Like's a real douchey name. Uh, I just don't like to call anyone. Anyone who gives themselves a godly name, I try to abbreviate that as much as possible. But yeah, but anyway, you know, and, 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 and you know, Fez is in Argentina. His first language is Spanish. He's pretty good at English, but it's, there's going to be a, the occasional like uh, misuse of the language. So it's not necessarily a huge deal, I guess, but uh, it still seems like a flawed. But anyway, uh, I don't know. It just seemed important and like the kind of thing. But it's so boring to talk about. And I really can't imagine that this space ever getting 100 people to listen to us dissect and discuss the merits of the uh, 50 some odd page DAO strategic planning document. But I was hoping someone else here had read it. So I'm glad Mies has so he could at least, you know, shine some light on for me. I'm, what, Fun fact, what, though, your uh, comment was at 420, so I'd like to think you were a little stoned maybe when you read it. There you go. Perfect. So, uh, you know, another thing is that, you know, I would look at the sections and say, okay, you know, if you only have so much time, you know, there's certain sections maybe to focus on, and maybe those are going to be, like, strategic framework, compliance, uh, maybe, you know, governance, um, and then you know, something like that. And I would say, depending upon what else you feel otherwise, you know, go from sections there. But really, the first, like, four sections um, are pretty much just information that's not really going to be, I don't know, it, it's not really decision-making stuff. It's just things that are information. And so it's just going to be reading tons and tons of information. And then you may see things that are like, oh, well, I mean, you know, what I know and what this says are different or whatever it is it may be. And that's what I was talking about for the information, you know, being a little different. And so, you know, I would say maybe even just start at like governance or platform and, and go from there. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of my recommendation because reading 50 pages, even if like I did in one sitting, I read half of it or something. And it was, it's a lot to read. Well, we, so we got to get Dax and the guys from Atlas Corp to go hit up the analytics section. We got to get Mariana. She's still out there. We got to get her to go read. And I think she left. She's like, no, they're going to try to make me read. We gotta get her to hit up financials. We gotta get uh, we gotta get uh, all the different expertises. Uh, marketing. We gotta get the you know the, the last lights marketing team people. We gotta get M and Dr. Drip in there. I don't know if Dr. Drip's on the marketing team. I guess that might be it. But anyway, we gotta get the we gotta. You're right. We gotta diversify our skill sets and have uh, zone coverage here. That's the that's the metaphor I'll use. But, uh, I, I was thinking, I was ca thinking like some uh, Captain Planet type shit. Absolutely. But, our, with our powers but, combined, we are Captain Saban now. Are we <laughs> making a book club? Like, is that what it, it could be? Like a book club? Everybody read it and come back and share your notes. I mean, it, it, it is absolutely novella length, so I it definitely. Uh, definitely can see that uh, I guess the question is also why does it need to be voted on does, is there actually like a is there actually like any binding things so like a section it has like a section for the weaknesses of the grants program I'm like does that need to be solidified through a DAO process that we all just agree on what are the weaknesses of the DAO process as articulated by an accomplished DAO draining accomplice he said slandering another person potentially it's not slander if you believe it's true by the way even if it is a lie as long as you think it's true you can't at least if you're in the united states i just learned the other day that it's way easier to get sued for slander and libel in like the uk and britain specifically so if you're british be careful but if you're in the states as long as you believe what you're saying is true you're safe you're fine don't sweat it now don't go don't go spreading lies to hurt people that is in fact libel and slander very hard to prove still in the states but if you believe it's true no matter how wrong you are you are protected by the law in case rob l ever threatens you <laughs> well uh well, well I'll, I'll keep that one in my back pocket just in case uh, uh not that i ever slander anyone or whatever but yeah no i mean you believe it when you call people down down draining scumbags so you know you're fine yeah. I actually, I, I truly do. I truly do. <laughs> so, oh, looks like we have a request. Welcome back, Lastrum. 
Hey, I just had a quick question, completely not what we're talking about, but wanted to get the group's opinion since a couple more people are here. Um, in terms of grants, should, is it better to talk about a grant on a space like this, get community feedback, put it in a grant proposal, or do like a draft, kind of like that advertising platform, and then get the feedback and put it in a proposal, or go into the proposal, just go for it with your plan, and then address issues in the comments? Hmm. I feel like stuff like this, like, like spaces like these are a little tricky because like sometimes like if, if someone comes in here and starts like pitching their grant, let's say, like it may become like, uh, like a thought that like we are supporting that grant and like Kinesa and I both have like, you know, the big delegations. So, it, you know, we on it or I, I like even speaking on a personal level, I don't like to like if there's someone that is asking me asking for a grant i don't our relation or for the moment while that grant is up our relationship is like you are asking for money like i any nice gestures that you might do to me like for me might be due to for because of my vp uh so like <laughs> which, which like it happens more often than not and i like you know yeah yeah it, 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 feel, it feels icky when like the, the 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 gift is like shoved down your throat and you're just like thanks but i'm still not gonna vote for your grant proposal but it... i i do think that it depends like on your goal for the grant like if you're looking for genuine feedback i still think i think like both all of the any of the systems for feedback i think coming to the space makes sense like i agree with like simple like if you're hawking it like the hard sell that would probably not necessarily go as well but i think that like genuinely looking for feedback and like and this is definitely a good place to get the like you know to become like you know present things and like get the ears of people with huge you know vp like there's at least what at least at 1.5 million probably at least 2 million vp sitting in this you know in this call of like 22 people so it's definitely a good place i think to you know you know you know, from a from a political perspective, you know, because the DAO is inherently political as much as that's irritating and awful for most of the introverts here to think about. Uh, I think that yeah. there's a logical choice. Okay, but no, I, yeah. it would be it wouldn't be hawking it. Um, it would be like getting the concept to everybody, like what Jared was saying, getting genuine feedback, and then putting the proposal together to make it the best possible, so that it would be what the community wants because it's it's their feedback but i i just didn't know what was the best uh, solution going forward okay okay i i was even going to kind of even suggest like a twitter space that is hosted by the dao um i mean if they have the resources for it or whatever um that that would be kind of like a good spot to kind of put it all together um i yeah uh uh but but like yeah you, you're uh i i misinterpreted whenever you uh whenever you asked the question you you were referring to like you know bringing the the proposal up from scratch like all of us together with uh inputting you know what we feel would be right or whatever um, yeah yeah I, I mean it's a great idea and also i mean one one thing i would say it's like Perhaps maybe it could even be a segment or something like we would want to be mindful for to those that like don't want to hear about uh, proposals like 24 seven stuff like that. Well, and I think it depends on the project, too, because I, I, you know, there's some new projects that write proposals and they they might not know, you know, just kind of some of the basics that if somebody's been voting in the DAO for two years, they know like, okay, you, you know, probably should have your name minted to start off with. So sometimes we've had people come in here and asking questions and we can give them like really helpful feedback. Um, so I guess there'd be, you know, like just even that, that basic like nuts and bolts of like what makes a good grant, what makes it successful. Um, when Oddjob and I did the FAF, not the FAFO, but the, the, the dead reckoning session um and on a grant there were like so many good questions that came up that um people hadn't considered and so it was really interesting just to give like 
I don't know, I'm only one person, but give my opinion. AJ gave his opinion of what things that people look for. But I think it, yeah, it is interesting. I think if Sin and I and other people didn't have the VP, it would be a very, very unbiased, just very, you know, neutral s standpoint. But I think it is, I don't know, we, we're, I try to be mindful of that. Like also when people are looking for feedback on grants and they're like, hey, can I DM you about it? I'm like, I nope, I, I would rather you compile your your thoughts in public. Like there's in the CBD Discord, there's a you know, a place to put your proposals. I know in the Dow Discord there is. I'd rather read about it there as like an objective third party where I can like look on the outside coming in because um, yeah, I don't wanna um, like passively endorse something that I am not a part of. And so I think depending on the project because there is a lot of really good feedback that comes from like, you know, just because you asked it last year, I'll think about in-world builder, like when you brought that to the community and you ask questions about what do people want, like, I think that that is how DAO projects should be conducted and, and I don't know, research ahead of time, get the data, get the research, talk to the community. And I think a lot of these grants that I have never seen before, they're coming in and they're just putting their grant out and they don't understand why it doesn't have community support. Um, and I think that that's one place that, that people could do a better job of just um, connecting, connecting with people and, and like getting their message across, which I feel like I'm not doing right now because I'm rambling. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully that answers a little. I also feel like for like a person like a last from a last life, it's like different than from like, you know, the a more random person who's new to the community. Because I definitely think like a person who's like okay. just getting yeah, to the that's, community that's... should absolutely come and like introduce themselves. Yeah, let's see. I don't know, last room. Could you hear Jared? Hi, last room. But I don't know if it was talking. Um, either way, like it I, doesn't matter. He, he, okay. he didn't need that note anyway because they're. Well, I was that was more of the note for like Joe Blow who might want to make a one anyway because last room's like you know we all know who last room is. You either love him, find him annoying sometimes, and still respect his work, or you that's good you feedback. Don't. But it's like you know it's not it's not like the same for if it's you know like. Uh, the first person who's like just come to the DAO who's like super passionate, super talented, but like doesn't know anyone and doesn't necessarily know anything and like or anyone is like, you know, it is a political it the DAO is obnoxiously political just by design and it's very core. So like you do kind of need to like, you know, get your network on, so to speak, and like say hi to the, you know, the power players and the everybody. Cause you know, so here's, no one here's a no, question then. Let's pretend that we go to somebody else's DAO. Let's step into somebody else's DAO, like in the world and we want to put a grant out like and we walk in the room the the discord or wherever it is and like imagine not knowing anyone like i would be amazed if i wrote a grant and got it without knowing the landscape and the ecosystem and and you know really without connecting with people so i guess maybe putting ourselves in the shoes of those people like um I think people absolutely have to break down their grant and explain it to the community for it to be relevant at all. Like I would, I am suspicious of anybody that would vote yes on a grant that hasn't done that. Like we got to know. Oh yeah, totally. I, 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 yeah, I'm not trying to suggest that the inherent political nature of the Dow makes it like a bad thing. Like, you know, like life, human beings are inherently political to an extent. So, but uh, I agree that it's, you know, I don't need to make it as a negative judgment per se. No, no, I'm just thinking there was one back when we started these spaces and we invited the person up and they said that they were partners with Decentraland and we were like wow okay this is like a hundred thousand dollar grant and these people are like partnered with Decentraland and they were like yeah well Decentraland commented on one of our Twitter posts and Sin and I were like what like the like Decentraland account interacting with your Twitter post does not mean that you guys have a partnership. And then we like broke it down further and further. And then we were, we kind of realized, okay, this is what we're dealing with. So, you know, having that ability to communicate with somebody and, and dig deeper, I think is always invaluable. Last term. Yeah, I, I guess my point with that is I wasn't trying to say like, oh, you know, you should know who Last Slice is, uh, and that's never been my my case. So, regardless of who's putting it together, I just think general discourse about a topic, whether pre or post submittal, was my more general 
inquiry about like, okay, is it better regardless of the person come into a community space and talk about the idea first, get feedback and then put the proposal together or put the proposal together nicely as we have had experience in the past um, and then get feedback through the forum. That was all because um, a lot of things come through the grant, like these examples, but you know, I don't think there's one best approach to try to figure this out as we, we last room, last place, try to out what, what to help improve the platform um, and how to do that. Because in a weird way, we are all sort of partners of Decentraland in a weird sense. Um, but that partner word is interesting. So yeah, like we're, we do things for the community. Like we, we didn't just say like, hey, we want to build IWB because we want to build in world. We want to make it easier like Minecraft or Roblox or Nifty Island because Decentraland doesn't have it. So let's do it. So like we always approach things, not in terms of money first. Uh, it's always about like the creativity and what's lacking in Decentraland, leveraging our experiences to make it happen. And so just communicating those prior experiences with our future thoughts um, to help improve the platform before we submit a proposal. So it's all great feedback. Let My the record question show, I would was be... the one who said you should know who the last slice is. Because you should. Anyone, if you're active in the community, you should absolutely know who the last slice is. If we were to do a civic... Uh, Jared, event, I do have one question to you, though. I do have one question for you, though. Because you love to publicly shame me and, oh, and I publicly I love it. Pro prop up other people. You know, so I would just, I would love to convert you from, you know, you gave a, a three tier category of uh, emotions towards last room. I would love to convert you to the highest category because I don't understand why there's such public disdain for me if you're also saying you should know who last slice is. Well, because like I like a lot, I mean, because I like because I love Morph, I love Rustan, I like cause, like the overwhelming majority of last slicers are vital members of the community, even the ones I don't like, who I won't name because that makes Vanessa mad, are still like you know very pivotal players. And I don't, and it's not that I don't dislike you, I just think that like you know you're a very opinionated person as am I, but there's often times where it's just like it feels like you don't necessarily fully understand how like DAO mechanics work and stuff. So it's just kind of like you know it uh. I frustrate, you know, you know sometimes I ask a question. A passionate and smart, intelligent person. And then other but times you're like, well, how do we realize sometimes how do we I ask questions? Answer? Yeah, because I ask a question, not maybe for always my knowledge. Do you realize that? Well, I, I guess I don't necessarily think that's the most um, effective um, communication technique, I guess. But, uh, I, but see, I mean, that's, but that's see, yeah, that so again, you, well, uh, but, but I know, I know, I know. So you're assuming my intentions and when I ask something versus just taking it at face value, which I, I program 90% of IWB. So you say it's clunky, but you say Madamus has done great work. It's just funny because you love to backhand me and then compliment last slice, but a majority of it is me. So it's just funny. Just want well, to throw that out Madamus there. Like, I appreciate the props. I do. Projects. Thank you. So like. And to be fair, and to be fair, I, I think the clunkiness that is the Inrule Builder is stems from Decentraland as a whole. I don't think that it's like I don't think the you know the greatest programmers in the world probably couldn't necessarily make the you know you know fix the things that are flawed with it. So I apologize. When's the last time you went in there? Uh, admittedly, it's been probably since before. When did the contest start? It's probably before that. It's been a second. So okay. admittedly, okay. Uh, yeah. To be fair, I had I don't think I called it clunky for at least you know you I haven't called it clunky since at least Here. a week. Jared, can I ask you a question? And and I'm not I'm not triangulating, but how because I don't think of like when I hear building, um, like I, I don't know if you like I haven't seen stuff that you've built. So can you just I'm like don't, I'm trying to be nice. I'm not I'm not attacking, but like how how much have you built with like the Decentraland builder? Oh, I mean, I would say five different scenes that were all varying degrees of given up on because it's a very frustrating thing i got a thing i got my little my little space in um exodus.town built that um and then i de demolished it and rebuilt it as a much simpler thing that's just grass and my my pipe thing because i would because I, I i just don't find like i can't make the thing in my head appear using the like the pre-given assets and the you know the uh, the in-world builder too much like i always just get frustrated at my inability to take the uh, idea in my head and try to make it a reality. Like a lush forest for my leaf vibe is, you know, absolutely impossible to accomplish for me uh, with my my ADHD and impatience. Oh, but again, no, I, also, yeah, I also yeah, find the general yeah. expression building to be yeah. very like vague and often weaponized in a, like a rude way. So the things I've built are thousands of words of, uh, you know, essays 
praising people and you know talking about the platform or or roasting Rob L for his crimes because um, I'm just saying I'm just mentioning it just because I I I there are clunkinesses of every builder. I mean, the inward, like the builder, the builder builder tool, like in Decentraland, even the one in Nifty Island, I go there, I have the same damn problem. So it's like some, I mean, I just wonder, just to put some context. I mean, I've built some fabulous theme parks in Roller Coaster Tycoon, which is also a very clunky builder. Um, <laughs> but again, I'm more my, when I say clunky, I just more mean that like, I could I couldn't click on a thing and like the solution was well you have to refresh once that breaks which is perfectly reasonable and I'm sure that that could have been fixed or not but um mm -hmm. I still I mean like and again Lastrum is the one who brought up me calling it clunky I didn't just call it clunky I called it clunky like two weeks ago and it, he's just still upset and frustrated by my criticism which is you know fair I guess well I want to make sure I'm not upset at all answer... I'm not upset at all and I, I still wanted... be thinking about it. I, I, wonder, the wrong way. I wonder. Well, if I want to be your Jared... biggest converter. I want to convert you because the because we have plans for IWB in the future. So we want we want people to build it. That's my whole point of like asking for community feedback because you know if you're having troubles with your ADHD to build, how can we help improve that? And so that's why I was asking when's the last time you went in there because it probably gotten better since you're your phrasing of clunkiness and and i want you to figure out what is clunky i don't know what that means clunky because when you do tell me then we can fix it uh deadhead jen has done that nft bubblegum has done that so i i want to convert you if you can use iwb with what you've um said you know personally about your adhd if you can use iwb that's a huge win for me that's a huge win for the platform that's a huge win for the tool set and that's what we want and that's Again, why come on these spaces to get feedback to make the platform better? I mean, to be fair, the conversation started more about how you were like, there was a three tier description of last room and how could I convert you on that? It wasn't necessarily about the IWB, but I feel like, I feel like we've shifted this conversation a bit, but uh, regardless, I, um, I will check out the IWB again in the near future, I suppose. Mostly because Rustan wants me to. Jared, let's check well, it no, together. He... Let's check it out together. Uh, I'll tell you, like, yeah. I mean, you know, like, if there's things that are clunky that are clunky, like, the same, just for me, like, the same thing that's clunky in the Decentraland Builder is the same thing that's, I'm calling clunky in, like, Nifty Island. It's, like, the same freaking thing. And so, I don't know, like, I'm, I'll be an objective third party. And... <laughs> Well, I, I don't, I, I'm not, I've never praised Nifty Island. I, I mean, everything in Decentraland works better for me than Nifty Island works for me because Nifty Island requires a much better upload speed of my internet. So again, it's perfectly possible, especially because I, I, I mean, I haven't gotten to use the Inward Builder went back when I had good internet because it didn't exist then. And I'm now currently in rural Vermont waiting for them to upgrade the DSL to a proper cable internet sometime later this year. So it is absolutely possible that much of my frustration stems from my garbage internet. Totally possible. Uh, I will I'll say, regardless, absolutely everything in Decentraland works better for me than Nifty Island works for me with my garbage internet. So um, that was, so, you know, I would, I'm by no means here shilling Nifty Island. I, Charles, I like Charles, the one of the founder. I, I, he's very direct. He, uh, he saw me totally butting it based on just uh, the way I thought they were marketing it. Felt like they were kind of trying to shit on Decentraland, and I didn't really like, like you know, it, they like felt like they were always jumping any opportunity to like reply to someone just shitting on DCL or paying people who primarily shit on DCL and brought to my attention by police. Um, so like, I, but I respect Charles for being very proactive as a community builder and what he's doing. But like, the product itself does not work well for on my 1.5 upload speed, you know, at all. So. So I'm not, I don't, I, so I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't think we should be using Nifty Island necessarily as the barometer per se. No, but I'm just saying like the, the things that frustrated me, it, it was, it was refreshing to go somewhere brand new and find the same problem. So it's just like it, the grass can seem greener other places. And then you realize like, oh, okay. Like this might just be something I have like a personal issue you have to work through. Last time. Yeah, no, um. Jared, you know, there's people on this call that I really wanted to target with feedback for what my future plans are for another for possible grant. You were one of them uh, in genuine feedback. So like, I think a unique perspective on, you know, your 
experience in what you do in the central land. Doc Drip is another. Bruce Don I've already talked with. Brandon McManus would be another person that I actually wanted. He was here earlier to get their feedback. Um, because understanding the, again, how to make it the best possible product for everybody. So getting all those different types of feedback, I, I specifically wanted to ask you uh, about this grant because I don't forget the personal stuff. I mean, I don't care. I'm coming to you and saying, what do you think about this idea? Good or bad, let's make it the best possible. Um, and that's what, that's what I was sort of hinting at like in the next month or so, um, hopefully approaching everybody with this idea and specifically targeting a few individuals with like very pointed feedback. Is this to mean there will be an in-world builder 2.0 grant in the, uh, which I think is a very excellent use of the platform grant category. So I would definitely say should be a thing that you're considering if you're not, but it sounds like you are. Uh, we are, I mean, there's, there's no surprise. We are. Um, and you know, how do we do that? What's the best possible thing going forward? There's still some things to fix. We understand. Uh, and we're not, we're not disappearing. And we're not going to stop working on it just because we don't have a version two yet. But what is the best possible version two? And again, getting a, a lot of different approaches um, is, is definitely what I think a requirement should be for grants. So, yeah, I, I want you to pick it apart. I want everybody to opine. And I've asked Ruzan personally and me personally, who are on our IWB team, like, should we ask the community first? Should we put the proposal out there? If we ask first, would somebody else create it and then take our idea? Or would the community want to get paid for their idea? You know, there's all kinds of different political ramifications, but just want it to be the best version too. Because not mentioning a certain other metaverse that has popped up recently, but uh, in the landscape of what Yuga just announced as well, how can we make the central land stand out? And I honestly think, Jared, your, your opinions would be great. Uh, I feel like I'm not technically... I feel like I would want to know what HP would think of, like, how to make it the best thing possible. Like, how, like I, which I know is frustrating since he's possibly the only person worse at giving feedback in a constructive manner than I am. But, like, I feel like, you know, like, the technical limitations of Decentraland are still something I, like, don't fully understand as a, you know, not programmer. And I feel like those are, like... I think you got it. I mean, I do, do to an extent, you know, for sure. Does DCL but... have fall damage? Does DCL have fall damage? No. Well, no, I, I would love for DCL okay, to Okay, well, there you go. That's pretty technical. But, yeah, I mean, seems, but, but like, it's going to be technical like, to know that. I don't know so that's how awesome. the nodes work, how the server, the server latency. Like, I can't uh, really speak to that kind of side yeah. of things. Don't worry about that. I mean, I load up Diablo 4. It takes three minutes for it to load. I don't need to know that the technical workings of it to know that the game's a beast and it takes a second to load. But I do know there's fall damage. I do know all this. You know how ice poker works. You know how the buttons click, this, that, third, you know, rewards, pop-ups, claims, um, things like that. So, you know, it, it's not from a technical perspective. It's like, hey, we really think better animations for dropping in or better sound effects or, you know, we really liked when you could double click the space bar. And I'd say, well, that can't happen, right? So, um, things like that, where it's like, we really would like to see uh, this or whatever um, from a non-technical because <sighs> DCL is pretty powerful. SDK7 is really powerful, but we want to make that really easy for people to use, especially you. You know, what I think we need, like, I'm just looking at my background and before you make any decision, you have to have data. Like, you don't do a darn thing without having information, like when <laughs> data drives decisions and and you have a valid point that like don't don't say it try not to swear but don't say a gall darn thing be, that somebody might steal your idea because this place is horrible and cutthroat and i learned a long time ago don't speak unless you're ready to give that idea away so without doing that how about just having like a, a poll to the community and and just really getting information from people of what they think they want and what they like and what they don't like. And I'm not just talking about like Decentraland, like other games. What is your favorite thing about Minecraft? What's your favorite thing about Call of Duty? Like maybe it's the the accuracy, <laughs> like for me, Fortnite, accuracy of your fire of your firearm. Like, I'm sorry, the nifty just doesn't do that for me. Like I I know I'm hitting my target. So I'm gonna go play this game. And fall damage. 
boy, wouldn't that be nice? Or uh, like, do you know how many times I go to Decentraland now and I double space to jump? Like that jump and that slide feedback is so important. So you, that might be worth something to go, just to pull the community of like, what is, you know, what is your favorite thing about building? What do you love about it? What do you hate about it? Like, would you use, you know, I don't know, like, I mean, it, it would be a, probably a pretty big list of questions to triangulate so you could get people's feedback without, you know, obviously giving away whatever you're cooking in your kitchen. But if nobody says that fall damage is important, then that's, you know, not the route you get. Or if you're, you know, creating the in-world builder, like if you would have asked people six months ago, hey, is having like, you know, in-game, like game mechanics, is that a big deal? People might not have realized um, the power behind it and maybe now they do so having something like that I could Im I could imagine that that when you're compiling a grant that information that you could get from the committee is going to be like that's vital for decision making um, I also think you know you you asked the question um, and, and it's you know you're you're talking about version two um, but I do want to pivot back to your original question of how people should go about their grants because it's pretty sad to think that you know, people could put all this work and effort and energy into their grant, but when they put it in, you know, and it just gets blown out of the water and not supported, you know, like there have been grants recently of people that really could have done a lot for Decentraland and the ecosystem, but their grant didn't pass and now they're not here. Like, I just also want to hear from not just Sin and I and the people in the speaker panel, but, you know, everybody that is down in the listener you know, but that's not up here as a speaker. Like, what, what do you guys think? Like, what is the better way to do it? Because um, too many of our community members have poured their heart into these proposals. They would have done something great. And then it feels like people may be more disconnected with the platform, just destroy them. And then, and then that's that. Go ahead, Liston. Oh, sorry. I'm checking out a target. I think, uh, I personally think uh, you put a lot of time and effort into a grant, whether it's three grand or 150 grand or 240, what it used to be or whatever. And, you know, that, I think that's part of it. I mean, you're asking for large sums of money and most of these people haven't done that before. And I don't want to say that, you know, I have a tons of experience doing that. Um, but there is some level of, uh, I would say, requirement if you're going to ask for a lot of money, you better put in the work. You know, you got to do some upfront legwork, uh, whether that's really doing a great proposal, coming on these spaces, talking about your idea, then submitting it, or having, I think, a requirement we've talked about many times on this space. Haven't seen it yet. Don't know if it's in the strategic manifesto uh, that Jared outlined, 49 pages. Might do control F, but uh, video, video requirement. And I know people get anonymous, but, you know, there's a reason why Shark Tank is virtual as visual and not just submitting essays as grants because you got to see the person or hear the person you know they call it the elevator pitch you know proposals are just words and so i feel like a lot of proposals almost shoot themselves in the foot by the current system if they only had 30 seconds or a minute to explain their idea maybe it would come off really really great or really really bad but you would definitely get a, a more robust perspective of what the individual or team are trying to accomplish with their idea. Do you remember when there was a Shark Tank type event here? It wasn't like the official, Medici. but... Oh, yeah. Well, Medikey tried that. I don't know why they left. Uh, but, you know, I personally think that's awesome. You, you could do a voice thing. Explain your idea in 30 seconds. And if people are a little confused by that... <laughs> opportunity for questions or just pass would it have to be like you know a doxing video or could like a person like more fuse like their vrf no 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 like you just need a video like yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Just check it. yeah just like uh, some form of audio i think would go a long way either positively or negatively towards a grantee and their idea because just verbal discourse is so much different than you know, written words, inflection, emotion, things come off way differently. So just having like a, it doesn't even have to be a video. Submit an audio file explaining your idea in one minute.
I think the only downside to that is that it's like an international community, so some people will be like, you know, better equipped to say it in different languages. But I, and otherwise, I think it's a good idea, and I agree with you. I just think there are there is the like, and don't get me wrong, I think that the language barrier already impacts people anyway when it's you know comes to everything having to be written in English for the DAO, which is a weird rule for a thing based out of Argentina. I feel like, but I mean, I, I'm happy that that's the rule because obviously I don't have any ability to speak or read Spanish, but it still feels as though it's odd. It is oddly limiting sometimes. Yeah, no, that's fair. I just, you know, the Shark Tank example, Kness, it's like all those people, and I've known two people that have gone on Shark Tank. Uh, one of them has done a deal with Barbara. Uh, I went to college with them. Um, did they just write an idea on paper? and walk into the room and not ever ask for feedback from anybody else? Probably not, right? So this idea of getting consensus before your big pitch or your big submittal um, is, I think, uh, could help. So, you know, obviously this has helped my outlook on version two and what we've already typed up and refining it. So I appreciate it. It would be cool if you could access all the game like elements that are in the repository, like the ability to shoot targets and like, you know, the, the whack-a-mole games in version two and like actually drag and drop. I mean, for all I know, those are in version one all around. Jared, get out of my head. Get out of my head. Because that would be cool. Because I've always wanted, to, and it would be cool if you could change like the assets on the targets, because I've always felt like a game where you could shoot my little bird face would just really draw, you know, people would put, put a mana in to, you know, see who could shoot my face the most effectively. <laughs> Jared, I, I was saying that funny too. I don't know if you hear me. Are you, do you have access to our Google Drive? Do you have access to our document? Because, uh, certainly, not. like I said, and I, no, I'm kidding. I, you, you, again, I specifically said I want your feedback because you literally are hitting the nail on the head. And that's why I, I mentioned targeting you because you have a different perspective which we think would be great and so it's great to hear your ideas are yeah aligned let's just leave it at that jared is like giving feedback and spilling all the future alpha <laughs> everyone well, the... knows better than to trust me with secrets i think that's i think everyone knows you don't tell me a secret because i will immediately go to the person like hey is this true? So, you know, and if you didn't know that, you now know that that you should know that. So I think we can safely say that whoever has access to that document wasn't like, hey, here's some, uh, here's some sweet info. No, I know, I know. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. It's just funny because we think we know what the community might want. But again, I specifically wanted to hear your feedback. And you and I, we can, I can publicly say, do not talk in private. So you would have no idea what we're cooking up. But I'm glad we're aligned. Um, and I did want to sort of expand on that in terms of grants. Okay. We have a technical team last slice. We, we obviously have people that think of really cool things, but there's a lot of people outside the space or outside last slice or maybe in last slice that might not be a marketer or a project manager or a programmer modeler. Like, okay, Jared, for you, I mean, is there room for grants? to have a QA, like a quality assurance testing and pay people to do that on, on a team, you know, somebody or like um, aviation gamification concepts where maybe Jared is a part of that little subsection of the team that helps improve the product purely just from like speaking and engaging on the idea. Is that something you know, think grants I, I, I mean, I, I, yeah, have? I think Grant should have that. Absolutely. I mean, I think a big problem the DAO has with like the game grants and like bigger grants is there's always this kind of like, you know, you got two hundred thousand dollars and you haven't made a triple A game yet, or like like people like I don't think appreciate how hard it is to make a really great product, and I definitely think that like like more game budgets should incorporate QA into that process. Like, there's it's insane that none of the games have ever had a QA in their budget, honestly. Uh, so I definitely think that something like that should be more accepted and more open. And I think that, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I, that, that's the only thing I don't like about the, the idea that like of the lowering the, the most a person can ask for in a grant to 100K that Dingia suggested or proposed is that just it's like, 
you know, because everyone gets hammered when they come back for Grant. It's like, well, you have, when is he, oh, you're going to come back for, or like, you know, Stan and I'll drop the Bernie meme. Like, I'm once again asking for your support. It's like, well, yeah, like, making something great isn't going to happen for, you know, especially in this clunky environment of Decentraland, the clunky, you know, it's hard. Everyone knows it's hard to build in Decentraland. You know, I don't have to tell you guys. So, like, it's insane to think that, like, oh, we gave you $600,000. What do you mean you, you need more money to make something truly awesome? Like, realistically, you're gonna, you should be able to barely make, like, a really compelling, you know, uh, proof of concept in many cases for, you know, fifty to $100,000, depending on, like, the scope of your vision. Like, so, I don't know. I definitely think QA makes sense to be inside of a grant budget. So on that note with gaming and last year, I'm just kind of like asking about gaming and having like Decentraland say that one of the big focuses this year is going to be gaming. Like, um, I guess that would be one thing that just, I think people are going to be asking for more and more like tools and assets to make games in their scenes. Like, um, I would love to just be able to be like uh, at CBD right now, like playing like passively, like, kicking sin's ass at like chinese checkers or something like that like there could be simple games like that but then also bigger you know obviously uh more interactive games but i think that that knowing that the emphasis of decentraland the target area that they're going towards is actually targeting gamers like that that right there is a need that that i don't know if you guys are doing more like pushing the envelope like like if that's on your manifesto that Jared somehow has telepathy on <laughs> or not. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, um, that's so funny. Just manifesto sounds like a, a dirty word in my eyes. Like, I just, manifesto sounds like, you know, uh, an authoritarian yeah, kind of way. Yeah, manifestos are never associated with good things, like serial killers. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys so, as kidding? Much as like, I, I have so many manifestos. <laughs> Really? <laughs> well, I'm evil, so yeah, that means it checks out. Oh, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, no, but um, great point. So without saying what the room is saying, I'm going to agree with what the room is saying for what we're trying to do. And I'll just leave it as vague as that. So, you know, um, just all the things we're talking about, this is sort of like my pre-pre uh, conversation about what's coming next. And, you know, in terms of Decentraland providing gaming capabilities, that, you know, Personally, the dirty word manifesto, there was nothing in there except two or three sentences that were great. And they all talked about locomotion. Um, so if there's anything that came out of that manifesto, it's better locomotion. And what does that mean? Hopefully fall damage possibly, or the ability to toggle that. Maybe double jump. I know I've seen it in person. Um, different jump heights, uh, different camera angles, different run speeds, different walk speeds. So, um, taking those little pieces parts, allowing developers like us to then use those in a optimized, hopefully, way in Decentraland will help create games. Now, to Jared's point, there's already some pretty cool games in there in Decentraland that are sort of low hanging fruit, but are in SDK 6, you have to integrate, whatever. So what we would like to do, what I would like to see is um, you know, more gamification. And so, like I said, what the room is talking about Jared has uh, all-knowing powers and, you know, would love to, again, get their feedback, Jared, your feedback, and everyone's on what, what do we want to see and how do we make that happen? Because, uh, like Knesset just said, that we want, we want Knesset to be playing Chinese checkers as easily as possible against other people. Yeah, and I think, I think, like, looking at what we really enjoy about being in world like obviously it's you know the company is great you know and the creativity but to me I'm I'm like digging deeper than that like what parts do I actually really enjoy like I don't enjoy walking in Decentraland there is nothing fun about hitting like the space bar and walk but you know to bring it back like I can go to Fortnite and I can slide like and that's fun like that is could I, if I could slide into a, a party like could you imagine how fun that would be or like transversal or traversal emotes like if I could dance and instead of like walking I could be dancing um I, I get that that's not a that's not a you know that's a decentraland not a last slice thing but I um 
Well, and also like there's these nunchucks that have been added to Fortnite. So like I get those now, not just because they're a good weapon, but because it's fun to like double jump and flip. And so I'm trying to take all these these nuggets of things that I really enjoy about these other games and like I'm just having fun. And and in Decentraland, like I'm sorry, I don't mean to talk bad, but there's nothing fun about just walking around <laughs> like if I could dance if I could double jump in the air, like those kind of things. And that's just me. That's just me, one person. So if everybody started coming up, like really looking at like, what is it that I love about, you know, these other games like Minecraft or, you know, League of Legends, like what makes games really fun other than winning them? Because, well, winning really is fun too. Um, but I'm enjoying the heck out of these other places more than just, uh, you know, walking around so i think that um we're gonna have more we're gonna have more people come in who like if that's where they're targeting their focus then we have to have these these answers for them otherwise it's it's just it's not gonna be fun fun enough to hook them and keep them and just last them as somebody who's bringing up the question i think i don't know like i i get maybe yeah I don't know like I want to come up with the survey to ask people like what the heck do you love about this place or what do you love about your favorite game that's not here and maybe it's just me maybe it's a few people that would feel that way um but I definitely think that there's there's more to games than just like point a to point b and you won the game like yes I want to win but I want to have fun before I get there And now y'all know I go for the ninja nunchucks just so I can look cool before I uh, eliminate <laughs> my enemies. I mean, even like the the innovation of like, or the further innovation of like, let's say smart wearables or portable experiences could be something that uh, that moves the space forward like you know you like let's say you're at an event but you have a portable experience that that is a multiplayer mul portable experience i know i know it's it's impossible right now but if it's if, if it's done it, it would change everything in the central land so i mean yeah and would make everything yeah. funner Nah, what's that? If portable experiences were actually portable experiences, that would be really awesome. But, but sadly, they, they don't seem to actually be that at this time. <laughs> yeah, someday right. they will be dope. Like, 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 can you imagine? Like, let's say, let's say we're all at uh, Beyond the NFT, and, but like there are like ten people with a like tag portable experience and they're just all playing tag all over the build trying to catch each other or something like that like <laughs> i mean i think like i'm trying to talk you know speak constructively not destructively but i do think that a lot of times people come to you know parties or they're going to come and listen to a musician they're going to come they're going to speak a little bit they're going to go at afk and that's the honest brutal reality is that if there if i could be listening to music like what do i do at a real club you know well i might dance too but i can just hit the dance key and go afk but if i could be like yeah shooting if i could be chasing you around sin <laughs> we could do showdown or just you know playing a game like i i think that there has to be more interactability last time yeah no i think they improved i saw some updates to the smart wearable portable experience so i think the process of like putting it on, it loading, taking it off, have improved. Uh, I will say I haven't tried since it was. It's been a failure in terms of the functionality at the platform level since December. But um, you know, tagging is is awesome. Uh, we we had one in there that was actually like graffiti tagging, so you could take any image and on any plane or any shape in Decentraland, any thing, and just spray paint an image on anything and everybody would see it. So just think of like the possibilities there where it's like hide and seek, things like that, or just, you know, graffiti tag DG or Tom and Oya and just tag the whole thing with um, some graffiti art would be hilarious. But yeah, I, I think 
we tried we should try to push for more things i think what we did in november and december with dg and uh vroomway and koa um and dollhouse with you know questing and smart wearables was pushing the limit and we saw that but but it forced the foundation to improve the smart wearables supposedly so um hopefully that works and we can continue and try that again because that was really i think that was really cool doing things across scenes but having like a central like reward capability is super unique um and it brings the central land together versus like Tominoia isolation, Angzar isolation, KOA isolation. It's like bringing them together under one world of like GTA, you know? Go ahead, Dennis. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think I, I it is it is super frustrating that almost everything about that that didn't work was just the like structural from the foundation side because it was it was super. It's it's always so frustrating when you're trying to use those things and they're just not working. And, I have to get Dr. Drip to like come into my DM and be like, okay, Jared, here's what you have to do. Imagine Three, programming stop, that, Jared. Stop swearing. Ima- oh, I, I bet it's miserable. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, or like, you know, whatever the, like, the, I can't remember what the last minute hiccup was. Was that like when the mains ground had just come out? I was like, okay, we had to deploy a whole new parcel like behind Tamanoia. So, like, no, ignore that bubble. No, you go to this one over here to like actually activate it. Yeah, I know that's frustrating, but you know, that's, we, we're, we're working around the, the absolute nightmare that is the central end. Yeah, no, I mean, I get, I get why you were so upset about a lack of communication from the foundation in December because having probably spent you know months of your life working on that, you know, then just have them just fucking break it on you without even just so much as a like how you doing and a hello is uh what must have been. Yeah, I mean, I can only assume as frustrated as I was trying to you know get the 100 pound you know Broomway NFT drop and whatever before the. The, the scavengers i can only assume watching that happen from you know the, your side of the code was infuriating so yeah no it would be it'll be it'd be, it'd be awesome though if it works because it was absolutely i agree with you like it it makes the whole like because the central end just often just feels like these tiny little isolated parcels you know like the dollhouse is cool but it's you know it's the dollhouse and you go there for the dollhouse reasons and then you know tamanoi is you know can be fun if you're not you know, gambling because you know going to casinos you're going to lose most of the time. That's never that much fun. But you know, going to the music events there and you know seeing Buffalo Blade that's fun. But like when you can actually like give it that GTA feeling like you described, I do agree that that is you know that is what like essentially needs to really like you know reach reach that Ready Player well you know Ready Player One vibe we're all like you know we all long for and like deep down we know is possible someday. We're just you know, sometimes we lose faith and hope in it because the foundation is, you know, bad communicators and the process is long and slow because, you know, it's it's a decentralized thing and, like, that makes it harder in many ways as Morph has kind of explained. Like, we, we sacrifice certain elements of ease of implementation because we're decentralized. But, like, you know, in theory, over the long haul, it will be worth it. But sometimes it's really hard to appreciate that when you probably spent two months working on something and then the foundation just poo-poos it. So... Yeah. yeah, yeah. Imagine doing that not for free. Imagine doing it for a paid project, and then your client getting upset. That would be terrible. So thankfully, that was all, you know, pro bono, ad hoc, like community get together. Let's be creative and fun because otherwise, oof, if we had a yeah, oh, I, I bet yeah. So if, if DG or if it was not DG, was like some if some non essential in person was paying you hundreds of thousands of dollars for that, I imagine it would have just been because it's real hard to like like explain like no, you see like. Our work is great, but you see, the foundation did it. Because, like, you're not going to get Yamelda doing a voice call. Like, yeah, like, Lashram's telling you the truth. It's our fault. We totally screwed you. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, that is it. Thank God it was a, a community come together. Uh, yeah, cool. But yeah. Uh, so, more of that. I think more of that would be awesome. And, you know, hopefully we can bring together more developers and people who don't develop that have ideas that want to see things happen around gamification. Because, you know, like even Yuga, you know, pivoting to UGC content is interesting. I truly think like there's only one, there's only two, I mean, to my knowledge, metaverses, like open worlds. It's Decentraland and Miranda's from Gallum, right? I think everything else, and Decentraland's unique because it is still UGC, right? But um, like Yuga is going UGC. It's not an MMO anymore. Nifty, Fortnite, are they really? You know, it's like. The, the lines are being blurred. So it's like, what do we want to central land right now? It has UGC, but it's kind of tough. There's not the like infrastructure there. It's an MMO, but not really. It's like an open world. You know, it's like, what? Okay. Okay. Can you 
that's like alphabet soup. Can you pretend I'm your grandma? UGC is user generated content. Okay, okay. Because I'm just, you know, sometimes I ask I questions I also. I was like, wait a minute, I know that, but I'm totally Okay, okay. yeah. So, and there's no massive multiplayer online. So, it's a bunch of people getting together. We all know that one from playing video games. That's easy. Then, then you know, there's RPGs, role playing games. So, you have MMORPGs. You put those two together. So, online role playing games. Think of, you know, the, the massive ones everybody plays. And those lines keep getting blurred and blurred even further now, where it's like, hey, you as the player can be the creator, kind of like in Fortnite now. Um, and Yuga, you know, had this big other side concept for an MMO multiplayer online. Everybody gets online and thousands of players are gonna attack this one boss and it's gonna be awesome in this open world. But now they're saying, hey, we're gonna roll that back and we're gonna, we're gonna do something where it's user generated, where maybe you on your own land, like Decentraland have the ability to upload your own content and you know host capture the flag or whatever their functionality will be so it's just interesting to see yuga who's i think they have like four and a half billion dollars pivot to these you know from an open world mmo to like hey we're gonna let the users come up with the stuff we're not gonna create it anymore we're gonna let the users sort of come up with the stuff and maybe we'll provide some infrastructure and it's like, what is Decentraland now? Like, what what do we get from the platform versus what are we supposed to provide users, right? From from us being the creators. Thank you. But I don't know. I always love the way Miles pitches the open metaverse. Like, that's always the thing that like makes me like. The, I don't know the, the. I know like I know DG's gotten a lot of fun for or you know like being accused of kind of fudding DCL because they're distancing themselves. They're gonna like branch and make their own kind of little space. But they're using within Decentraland. I don't know, and I, I still think Miles is, you know, as, as fond of the concept of the open metaverse as possible. He just has also kind of accepted the fact that you can't build your own, you know, billion dollar business within it at the moment, just by the very nature of it still being so new. But like, you know, it is that the open metaverse is an exciting concept. The fact that like, you know, and you, you know, the people do own their property and there is no necessarily, you know, centralized authority to, you know, squash you. Even though I did learn at some point in the last two months that the foundation can in fact censor parcels and there are two there are one or two parcels i don't know if it's one parcel or like a two parcel estate because i guess someone was hosting a party and like a week before that someone constructed like a the two towers getting hit by a plane so the only exist and there was no vote the, the only reason i know about this is because hp mentioned it but uh, there is in fact the foundation can technically censor your parcels and make it so that they just will never load for anyone ever if they so desired though that's still and it's still a, a technically an open metaverse because like someone else could host a node and do their own thing which would allow those to you know exist so it is like you know i don't know it's to hp's point which i think he gets frustrated by a lot is that like you know like people like we we do kind of depend on the foundation just because like they are you know they they are the foundation that a lot of this has been built on but they are like that isn't the like you know they aren't the be all and end all of decentraland like the technology does allow anyone to you know host their own decentraland so to speak and like you know do those things so even though it is censored within our current usable world it could be uncensored yeah i think i think it gets back to like what what do we want for decentraland this year and the next two years because decentraland is almost like um the blueprints of a house or even even more more rudimentary the the raw materials right like decentraland gave us the raw materials and there's an open field and it's like okay well good good luck go build this and you're like wait a second are you going to give me the hammer are you going to give me the plumbing like i thought you were going to like when i put my house together do i have electricity do i have to go and find the electricity it's like how much is decentraland giving us that we can jump in and step into and we being current users we also being new users where people thought yuga is building a game so that they can jump into and the whole field is populated with electricity and water and plumbing and sidewalks and you know neighborhoods and cars and travel and ma mailboxes and messaging and things like that right um and now they're like wait a second we're actually going to pivot and just give you the the raw materials and allow you to go build whatever you want and if the island is in the middle there they give you some functionality right like you you get some you get some raw materials but you also have the ability to quickly build a modular house and have running water and have people come in and have electricity and host an event and have like cable tv right 
And it's like, can we do that easily in Decentraland yet with the, with the raw materials? And so how do we how do we bridge that gap with the rest of the landscape of, okay, we have all these raw materials. How do we make it easier to implement those raw materials into hosting an event in a house? And hopefully we're trying to solve that with IWB. Yeah, I still feel like Niffy Island being called the metaverse is like awkward because it's more just like, don't get me wrong, like it's dope what they're doing. Yeah, they're they're adding utility to projects that didn't have utility for their PFPs and whatnot. But like, it's still like a very much a closed ecosystem. It is not part of the open metaverse, so to speak. You know, like, I don't know. Charles is the CEO and I don't think he's planning on, you know, giving away, you know, full ownership rights to, you know, build them whatever you want in the, anytime soon, from my understanding. So it's still cool. And it's definitely like a hub and it's in the, you know, in the equation, but it is not part of the open metaverse. I don't know. And I feel like the people who have like been just abandoned DC Island and shitting on it, in like in praising of like, you know, of um, Nifty Island are going to like, you know, there's going to come a time where Nifty Island's, you know, it's not going to innovate as fast as they wanted to. Like what it is is cool, but it's not going to become, you know, Ready Player One and, you know, as fast as anyone wants it to. And I can absolutely see like all the people who are fair weather DCL fans who have like used Nifty Island to then cudgel DCL for not being what they want it to be is like they will turn on it just as fast when someone else releases an even cooler Web3 game because you know like the reality is is like most of the most like you know Grand you know uh, Rockstar and the like the best game creators in the world haven't really gotten into this space at all so like there's so much room for innovation and like you know we're just sitting in this like wasteland where like you know you know, because there isn't like there just isn't people trying to make amazing things with Web3 games yet necessarily. There are, that's not quite accurate. I mean, obviously, but it's still like such a new space. So that like you know, when the next cool thing comes in, are the people who love it Nifty Island now going to love it then? That like that right there. I mean, to me, it's like man, Web3 is big enough. Like, like the world hasn't even heard of Web3 uh, as a great majority. Like they're not even here yet. So I think there's room for everybody. In fact, we don't have enough Web3. Like. We need more Web3. We need more choices. And like, I personally, like, if people want to go there and explore and have fun, like, they should. I mean, it's, it's, it's why I try different games. Like, I'm not leaving Decentraland, but like, I can learn more about what I like and how to build and how to create by, like, opening doors. Like, in my head, that's where I'm like, there's no reason to close any doors in this world. Let's just keep opening them. Because you know what, you might find that like, you might find that this that other places are more your style, and that's okay. Like, um, I think that like we're gonna watch Decentraland evolve and grow, and be something that we don't even recognize in a few years. And to that point, last room, I just wanted to ask, like, what do you see other side being in five years? What do you see like, um, because you've been in the space you know, actively building longer than I think any of us, like what, what does the future look like in five years from now? What is the ecosystem and the landscape in your, in your mind? I mean, it, it's interesting because this all started with somebody getting a sword deleted from their account and like spawning Ethereum essentially. So in, a, in the most simplistic terms, these AAA studios, instead of having these private databases that are controlled by them, they could just make the data.
to make money on us owning our assets and then they'll just implement it in their games. So that's the billion dollar question. Will the web to gaming market adopt blockchain? I totally think so. I think blockchain, you know, Bitcoin made crypto less dirty, right? It's not uh it's not this like alt fringe community anymore. It's a legitimate transaction gateway. It's a legitimate business opportunity. Um, the the functionality of Ethereum is, is there. So we've we've went through the ICO, the altcoin, the metaverse. It's it's always maturing, and so now hopefully real use cases will be brought on by Web two companies, um, and it just makes everything more especially in, in the in ai i think you know this is a, a really cool inflection of digital ownership with ai coming about and so hopefully that'll be a buffer against you know um, ai's the the blockchain and ownership right so being able to verify digitally that kind of stuff so yeah i think i think in the next five years you will definitely see um a blizzard type studio have web3 blockchain in it i mean Fortnite is already closed. Roblox said they're going to do it this year, hopefully. Um, so there you go. I mean, it's already happening. So my, uh, I mean, as, as somebody who started, like my spending habits didn't start in Decentraland. I was heavily invested in Webkins and I could, I could buy my assets, that, but I, they weren't on blockchain. And so they may or may not have come from a shady website where people just ripped them from the original file. Do not condone. I don't suggest that. That's not good. Um, okay, so we're saying that gaming is important. Blockchain is important so you can own your assets. So then the, the wild Pandora's box elephant in the room, when you create a tool like the VRM that then allows you to make uh, a thousand copies of something that initially was like a one of one or one of 10, does that absolutely invalidate the efficacy of a blockchain minted asset? Because all of a sudden you have this way to create something that it's not one of one anymore. It's one of a hundred. Does the VRM like threaten the sanctity of a, a blockchain asset? No, because for the same reason that like the first generation Charizard cards are worth six figures, where you can still get that very same like functionality Charizard for, you know, you know, pennies on the dollar open it in a pack and like, you know, the fifth edition. Like I think that like people people will eventually respect the, you know, the um oh no, what's the it's provenance. They will eventually respect the provenance of your like if anything, having, you know, a hundred thousand people use the VRM is probably a good thing for the value of your, you know, your OG L1s and L2 assets because it'll like make people be like, oh man, that's the shirt I see everybody wearing. And you'd be like, holy shit, that, that's the actual, like that's the first one. Like that's the one all these have come from. Like th th there may even be people who would prefer to, they'll want to collect the one that you minted, you made your VRM and DSTL would be like, oh man, that's the exact shirt Vanessa used or Trax used to make that outfit that, you know, now a hundred thousand people are using and, you know, Grand Theft Auto Web Three, I feel like I, at least that's my thought. I don't, I, but I mean, you know, I'm wrong literally almost all the time. So yeah, um, no, I just love like the <laughs> philosophical side of it. Like I, I just want like, uh, you know, I don't know. We need the lease in here so we can bounce the philosophy back and forth. But it, it, it I, yeah, like it's, uh, I can see it both ways. It also comes down to but, IP like, rights, you know. I think and. And it's intention, IP rights, and, you know, unfortunately, and so, you know, these platforms are still evolving, just like Decentraland is. And so, you know, obviously it depends on when you create it and what those <clears throat> IP rights are that you're granting to the platform or to whatever it is that you're creating on. And the VRMs, you know, there's positive and negatives to it, just like a lot of other things. You know, the thing is, if you try to enforce IP rights as a small creator, it's extremely difficult. Uh, you know, you're dealing with people around the world and people can very, very easily just recreate or you know duplicate what you've created sometimes. And there's almost no way to track all those people down or send cease and desist or, you know, go to all these different platforms and metaverses and uh, marketplaces and all these different things to try and protect your work. And so, you know, okay, why would someone want to do that? Well, you know, just like we discussed earlier, 
you know, these gaming companies coming in, what is everything about? Well, it's about money, you know, as a creator, um, money can be important. You know, if you're spending your full time creating, uh, you have to have revenue streams. And so if your revenue stream isn't made on the second thing, or like right now, marketplaces don't even allow, um, you know, you can't even, you can go to blur and sell all kinds of things on there with, with no, um, you know, money going back to the creator. So on the secondary, so like that's, you know, things that can hurt the creators. And so, you know, things may evolve and they, you know, may, that's just how it may have to go. But I would like to see maybe an option for a central land to allow creators that option to have their VRMs to be exported or not. So that's just my personal opinion. Well, I would direct you to the terms of use section 12.4, uh, titled NFTs, uh, if you and I and I and if you and then you can also uh, re, check in the uh, the RFIs. I ask them to specify. So it doesn't in the in the in the terms of use it says and in the marketplace if you sell it and buy it. But they clarified that any giveaways won in games. But if you own the wearable, you have the IP rights. Like the owner waives all like claims, so you can you can essentially do whatever you want. The only thing stopping you or like you know for example, Track said you know wanted to do a VRM that involves some like a Nicky Fuego VRM and. Uh, he, you know, very kindly didn't follow through after she was like, hey, like, I don't, that doesn't make me feel good. I'd appreciate if you didn't. But like, technically, he absolutely, by the terms of use of Decentraland, has the full, like, permissions and rights to do that. Though I will also point out that if you uh, control F SDK in the terms of use, uh, it's, oh, there's only one mention of it, but it's SDK 5. So the terms of use in Decentraland could probably use a, you know, an updating since it doesn't hasn't obviously been updated for the entirety of SDK six, uh, as Nikki pointed out, the words VRM never appear in it, which obviously they don't, since it doesn't even hasn't even been updated to SDK six mentioning references yet. But um, for all intents and purposes, as a Decentraland creator, like you have given Decentraland, you know, and Decentraland does make clear that they don't own the IP to the items you submit, but they do in the um, in the content policy make it clear that they can essentially do whatever they want with your content. Uh, some argue that it's just for the purposes of promotion, but as, as it's written, it doesn't really seem to make that particularly clear and clarifying. And it just basically gives them absolute carte blanche to like remake it, rework it, make it better, do whatever they want. So like, you know, the, it is, there are some, there are, there are some very centralized things within the, the open metaverse at the moment as it exists, but it would be, it would be good if we want, if we came together as a community to like kind of pressure the foundation into perhaps, you know, getting some feedback from the community on how to improve the terms of use and, you know, um, clarifying and fixing some things. Cause I, I do agree. I do agree that it probably should be an optional thing you could opt in or out of for VRM exports. Now, I think in general, I think you're going to benefit as a creator if people are taking your VRM and, you know, bringing it around the world. And I, and I feel like last week or two weeks ago, um, um, ah, I can't remember her name. She's a lovely lady. But she, had, I feel like, said that there is the technological ability to kind of, like, encode some kind of, like, you know, royalty or acknowledgement or credit into the, like, you know, into the VRM itself. So that's, like, when it ex gets exported, it could be, like, you know... There could be some kind of some if there was some way to like instill royalty so like when it sells the like creators of the art that you made a vrm just you know get five percent of your sales or something that they could share like i feel like that would also be a cool thing if someone could make that technology well reality. odd job said but, uh, that he has inscripted every everything he's made is somehow in uh like inscripted in, and that's a, i'm not going to pretend like it's in the blah 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 code but but like talk to aj maybe like if he could do that then possibly there's some way to like track that token back and yeah the royalties like like again money talks so i'm i'm sure that if people could profit from their vrm selling like on every platform all of a sudden that might be that might be a-okay -okay. i do know if you're going to try to sell your stuff in monaverse or if i should say someone else's stuff you do need to make sure in Moniverse that they're all one. Uh, what is the, I can't remember the correct terminology. I had someone else do it for me and then I never actually went back to upload it because I, I took the the rat from the rat game that the, the foundation did for uh, Music Fest, was it? Or was it AI? One of the yeah, the Metadyne. The, yeah, because that, well, that is the foundation. They just chose a cool new name. Um, but um, I totally was going to take that and try to sell it in the Moniverse. And like, I made it clear in the bio, like in the, bio, like the description of it being like, you know, this is like, you know, this would, for all intents and purposes, be the first, like, you know, 
thing taking advantage of this like fact and here's where in the in the terms of use it says it's okay but i i had it had I, did, I had merged all the wearables into one mesh. That's the thing. Is in Moniverse, you need to. Ha- it has to be at most two meshes. So like some some platforms do make it more difficult for people to take your VRMs and then sell them, whereas others uh, like Nifty. And to be fair, I think most of the people I've seen using meshes from Decentraland are just get, doing fun things to get, like giveaways and things, which I think is you know still like a, I, on the same spectrum, but it is not nearly as you know scummy and insidious as you know taking you know, Nikki or Rustan's work and selling it is, you know, like you're celebrating, you are in a sense celebrating that creator, in, you know, in its own way. But it is, I think it is still on the spectrum, obviously, of, you know, of of things. And I definitely understand why someone like a Nikki or a Rustan would not be cool with that, which is why when I went to do it, I specifically went out of my way to find a foundation assets that I thought were dope and good. And then I still got a little pushback from Nikki about it because she knows specifically which creator who worked for the foundation made it. And she's like, that person's really cool. And I'm like, yeah, but like that person couldn't sell it there if they wanted to anyway. And you know, I'm still butt bitter and butt hurt about my glasses. Um, but I, so but regardless, there are still people who would, would tell you that I would, that it would, is a dick move, even if it's a foundation minted asset. So, you know, there is, you know, you know, it's, but I think that, I think that it makes more, I still, I still want to follow through with that just because I think that, you know, specifically with the foundation asset i'm not interested in disrespecting any you know hard-working small creators in the space but i do think proving the point because like i feel like if the foundation did that and then would push back on it it would be a good way to like go like okay well how about we update the terms of service but uh anyway i i go on this rant like probably once a month so i'll stop well i would say some wearables are not quite as appealing to try to get on other platforms you know ones that have uh a lot of neon and things like that, they don't show up quite the same uh, just because of the settings for Decentraland versus like literally every other platform oh, 100%, yeah, that I've been on. Because I've tried to take some of my stuff to other places and unfortunately, you know, just needs additional work in order to, to get it to work properly. Yeah, no, there's a, like a, my, like my, like my, the glasses Doki made for me, like they, like when I loaded them into... Mona, was it Monaverse? I don't remember where I actually loaded them, but they were they were white. They did not have any of the color, which is like, you know, kind of defeats, considering one of the key points in my argument with the foundation was about the color of them and the fact they're a little bit smaller. Um, when when they just appeared white, I was very like, I was like, oh, well, this, these aren't my glasses anymore. These are these are these are different glasses, and I and I don't love them. I like them I like them in pink triangles. I don't want white triangles. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, no, you're. At, so I don't. I don't know anything about how to make a wearable, so I can't articulate why it doesn't work well. But, I, and, but for the record, I also think that's probably in a way good too, because like you know, it should. It should in general. It, it's nice that, that if you you know you as just a, a d bag like myself trying to potentially steal someone else's work to sell it can't you know actually get. The, you know the same quality you saw in Decentraland that made you love it in the first place. Though I will say that the Metadyne Rat looks real freaking good in Monoverse uh, and in any other place I've loaded that VRM. They, whoever made that did do a real good job and it is definitely interoperable in that way. And uh, someone should go and try to sell it somewhere because uh, cause Nikki shamed me out of the idea, I think. I think I've lost the taste for it. If, if Nikki's going to be mad at me about it, I don't want to do it. I wonder how the VRM export will affect um, Fashion Week in September because that's kind of the time when we have when we talk the most about like wearables and things we wear and brands that come in. Like last time we had you know Tommy Hill figure, uh, what is it, Balenciaga, like uh, Dolce and Gabbana there for that. But like it'll be interesting to see because you know, the foundation will work with all of these brands to, you know, to make these activations. I wonder, I wonder how it'll, if if it'll even be mentioned, if it's even something worth noting, or if it would be used as like a tool, like, Hey, yeah, we now have this, this option, bring your Tommy Hilfiger, you know, AI generated jacket in, and then we, we, you know, will seamlessly turn it into a VRM that can be used on every platform because I could, I could see that being a huge, draw for brands like let's just use a Tommy Hill figure that that want to have the footprint in the, the open metaverse but oh my gosh if you had to take a brand like Tommy Hill figure into sandbox and decentraland and monoverse and spatial and you know hyperfight all these others like oh my gosh that you would have to make connections and meetings with each one or you could just come to decentraland 
make your brand activation, run it through the VRM, and then all of a sudden you have, you know, your presence in essentially every metaverse that, that you know, can sustain importing a VRM. I mean, if someone really wanted to bring some publicity to Decentraland and to themselves, I think what they would do would be to take some of those wearables, export the VRMs, make sure make them all one mesh or whatever is necessary, optimize them, and then list them for sale on another platform. Because I'm pretty, I don't, I strongly suspect Adidas would be real upset if you know you tried to sell their sweet hoodies on other platforms. But like, for all intents and purposes, you absolutely could. Although, although when talking to June Punk about my own frustrations about my my glasses being used, which at the time I th- learned that the found no one at the foundation actually even understood the content policy, because if they did, any one of them would have been like, "Well, I'm sorry, Jared, but if you read this section of the content policy, it says we can do whatever we want with your wearables. Uh, please, please leave us alone." Uh, instead, they said I was. That, instead, they said they went with other approaches, but. But Tune Punk had told me that he's, he's like, no, you still own your IP. He's like, I've told all of these brands, they still own their IP, which is technically true. They do still own their IP. They're just also giving the IP to that very specific wearable away to each and every person who, you know, gets it. So, and I suspect that like, while it's, I agree with you, some people might like the idea of being able to spread across the metaverse as easily as possible. I suspect most of them would really be uh, very apprehensive at the thought that like, wait a minute, you're telling me I just gave away the IP to this to my to my this hoodie? You're saying anyone now owns this IP who has the hoodie? That's that's not what I want. Well, also that is not what I want. Also, at all. mixing IPs. Like, I mean, if I was wearing a, um, you know, I'm trying to think of which ones. Like, if I could wear a Coca-Cola shirt and a Pepsi hat, or like the um, Nike oh. shoes and a Reebok jersey, or or worse, let's get something really offensive and put that with the VRM, and then. And then, I mean, this is like evil, evil kind of thinking. Like, I mean, you, you, they want to protect brand identity. You don't want your brand being associated with something really nasty. So, yeah, like people could weaponize it. I'm not, I'm not condoning that. That's even, yeah, you're, yeah, your, your mind's even worse than mine. You were like, how do we get a Coca Cola shirt with like a little Nazi hat to remind them they invented? Fanta I'm, just not, so they I'm not going the there, Nazis. but I, but I, but I, I, yes, I have a creative mind. So unfortunately, I see all possibilities of like, you know, if they really wanted to screw somebody over, I mean, yeah, land too. Like I could put something really offensive. Uh, next to uh, Sinful's build and then nobody would ever want to come there and they could never stop me until they talked to HP. Like, I mean, yeah, like... <laughs> yeah, actually, the foundation it's really yeah, awful. The foundation, someone will go to the foundation to get them to censor your, uh, your giant swastika. No, no, no. I, let's, let's not, we don't even have to go that... Let's not go that deep that fast. But, yeah, yeah. but like, what I'm initially... initially aren't Nazi memorabilia, apparently. what initially attracted me to Decentraland in my mind, like, I was like, I could put a giant middle finger here and nobody could stop me. I can't do that in all of these other games. Like, that was an initial draw. But what I was saying was not like, not like abusing the IP of the brands. I was saying like, brands might like it. They might think, oh, this is easier. I can come in and do this. Um, I am going to pivot a little bit. Toriyama is on site and they brought up a really good um, kind of a paragraph in comments. So, um, I'm just going to mention that because, yeah, because <laughs> there's so much to unpack here. Toriyama says, I'm listening to the conversation. I'm French. I think for Decentraland, there needs to be more games in the style of gun, like gun games, hence the Disney partnership. Anyway, I just saw the updates and Decentraland has big plans for 2024, arrive on mobile, multi-chains. Personally, I'm waiting for the Vivi-verse. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I love Vivi. Um, Master Collector. One thing to know is that the Disneyverse will trigger everything and the metaverses will continue to bull- build. And I am convinced that we will be able to move from world. There will be something for every taste. Decentraland, Dexart, Somnium Space, Sandbox, Roblox, Fortnite. The most played and streamed games in the world. And I'm forgetting some. Decentraland just needs Stargate. Anyway, for me, everything interesting meeting. So, yeah, like, I mean... All of these things. I mean, I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, all of these. They're... Disney, Disney, Disney will absolutely be the biggest. They'll crush it when, when they enter the space. So like everyone else will just have to like, yeah. The V is that how you say that? V V like yeah, V V. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a Funko Disney fan. They they I have co- I have collectibles. If you want to talk about, my, yeah. Anyway, I'm a I'm a big nerd. So anything that comes out, I I collect. Um. Oh 
oh gosh, I was going to say something notable and profound, but I lost it. So <laughs> last one. Oh, I see future goes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Goes right I know. Future, oh, no, future no, goes no. Has a You're cool fine. I was just going to say, I think people have an interesting opinion on the Disney verse. I think this is a great example of what I talked about earlier. Web two taking web three. So they, they inv- invested in Epic, which is Fortnite. And they're basically going to use the Fortnite platform in my idea to build out pocket verses or micro verses for all of their IP. So you want to go to the, you want to go to the Mandalorian like experience. It's going to probably be something like Fortnite, but Mandalorian, right? You want to go to, you know, something else like that, like the Avengers. And that's where I think Disney is a huge player, probably the biggest that will start implementing these concepts. And it gets back to Decentraland, just, you know, they're giving us the raw material. Um, you, you, you can't create a sh- there isn't like hey I'm going to jump into the central land and select a shooter game you know there isn't like just join this experience and start shooting um, because the central land is built on raw material so you know understanding what the foundation said they're going to do for 24 is really just better locomotion and a better way to access the central land not providing fall damage or things like that so we have to temper our expectations with this manifesto when we see Disney investing in Web3 and say, and then what does that look like? Well, and that's nothing new. Like, I mean, if you if a person is smart, they can look at patents that Disney has got and you can see what's coming a year, two years ahead of time before they do. They've had some crazy patents that I've seen in the park a year later and you're like, okay, I see what's coming. And what has Disney done? Like Polygon, they, I mean, Sin, you know better than I, like when they started um, investing and building out their presence, like using the Polygon coin. So I, I, I think you, you know better than I do. Oh, I, I think one day you'll be able to trade your Fortnite asset through the Polygon network. Hell yeah. I How'd just got the Lady, Lady Gaga battle pack yesterday. Not that I'm selling it, but I got some other ones. I gotta, you know. Anyway, I digress. So yeah, like holy oh. shit. But uh, I see Future Ghost in the in the uh, crowd, and I don't know how many proposals Future Ghost has ever authored. Maybe this is their first, and I, and I don't actually know if this should be a uh, DAO proposal or not, or something the foundation could do. But uh, I don't know if you're all many of you are familiar with Nifty Island, and they've done a really good job of like bringing communities on and like having communities be able to you know interact and engage as a community. And he's got a proposal he proposed earlier today. Should, should um. Should Nifty Island, uh, should Decentraland have a Nifty Island community? So, like, you know, like, there's the Vibe community on there. There's the Pudgy Penguins. Like, I, I think it would be, a, it makes sense. I could see, it seems like a logical way to help, you know, like, bridge the gap. And, like, you know, because, I mean, like, there's, like, again, I, I don't think it's a good idea. Like, in the same way I don't love the way people use Nifty Island to cudgel Decentraland. Like, there was that one dude who made the proposal, like, should we, should we punish the, you know, Decentraland desert deserters who are going to Nifty Defectors. Island. And it's like, well, no, and obviously defectors. Defectors, thank you. And it's like, no, like I absolutely think that it makes more, way more sense to embrace that space and like show them the strength of the Decentraland community. Because like one of Decentraland's greatest strengths is the community in many ways. Even though sometimes we bicker, like you know, people who know each other way too personally and well. But I think I do think fun at its foundation, the community is very strong, and you know, it's a good group of people who do ultimately want to see everyone succeed. You know, in some way. You know, even even the people you don't I don't like, I still want to see them succeed. I just want to see them succeed without being dicks to my friends. So, um, and not not that everyone I don't like or have an issue with is because they're a dick to my friends. But you know that is but but the, the most recent one, top of mind from this week is that. So, uh, but I think that's a good idea. And I don't I don't know if that's something the that dad would do or if that's something we should be reaching out through the foundation to do per se. I don't I don't know that process. Maybe we could ask Brandon how that works, because I, I, or the Vibe PT, how like the best way to incorporate that. But I think that that is like an interesting idea and definitely worthy of discussion. Because I mean, there's I mean, because I, I I see lots of DCL people playing, and like, and on top of that, like you know, the the one nice thing Spotty has to say about the Central Land is that you know it is an excellent way to get cool BRMs for Nifty Island. So like, it makes sense that like you know we should you know we we can absolutely help show off the Central Land's fantastic fashion as a community if we were to you know band together 
as you know, especially because I think that like many of the people who are in there in whatever communities they're part of now, because you can be a member of multiple communities. You know, it's not like you have to pick your favorite NFT or community to be like, oh, I I only rep you know Vibe or I only rep Sappy Seals. Like you can be a part of all as many communities as you want. So it seems logical and like a good a good way to help promote Decentraland in its own right fashion as well as you know just. Uh, yeah. Well, the best person to talk know. is is coming up. Make has uh, make like five months ago had this beautiful skin. Now he's got like scars all over his face because his he's gone to battle so many times and gotten beat up. And and I'm just in awe of Make because yeah, like I've seen I've seen you take the punches. Is he a Nifty Island? Warrior? No, 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 no. The battle of the the bulbs. Oh, of the, the linked wearables. wearables. Yeah, no, this was a this <laughs> this was like a at home battle. Nope, <laughs> I don't know. I'll stop. Make has make has moved some mountains in the linked wearable department. If anybody doesn't know, uh, how I are you this to... Saturday? Hey, hey, kids! We just are getting off the slopes with my little lady, but uh, you know I have to catch up and and see the family. Um, oh no, I can't hear him. Is it just me? Can you hear me? Oh. I can hear him. I hear him. I'll, I'll, I hear him. I'll, I'll take oh no, a lap. it's just me, Make. I can't hear you. I'll take a lap. He'll be back. Every, every, I think I was a one existence tweeted. Like every Twitter space ever these days is someone comes up, tries to talk, and then this exact dialogue. Wait, is it me? But yeah, also, because aren't the kid called Beast in Nifty Island too? Like, some of you guys must have some, you know, must know the process. It can't be that. I don't know the, I don't know, like, maybe you need a specific contract to link to, because like, that might be one of the problems, because like, I think the Decentraland wearables are all like, in different contracts, maybe? I don't know. I know they're all in different marketplaces on OpenSea, unless you like, email them to combine them. Okay, Mike, let's try this again. How you doing? Hey, 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 can you hear me now? Loud Vanessa? and clear, sir. So, plenty of good points circling through. I'm walking back with my little lady. We just got about 20 runs on the on the greens. Having a good Saturday. That's also um, nifty, you know. So one, yeah, the beasts are on Nifty. They, they, most of them are independent, such as like Red, who comes to DCL and a bunch of others. There's still a question mark about, you know, the VRMs and importing them. Uh, I've seen. Pokemon characters and things like that. And it's probably going to take a little while to sort itself out. So I could understand why people you know, if you had a Drip or uh, a Mew bubble, you wouldn't have for se to go, you know, to for someone to resell it. But you know, these are some of the things we have to work out in the future. Um, I guess I got an update. So, Kness. Am I losing make or? No, I'm. he's cutting in and out for me too. Okay. Make your choppy. Oh, hey, what's up, uh, long shot? While we wait for Make to come, uh, make signal to come back. Hello, everyone. That's popped I'm gonna in. Drop I'm speaking. Thank you for having me. I'll, I'll be down if you have any questions or anything. But sounds good, last Thank, Thank you for you. coming. And uh, yeah, everyone that's listening to the space currently, make sure to like and retweet the space. Let everyone know that we're here. Um, and if make, if you're back, take it away. Oh no, I just saw him drop. <laughs> I mean, wait. Oh, but does anyone know the process for how to get a Nifty Island community? Like, it doesn't. It, it seems like it does. It can't be that hard since you know 
every the vibe did it. I mean, not that the Viper nobodies. They're you know polygonal mind. They know their shit, but can't be like can't be impossible. Like Nifty, and, and I don't know if any of you have ever spoken to Charles of Nifty Island, but he is really a pretty pretty nice guy. Very very direct. But I think very would be more than well excited to have the Central Land have its own community in the space. I don't think he I don't think he sees any kind of feud or you know beef. I, I think his I believe his exact words were he was just sad that like I was sad. But I felt like his project was shitting on something I cared about. So, like, you know, he's definitely, like, you know, a d- good dude. I-, I-, I think, you know, I-, I don't think we would regret associating with them. I mean, you know, I- I- that said, I-, I am overly trusting sometimes, so <laughs> occasionally. Like, I-, I-, I still want to believe that deep down and Jester isn't trying to be a I think thing, I think these platforms are, I think we have to, I think we are having an identity crisis on how to how to compartmentalize what these blockchain platforms are in our human brains. We really like order. Like humans like to have everything in order. We like to know that, you know, uh, something that goes woof is a dog and something that goes meow is a cat. We can categorize them. And, And in web three, well, blockchain technology like Decentraland uses blockchain Um, so does Nifty Island. So they're the same, right? But they're not. And like, I have to tell myself this, it's like a train and tracks, right? Like Decentraland is the train track. What you put on top of that is the train. And then what you put in those train carts, those are the NFTs. So like, we can't compare, we're like, we, we do ourselves a disservice when we start comparing Decentraland to Nifty. It's like, no, it's, it's, you can't like, I mean, yes, there's build aspects that are the same, but the gamification, the ability to own different things. Jared, can you mute yourself? I don't know what's going on, but it's some. Damn it. I, 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 I thought yeah. I did. I was being, I was trying to be good about it this week. I apologize. No, I, I think, I think like we are a so like Decentraland's a social media platform. It's a place where you can go and build games. You can have concerts. You can wear your NFTs. It's, it's just so many different things to so many different people like that. And, and so I, I think absolutely, you know, to bring it back to what, um, what was being proposed is like, can we have a community there? I think that as NFT projects continue to build out, like it's, it, it's no longer acceptable to just be like siloed in one, like I'm a kid called beast. So I am a NFT project, like no way that like, we don't know how far this is going. Like it's going to be way bigger than that. So I don't know. Like, I just, I think we can't close doors. We, we got to keep them open. That doesn't mean we have to run over there and, and now be like the next best friend. Like I like it. It's fun. But I also liked Farmville until I got sick and tired of grinding for my corn crops, you know? And, and so they're like, kind of the same thing. Like I, I'm kind of like shy and not antisocial, but like, I don't always want to go be social for my, my, blooms for like the next thing so so maybe decentraland is a better platform for a true introvert introvert like me but maybe those other ones are great because they force you to go interact with other people like i just i think we can't can't close doors like this space is too god dang big to close doors like who knows where it's all going but don't close the door So you support a DCL community? In why theory. not? Like what? Why not? What's the what's the worst? Thing? Yeah. What like literally? What is bad? I mean, I, I should feel comfortable and confident enough in my participation in Decentraland to be like, yeah, let's do it. Like, because if if it, yeah, like if it makes me uncomfortable, then we should get curious. Why? Are we threatened? Like, are we feeling like Nifty offers something that we don't have? Well, guess what? It does. <laughs> It does, and we'd be stupid not to acknowledge it. But that doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean like Decentraland's bad. It doesn't mean the cent- like we like most things in life. We got our own problems to worry about. Like we shouldn't be looking at what everybody else is doing. And but I, I don't know. then at the same time, we should. We should go over there and play it and be like, wow, I love that active build tool. But you know, yeah, I, I agree with you. Like it's all like the. A, if we're the open metaverse, and that's what Decentraland is like selling itself as, it should absolutely embrace, you know, anyone else in the space, I think, just because like, you know, competition is always good. Like, you know, being challenged to face your weaknesses and, you know, now don't get me wrong, 
I, I would understand. I, I, I would understand if a Yamel or an Esteban were a little bitter in the mouth, having seen you know the some of the you know the people just absolutely shitting on Decentraland using like Nifty as a comparison, because you know I think that a lot of that is coming out of like you know people being mad at Decentraland for not being what they want it to be when it's you know it's it is do it's it's not you know it's not I mean, being the open metaverse and being user generated content is like in its very nature like. It was always supposed to be something that was kind of, you know, came from the people and not necessarily just, you know, the foundation handing down to us, you know, awesome game content per se. Now that said, we should be mad at the foundation for not giving us the best tools to make that content, perhaps. There's definitely valid criticisms, but yeah, like, I, I could understand why they might be a little reluctant out of the gate just from the way they were introduced to it, perhaps. Because, uh, you know, if you, if you, if you got, became aware of it through Spotty's Twitter feed, I could see being a little like, oh, well, fuck those guys. But... You know, looking past that, you know, as a person who makes lots of bad first impressions, I I try not to cling too hard to my own bad first impressions of things. Um, and I definitely think that like the team over there, like Charles is doing a great job of trying to get cool people doing, you know, building and creating and like promoting. And, and I think that, you know, I, and I mean, I think it'll, you know, I, maybe it makes sense for from the foundation might want to wait until like it's had a chance to mature because it is still very new and it's very, it could be a flash in the pan for all we know, like. I don't think so. I think they've done a really good job of like, you know, ex- getting excited a lot of like people that I've, you know, enjoyed who I've met through Decentraland and other areas of the, uh, you know, NFT space. They all seem very excited and happy to keep, you know, going there and kind of building and, you know, growing there. And and many of people aren't just abandoning Decentraland either. It's just kind of a like, you know, and also thing, you know, like Knights of Antrim is not leaving Decentraland because, you know, Matt spent like, you know, a weekend making like a fun little, you know, RPG battler and, you know, and nifty so it's and i and i honestly think if like the central creators go there and make cool experiences like that's just going to get people to go oh like what other cool things do you do like i would love to go and see them oh they're in the decentraland let me go check it out like i think it can only be a good thing for decentraland I think. well and if you if it is a flash in the pan that's great because guess what big restaurants have in their kitchen they have 20 frying pans over the the stoves cooking some dope shit so who cares if that pan over there is really you know making a really good meal we know right now that like they are rebuilding the client at Decentraland from the ground up so like we should expect no like that's that's where we're at like that's there's no surprises there like we have we're in the building stage we got our hard hats on the construction you know signs are up like we are under construction so let's not be re- unrealistic and think that we're gonna have like some flashes in the pan right now but and that hurts maybe a little bit to be like yeah gosh like we're not where we we gotta restart but the hope is that that will put us in the position where we're building a whole new you know kitchen and i really believe like if like look at the size of the numbers of the web 2 gaming and we're saying that like there's not room here for that like there is so much room and i think it's just like i've learned so much about like what i love about decentraland and how i can build better here by exploring those other platforms so i think that i don't know i think i think people should i think people need to be okay to go different places explore different projects like i mean in Decentraland, I got pink hair, but you know, I love my beast and I have a vibe. It like, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it's not a marriage. I'm not married to any one place. Now I have Decentraland tattooed on my skin. So obviously, you know, you're talking to somebody who understands what home feels like and what I love about this place. And it's not, it's not the graphics. It's not the gamification. It's, the people in this room and so you know if you guys all leave i'll probably want to follow you wherever you go but yeah i think i think we're on the right track i think we got to just keep um i freaking love it when i see people explore like dr drip i saw post something about like the um you know the clone x avatar and like it's just so cool like i don't know i just it's cool to see humans you guys grow on a human scale like that's more interesting than anything that a platform can build like the personal growth that each one of you is doing like i remember when rustan went to hyperfy it was like what you're leaving us and now it's like oh it's okay like no like we can do this (laughs) 
Yeah, you go to the, like, he did exactly what you said, though. Like, he went to HyperFi and he saw the way that it's a better builder and the tools for creators. And he, like, you know, he came back and he was like, Blastrum, we need to make, we need to bring this to Decentraland. The people need to know. I mean, I don't know if that's exactly how the conversation went, but that's how I like to imagine it. And, um, you know, and now they've, they've brought in World Builder, which I, I don't know. I've never, I don't own any HyperFi land yet. I, it's on my to-do list and someday it's going to mint out and I'm going to deeply regret having never gotten one. But, uh, but yeah, like I think that it absolutely makes sense. You got to go see what all the new kids are doing. Cause like, you know, like HyperFi didn't take over. Like, don't get me wrong. I mean, you guys should all follow. Oh no, I can't remember his name, but I can picture him. But the, the founder like lead on dev on that is like, you know, his tweets are super interesting. Like, it's always like the kind of dude I always just read when he says, I'm like, I don't understand half of this, but I, I'm excited and I'm going to retweet it so that other people who might understand what you're talking about can see it. Um, but uh, if I, I don't know, anytime Rusan tells me someone's a genius, I'm always just like, oh, like, let me, let me see if I can understand what they're saying. Yeah, Never yeah. Hey, on that note, that's how I feel about Olavra. Um, Olavra from Foundation. Like, if you ever see that person in World, um, quietly, like, follow them. Don't make it stalkerish, but, like, follow them. They, uh, can you mute yourself, Jerry? Yeah, I'm yeah so no, that's okay. I like your uh, ASMR keyboard, but yeah. So like Olavra, when they're in World, they're testing something. So a few times I've followed them, and like I have, that was when the sun's like the first sunrise I ever saw. Um, okay, and they may or may not have like posted a, a cryptic reply on my um my my birthday party or my birthday tweet where I was like, this is launch day, and this is four years later. And Olavra was like, I can't wait to see it a year from now. And I'm like, no, like Olavra, what do you know? I, I like, I want to know what you know. And so it, I don't know, like, it just makes me um, bullish of what's to come. That And yeah, I think there, I think there's more. Yeah, there's some cool shit on them. No, yeah, I talked to that dude for an hour once and it was like super, like it was, that was one of the like most like got me back on like, like the off the fun train and onto the just like oh yes we can vibes and i'm trying to find his twitter so i can tell everyone to go follow him yeah uh it's at o l a v r a d c l the blue hair and the skeleton with an eye patch product manager at decentraland yeah uh, he also has another time i chased them but they yeah. were they were like uh they were krampus they were giving away free stuff so it has paid off very well for me to stock olabra Sorry, Alavra. I know this is really awkward and weird now. Yikes. I think it's Alvaro. Oh, I'm right, sure Alvaro. it is. Oh, no, you're, you're, you're right. His, you are saying his, you're, you're, yeah, you're pronouncing his, his at handle, because that is Alavra. Now I, I now understand what you, yes. Okay. His name is Alvaro Luke, or I Luke you, but his, just his at is Al, o, Alavra. Yes, okay. Now I see where I was confused. He made like the yeah, um, he's like a for. skeleton and a question mark wearable in Decentraland. They're like one of the first, very early wearables. Yeah, yeah. It's it's an the dude has hundred eighty six followers. It's absolutely ridiculous because yeah, he's absolutely like one of the one of the people guiding Decentraland in the future. And he doesn't tweet that much. He's hardly tweeted at all in twenty twenty three or I don't think he's barely tweeted in twenty twenty four even. But but regardless, like like you said, yeah, like if he has something to say, like. It's always worth checking out. You're just like, okay, what's what does he think is interesting? Okay, let's see it. But yeah, no, hundred percent. And like talking to him for an hour was like super, super fun. It was super it got me gets you get you very hyped. Uh, that's when I learned about the shape up process that the central end is like you know implemented in like back in June. Which I don't know. I, I feel that, that reminds me. Like, the I feel like the foundation gets hammered so hard where it's just like you know before it was like there aren't enough updates and then it was like well there isn't a big enough vision for the updates because like they moved to this more smaller piecemeal thing where they're like let's let's get as much like let's find these little things we can do and like i don't know it's, and now they're kind of back to like a kind of a and now they found a compromise though so the criticisms i think do lead to like you know benefit of changes where they're like okay we're gonna now do the bigger client stuff well you know ideally they'll still be doing some smaller things along the way but um but yeah i, I definitely think that like you're correct I, you're right i'm I, I've only ever seen him in World like one time, and it was at like a party. I don't think he was testing anything, but uh, but it, I would if I did see him in World, I would absolutely be like, okay, what's happening right now? Do I can I see it? What's changed? Because yeah, he's definitely one of the great, one of the one of the cool people. Oh, I got to mute my, my tab. My poker thing just started. Um, 
don't want Knesset to yell at me again. But yeah, he's. I mean, I would love to hear Ben Sparga talk sometime because like anyone who's ever spoken to Ben Sparga just comes back being like, that dude's, that dude's the dude. And like, the only time we ever exchanged tweets, I was like criticizing the, um, the columns in the central lands, like in Genesis Plaza and being like, because like, because like he, his game, which I think is one of the coolest old things in the central land was like at the very top off of screen. And I was like, listen, and then like, in our back and forth, he, he was just, I, I it hadn't been made clear to me that, but I just remember saying like, well, it's not your fault, man. Like you're not, and he's like, no, he's like, I, I made that whole plaza. And I was like, oh, I apologize. And I retract much of my criticisms. Um, Cause like, I mean, he also probably made it like what, like three years ago for like, you know, I don't know how early, how far from your day four, you know, your day one photo it was into existence, but it's been there my whole the time. The first so, you know, day wanna... photo? That was day, that yeah. was day one. That was like. Yeah, yeah. When, how far from that photo did the like, you know, the waterfall plaza with the columns take you exist? Was that there within the first year? I'm trying to Had think. To... It wasn't for, I, I'm, because I, I was very, <laughs> I was actually most active before you could ever walk into, into Decentraland. By the time you could walk here, I had already, you know, taken a little bit of a, a sabbatical. Um, and then I would come through, like, kind of when there were big events, like I watched the I think the Blue Falcon rocket, I watched that happen. Um, I want to say it was a while because that really, I can't, I can't give you specifics. If I did, it would be inaccurate. So I won't, I won't even try, but how about this? Between launch date and November, 2021. Does that help? That, that checks out. Cause it was definitely there like in November of 2021, I feel like, cause that was around when I got there. Yeah. And then to be fair, when I first came into Decentraland, I went directly to the true venues for like the first month before I ventured out. So I guess I could have not been there in November, but but yeah. I but either way, it's been there for a while now. And I and I mean, you know, it's it's always it's, as we all know, it's always easier to criticize something than it is to, you know, make it or you know, suggest how to make it better. So, you know. And, and I I'm much better at criticizing things than I am at making them better. So well, and I think everybody's artistic aesthetic is going to differ. Like what I think the, you know, if you, if you said the words metaverse and like, you know, blockchain metaverse NFT, like I'm thinking ready player one, like dark colors, neon, cyberpunk, futuristic, you know, but then when I think like Decentraland, it, it's never been that at all. Um, and so, or, or yeah, if you look at the original ad advertisements, um, you know, where there's like freaking flying cars and skyscrapers. It doesn't look like that either. So, you know, maybe no, somewhere I, in the I, I don't love the color scheme of Genesis Plaza. Not, and not like the, the starting location is cool. I dig the, I, I dig the like Greek godly kind of pillory like vibe. But the like, once you get out of the building into the orangey leaves, the like weird fall colors sort of, I don't, I don't love it. I, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. It's uh. But it is unique. It is uniquely it. it is you know it is distinct. So I, that part I you know I appreciate. But Make is back. Maybe he has better service now. Oh, oh Make, I'll invite you up. You don't have to accept if you don't want. You know I was um oh I, I don't know Make maybe you can't maybe you can't maybe you can't. Um, I was looking through some of my art supplies like two months ago, like some of my notebooks and I can I like open this, this painting, you know, canvas book and I am like confront or like I'm, I'm all, I see trees on the paper and they're familiar. They're like Decentraland. And I remember like, I actually painted a picture of Decentraland in like, early days like right around launch like I went in world and just stood there but I painted it on real paper like with watercolor um because I because like there's a specific crook of the tree you know the default tree in Decentraland so it's kind of cool because back then I was like I want to paint Decentraland I want to paint like but in real world because it's like take something digital and do like reverse NFTs where you take a picture of something real and turn it into an NFT take the NFT and turn it back into something real so it was so crazy I like I remember I remember the day very much because I was like oh, I'm gonna you know do this but I never thought about where that painting went so I don't know maybe maybe sometime soon I'll like post it but it, it was really cool just to see a watercolor interpretation of what the 
the world looked like back then. Because I, yeah. Well, y- y'all know my opinions on the sky. It's improved so much. I, I, I remember that you hated it at first. I, I, I love the, I love Knessa's Central Land arc because I think it is a one that is very relatable to most people who have either, like, who have stuck around. Because at some point, if you're if you're if you've been here this long or stuck around, you obviously love and appreciate it on some level. But I think most people at one point or another have you know felt the frustration of the like the pace at which it is moving towards our dream vision for it. And so I, I think you, so so the fact that you've been here for longer, or at least you, your journey started longer than most all of ours, I think makes it, you know, helps, it gives people hope that they're like, okay, like I'm annoyed as hell right now, but like, it's going to get better. It's going to be okay. Like, I, I can tell you what I, will have two sons yeah, like I can tell you what I live with is the guilt of leaving. I, I can tell you like, I, the shame of, of like, leaving a platform thinking it's not good enough and then I and then I come back in 2021 in November and all of a sudden I look like I'm a smart person because I bought land you know and I'm like oh like I I um the like I could have been building that whole time I could have been learning STK I could have been submitting stuff into game jam I could have actually built this place instead of bitching about, I don't like the clouds, like, okay, I'm going to take a break. And there were other real life things. It wasn't, it wasn't just that. Um, but, but, but I think that's like super common. Like, cause most places you don't actually can't build, like you buy something and then you get what you're given. So like, it totally makes sense that your first reaction would be like, this isn't good enough. What the hell? And like, of course your first thought wasn't, how can I contribute? Because when you buy a blizzard game, they don't care what you think about the art. So like, you know, don't feel guilty. Like, you know, you, you figured it out eventually. Yeah, I mean, I did. And, and I, like, I mean, I also, like, I think we don't talk about enough just the investment side of, uh, well, we don't talk about enough. We don't talk about it much, as we should probably not talk about it much. But, like, buying mana at a certain price, selling at a certain price. Like, what we're building is leading towards something. It, something's going to happen. <laughs> and so I also can't state that part of the journey enough that um i think y'all are in for a wild ride if if history repeats itself it's it's freaking insane now the next bull run won't be the same as mark zuckerberg saying hey facebook is meta that that was insane and in retrospect we we all should have sold all of our land and everything and just taken profits so we can rebuild better um but i yeah like there's parts of that journey i don't talk about um but I think anybody spending time investing their time, investing their money, um, has the potential to be life changing. Yeah, I was talking to a uh, you know Dom, aka Altcoin Radio, aka Toast Smoke to- Toast Smoke now. He he has his own new. He's doing more traditional gaming content stuff now for his own fun and entertainment. But uh, he was we were talking about how he had like bought mana at like nine cents. And I'm just like, what? nine cents that's insanity like you were that because that wasn't even that like he didn't get to dc old that much sooner than i did like he i believe he still started in 2021 like in early 2021 you could get like nine cents man i believe maybe he was here late 2020 but like because it's that that the, it is the chart for mana in 2021 was absolutely insane because when i by the time i got here like mana was basically five dollars like that's that was, nuts yeah i yeah, yeah like nine cents to five dollars is like that's like a once in a lifetime kind of like opportunity you know <laughs> yes yes um what did you buy your first man for? four cents Vanessa. now and naturally I, he only bought like i think 300 usd worth you know like and i'm sure you also didn't you know invest you know a million dollars or whatever you know you didn't invest the whole farm i assume if you did congratulations i'm happy for you uh you don't you don't come off as a billionaire but like but if you but like it's, i'm a te- you know, you know i was said, a, you know, I was a public school teacher so you know we we roll in cash when you work for the public school system and you get you know your summers off but um i will say that th- those were days like put yourself in the crypto scene those were also crazy freaking days where like ripple xrp was going off and like I mean that they were no 
nobody knew if everything was going to zero like ethereum was 200 dollars. it was like ah, i don't want to spend it it's too expensive like i mean it was it was brutal like it was yeah i bought my first ethereum at like just around four thousand dollars to mint the absolutely most trash nfts of these guitar playing rabbit gifts which to, me, to this day I still think are adorable and someday I will figure out a way to use that IP. But I absolutely got in at the Pico top. I, I am a walking top six. I swear to God, if you see me going like, bye, 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 that is exactly the time you should sell, sell, sell. I have just no my, no instinct for how to be a good crypto investor. Yeah, I mean, I'll just say like the fear, like the like I I shouldn't have bought my land. It was stupid. Who buys digital land? in 2019 because that's i couldn't even walk in the world so like <laughs> I, you know so anyway i i spent two years thinking decentraland was the biggest mistake of my life and what am i doing i am absolutely ridiculous yeah so so just i i think it is worth noting that the people that bought in back then they bought an idea and they were crazy because normal healthy people don't buy stuff they can't see. They don't buy land in a world they can't walk in. Like, I didn't know what it was going to be. Like, it, yeah, probably really one of the more not smart decisions of my life. And the only reason it turned out well for me is because, you know, this place is like, it's doing okay. <laughs> and Mark Zuckerberg. So, so I don't know, like a couple of turns in history could could have gone much deeper and darker. But I bring that up because I think it's, I think when we lose our focus and when you lose your North Star, like you're, you know, if you're sailing on a ship and you lose your navigation, like it can be really scary. And right now it might feel like we've lost our navigation because, oh my gosh, we got to go rebuild and, oh, our competitors are coming out and, oh my gosh, they're stealing our VRMs. But like, really, I think we need to just, I don't know, like maybe, so maybe that's why I'm like, putting the Decentraland logo, inking it on my skin. Maybe that's why I'm like bullish here because I've seen where it's come from and, I, and I've and i already gone through that road once of being like, oh no, it's not what I want, you know? And I'm, I'll tell you what I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna do that again. I'm like, I see the value in it. Now, I might still make stupid financial decisions, but I'm gonna try to lessen those in the future. I mean, you know, what is that? There's like that expression, like, you know, oh, something about genius and idiocy, like being such a, like, the, it's hard to tell the difference sometimes. Well, so, you know. There was a point like six months ago and it was the, it was a, I, you know, celebrated it to myself. It was like six months ago. It was the time where I officially spent more time loving Decentraland than hating Decentraland. Because that's how long I was like, God, that was stupid. Why did you do that? Like, I tried to sell my land. I, I was out. Like, nobody was buying it in the summer of 2021. I kept lowering the price. Come on, like, somebody buy it. Nobody would buy it. So then I just took it off the market. But, like... Th thank God you took it off the market. Because there's... You always read those horror stories about the people who list their thing for, like, too low. And then, like, the bull market does come. And then they just, like just sad Pikachu face so like they, at least at least you took it off I mean I guess you know you never did sell it so you didn't actually uh, you know you didn't sell it at the top where you could have probably made I, I don't know how much land you have exactly but I know the numbers of amount people were paying for land was absolutely obscene but I, I mean but you know that's how the charts go though you're you know it's you're still worth it's still worth more than when you bought it now I, I'd imagine so like you know the in the future is still limitless and like you know and the people are still here building so I don't know so, still well, I, I I wish I had more, more land. Like I wish I had, I I do just wish I had more parcels so that I could like, <laughs> so I can make little apartment communities for my friends to come and live next to me. That's literally what I would do if I had more land. Well, we can all get apartments at Meta Residence Tower, which I still haven't got. I need to go check out my apartment and see what they've done to upgrade that place because I do feel like that's a because they they've had a, they've had a whole ass uh, grant there of their own since the last time I was checking out there, and like I believe they added mini games I haven't even played yet. I've just been like so busy and like I'm always just anxious that I'm going to check something out and then it's going to consume me and I'm going to just end up like spending money on it again because like I know they have I know they have a monetization system which some people have criticized them for. 
but like which is another reason the DAO is such a frustrating thing to build in because like half the people are like when will you be sustainable and mon- be able to monetize on your own and the other half is like why are you charging for something the DAO helped pay you to build and it's like well guys come on you HP, Tobik, you guys need to fight this out yourselves and then have a unified front on what you want to tell these guys because you're the DAO committee you guys can't be coming at opposite ends of this coin on this one um, so to be fair I'm not sure if Tobik is strictly a when are you going to monetize your game person but uh, I, I feel like he's on that side of the argument I do But um, I do have an additional idea a- so you know, another thing you can do is in world builder you know, as long as you have a name you have your own world an entire world of like 2400 plus parcels and in there, right now, even right now, you can go in there and then you can section off different parcels and create your own world and lands. And so you can create roads kind of like we did in the in-world builder in our lobby. And then you can give other people build rights to certain plots. And then that can be their land within your world. If you want to choose your own neighbors, you can literally choose how much land to give your neighbor and where they are and all that kind of stuff. So all of that's already possible wow. today, right now. I just Canessa just doesn't own any names. Uh, though, so like it's just never gonna, you know, if I was, not gonna work if I out. was still teaching at the high school, I would take my students to the computer lab and I would have them each build out their own world like that. Like that would be so cool. We're, we're we just- have a class, so we have a class doing that from Hong Kong. So there's a hundred people in a class, I believe, or something like that. And they, Koshi's working with them remotely. And they, what he's been doing is he's been using his name and working on that and then giving them access to this land. And so they've already done one session so far and they're going to be doing more in the future where they're actually going to be building. The first one's just kind of the intro because they had zero experience for Decentraland. So they kind of just did some basic stuff. But do you mean that that's a Decentraland ambassador, isn't it? What do you mean? What, what is? Or is that my- the, the person, the person, Koshi? Said, the Koshi. No, am I thinking of the wrong? I don't. I'm thinking of Kenji. I don't think so. Thinking yeah, of... Kenji's an ambassador. My no, Leonard. Leonard C is the ambassador for China. Koshi's our audio guy. Oh, he he did our, our all of our um, sounds for IWB. I don't think I have any. Of these that Koshi is in, awesome. I was just uh, confusing K name. My bad. Do you, um, Mise? I could see like just a suggestion, like any kind of like, uh, like, like I didn't know about that but it would be really cool if you had it, you know, here's more work for you, your weekend assignment, you know, like, but, but like break that down in a way that's digestible for people to understand so that then, like, I'm just thinking the ambassadors are doing these events around the world. Like they could go step into, step foot into a computer lab and they could model like what you're doing right there and just do it over again. Cause that's been the talk of a couple different ambassadors that they want you know they're like hey can we give names away at the event and actually like give somebody their own world to build in right you know because that's gonna maybe go longer than um you know a t-shirt that that they'll put on and wear once but like if you actually were given your name that could be even more powerful so if you guys have any any more like information that or or maybe just contact we'll put people in touch that would be we do Yeah, we do. Um, So, you know, this just really happened on Monday. I think it was this week. So it was like a few days ago, five days ago. And we did have some documentation that was created. Koshi created some documentation. So we have two different things so far uh, for him that he's using as guides for his students. And so that's, you know, I have those. So I'm more than happy to to send those to you if you, um, you know, would like to take a look at those. And, you know, we can always improve them uh, with any user feedback. But we, we do have that. So I did ask him, you know, to, to give me some documentation because I'm curious as to how he's I, I helped, you know, verbally guide him through how he would do all those things. But he, you know, wrote up all this documentation on his own from the teaching perspective and and how he wanted to run it. So uh, that's what he ended up creating. And we do have two. They're kind of simple, just, you know, word documents, um, nothing intense or insane at this point. Um so that's kind of just to get people started. And then for people that are deeper, you know, we have tutorial videos I've been doing. Uh, I think I've done like 22 tutorial videos so far. And then all those are going to be available in world easily to view as well for people that want to get more advanced and things like that and find out more on specific subjects. That's perfect. That sounds like exactly what we need. So thank you. I would love that. And I'll pass it on to the ambassadors that are kind of like leaning that direction for their events. So that would be really cool. Yeah. And the key thing is, you know, really uh, that enabled it was Decentraland allowing people with Google accounts to create their own 
uh, and get into Decentraland. And then you get an ID, right? You get a, a, an address, essentially, like a temporary address. And then that's what you use uh, to add people to your scene for builder rights or for whatever scenes you would like to give people builder rights to. And then that's how they're able to build without owning you know, anything in Decentraland or having a, a Web3 wallet, essentially. That is pretty uh, sweet. And I know that HP wants to see more people at the ambassador events in world and not just, you know, to having hoity toity drinking parties, even though I think he's kind of a dick about it sometimes. But uh, I'd like to see HP happy ones just to just to memorialize the occasion. Because, oh, my God, guys, quick, take a photo. HP's happy. Um, but uh, I do I do agree that the more people in Decentraland at these events, the better. And that seems like a really great way to get people in the events. And I definitely think that the in-world builder is definitely like, it's a great stepping stone. Cause like, you know, going into the Decentraland to watch a party is, or a music show is cool, but like actually getting to like build something, I think will give people a better, like, you know, sense of, you know, interest and permanence and the potential for things they can do when they come back to it. Even though I, I, I'm sure the conversion rate will still be low just cause like, no one ever is easily converted to anything. But, so that's cool. Well, and it also so comes with the community coach. behind it, like, like, and and that is the, you know, in my opinion, the most valuable asset that we have here is community and knowledge. And so, like, with that in-world builder, if they come in and they're using the builder and they get lost, they have a question: where do they go for support? Versus someone using the browser-based builder and they get lost and they go somewhere for support. Uh, my guess is that the, the expediency of the in-world builder because of the last slice, if they have access to that, I believe that's the case. They could have access to some of it without having the the NFT, the membership Mace, Is that right? Or is there a specific, is there a separate server like Discord for in-world builder? So we don't have a separate Discord yet. You know, as of right now, we're just directing people to use the... Um, our, our channel for the DAO. So that's how we've been mostly communicating with people as far as, you know, on the plat, just giving us information or looking for things, you know, that's where we post our updates. We have right now we're finishing up our, um, it's already active, but we're adding to it. We have an in-world feedback as well. So that's like, um, in our settings options there. So you can go in and give feedback and, you know, any bug reports or anything you want to, you know, have added there. Um, but yeah, we do not have a, uh, a, a whole discord channel dedicated to it at this point in time. So we just kind of respond to those other channels. In addition to that, you know, last from I and other people on our team individually work with people one-on-one -on -one, communicate. And so, you know, if there's anything that needs to be done or people want, you know, want to see or whatever it is, any questions they have, you know, we're, we're always happy to help. Can I advise you to not to direct new people to the Dow discord? I just think that maybe, maybe like literally any other place would be a more, that is a good to... point. Maybe like just invite them to a, a hot dumpster fire with raccoons fighting over trash instead. Because I mean, you know, I mean, I'll have I'll have to. I'm told yeah. I'm told since they banned that Jared guy, it's really kumbaya over there. But every time I glance in there with an alt, it still seems like a dumpster fire just strolling down. Well, I'll have to see you know about speaking to last room about maybe having something added to last slice uh, Discord. You know, I just don't really know what other good options there are, but you know, maybe that's the, the best thing at this point in time. So we have an internal channel, but we don't that's have like an fair. external one. Cause yeah, I, I don't know what the last slice discord looks like. I, I'm under the impression all the cool stuff's gated behind NFT ownership, but I would bet imagine you could still like have one little like IWB help, help channel for the, for the noobs. Just cause you know, the, the Dow discord is, it's a spicy place. It's passionate people who are kind of frustrated arguing a lot of the time. I've seen Dr. Drip yell at people there. And I, frankly, Dr. Drip is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. So any place that can make him yell and call somebody an insufferable asshole is probably not the place you want to show your new fresh-faced optimist. Well, my point was that it, I'm guessing that the help you, can, you provide is is fast and i think that like new users that's probably where they get lost and log out is like oh i'll just fix it later i can't get this asset to go and see i'll just do it later and so so i think that's valuable um i do want to say something and i just kind of have to jump in here because it's like yeah but like Rustan said in the chat he, spaces won't let him speak sorry about that Rustan. 
wanted to say that Nifty Island actually acknowledges DCL landowners in the collector tier points. My guess, and it's a theory, I imagine Nifty Island reached out to the foundation and got zero response. Well, I guess maybe the DAO can look into ha- some way to do it. I, I don't. I wonder what the process is. I don't know. Because, like, I mean, the community—that it's a decentralized community. It shouldn't be gatekept by the foundation of like if we get to have like if like if the community wants to have a in Nifty Island community. Surely, like you know, the DAO is like. I mean, I guess like they they don't own the. Con- no, the DAO does is responsible for the contracts, aren't they? I have to. I have to go reread the bylaws to remember i know the DAO is responsible for some element of contract like maybe it's not the right ones i guess but i but your theory about the foundation disclosing them totally makes sense oh that was your stance yeah response theory yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Not, not your theory you would you would never besmirch the foundation you are a good and kind person who articulates your thoughts compassionately and would never suggest anyone at the foundation is making horrible mistakes at least not in public probably in a dm that i'm not invited to because as i discussed earlier i can't keep secrets and i would totally snitch the like, guys you won't believe what Knessa said she said yamel's a dick she didn't say that you know please if you're listening to this if someone clipped it oh please keep God, this part in shut up jared yeah they're gonna be like what what is this gossip i mean decentraland does not like to sniff out gossip but if it did wow but good morning make third time is a charm how are you i'm good i'm i'm found a safe spot i'm pulled over i finally got service i just kept driving until i got service because I was curious, I really wanted to hear some of the answers. I mean, ultimately, I think, first of all, like as it is for Nifty, it's great on how many collections they brought in, right? I think the energy proves, I think people have shown they want to build and they want to hang out and it's fun, you know? I mean, I came from Spatial and before that I was on Altspace. I mean, to me, as much as I love all of them, and I love Decentraland, especially when it comes to going and partying, I still think that's the most fun metaverse currently to go and have fun, to go listen to a show and to dance auto so you're not like butt mashing five and checking out the fashion. Like, I think Tang had it the other day. She was like, yeah, I'm a stylist. She put that out there and somebody was like clowning her. And I wrote back, I was like, listen, I've been a photographer for 20 plus years of my life. I worked on huge photo shoots, big, small, indifferent celebrities. And when it comes to styling, sure, you're not pinning, but you're creating and you're creating a vibe. I think there, there's nothing else like that than Decentraland. Um, having said that, finding our people usually happens with people who want to find metaverse experiences. So I think it's great that we keep growing in all directions. Um, so that's my thoughts. I'm, I play nifty and I go to DCL. I'm going to go see Crover after this and, and support my, my beast fam and, and listen to some good tunes. That's, I mean, this is what it's about is finding our people more than our place to me. Um, (laughs) <laughs> Having said that, did I miss any answers or thoughts or concerns when it came to the link wearables other than enjoy the island? And uh, and again, it hasn't, it's problem solving. And, and I really hope by the end of this, we come up with a better solution for all companies and it just might need to evolve. So we'll, we'll finish this process. We'll write about the process. We'll solve some of these tough issues. And then we're going to make the process better, gosh, I hope, so we can do the same thing that Nifty's doing. Open our doors to all of these people. Because the flip side is, now all these groups also have an asset, at least one, right? Where that wasn't the truth before for Pudgy Penguins. It wasn't the truth for Shells Orbs. Now there is a starting point where Link Wearables makes sense. So as much as maybe we're exporting right now, too nifty and we're experiencing it hopefully we get that in return i don't know if anybody's thought about that but i really hope we find a solution um i know many people have reached out at different periods for help um 
I really hope we can figure out delegate cash. I have a, a sneaking suspicion from using it on other platforms. I'm a bit worried about how long it'll take for the API callout to cycle through all the way through the delegated wallet. And that could also be an issue. So if we're problem solving or thinking, anybody who's got some thoughts while I keep digging on this, I'd appreciate it. Sadly, I don't think any of us had any awesome breakthroughs or thoughts about the linked wearable situation while you were away. Uh, there's, it's a, it's a, I don't know. There's, so it's, it sounds just very frustrating, and uh, I, I don't know. I think you and Knessa are probably as knowledgeable about that process as at this point as anyone. So, um, if, if you guys, which I, which I'm sure is a, a very upsetting and a scary thought to think about, but I know, I, I know. I know multiple people who have had past linked wearable props who just never got them fully implemented just because the process was so poorly documented and the like back and forth is so frustrating. So um, I just think, I yeah. honestly, I think reality of where we are all at as a web three, you know, group where there are small dev teams trying their best to keep their projects going. I think the ask of doing so much back-end work to get into Decentraland is is a lot to ask for in this current market. And I think it's also changed a lot. Like since Link Wearables were available, I don't think people really were like, shit, I got to really keep my my price pricey stuff in a ledger and I don't want that to connect to very much. You know, like I have many wallets that do many things, but I, I really do my best um, to avoid using it. And again, Nifty's a great example. It doesn't work perfect in Nifty, by the way. It's um, like you could use a delegated cat uh, wallet when it comes to like you could log in and you could use that wallet. But when you see the claims that you're you're welcome to like if you're a beast, you're entitled to this. You do still have to connect that final wallet to receive anything. That's the whole point, right? Is to make a buffer between whatever's going on. And where I don't think it's bad to connect to Decentraland, I think it sets a really bad precedent um, to ask people to do it. And, and that's my opinion. Um, and I think a lot of people feel that way who, who have gone through the pain of uh, starting over. I'll also just say, one of the worst things that really did happen when I did get drained was losing all of my metaverse friends and my personality and everything that I had associated to it. When that happened, at least I could walk away with my stuff. Um, there should be a right to be remembered. I think that's really important. And maybe there's just a bit, a deeper truth to say, you know, maybe when we connect, we say we agree that these three wallets are representative of me and I can claim wherever. Either way, it has to evolve. Um, I know we won't be the last, but I think Nifty Island has really showed us how positive it can be to welcome in large swaths of communities. So we're going to I'm not stopping on this and it's going to happen. It's too many people have put in too much effort um, at different periods for this. And, um, I mean, we know it does work. We just got to find better solutions for the current environment. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, uh, we need a little sub wallet. Like I'm, I'm just thinking like in, um, you know, in Nifty Island, you got your avatar, but then you got your little drone and it goes everywhere with you. Right. You're like attached, but you're separate. You're different. Like maybe that's what we need is, is maybe future NFTs will have that. It will have you'll be able to have the the beast the asset on your your big wallet your main wallet whether that's on a ledger or hot wallet wherever and then you get to designate the sub wallet and then that's where that's where the apis go back to that's where that calls back to but they know those two are intertwined they're they're the same so i when i sell my beast to you make I sell you my beast wallet, but then it's also the sub wallet or I, I sell you the, the two contracts so that they're always intertwined so that the main asset is locked away and safe, but I designate and choose where 
I just need a token. I just need a token to call back and forth so that every, you know, I can wear my wearable and keep it safe. I think that is inevitable. You know, Knessa, they actually, just so you know, that was brought up in one of one of the meetings I've had is, and it's a little bit of a bummer. It's a sticky one, right? Because one, then you're saying, okay, we're saying this for the token and not for the, the linked wearable. But, you know, it really might solve a lot of problems to say, hey, we send you this Polygonmatic token, put it where you want. The problem is if you sell the beast, then you, it's not being soul bound. At the end of the day, delegate cash or delegate.xyz, which it is currently called now, does do what we're talking about. And it, you, I, I haven't found many sites it doesn't work with. So I haven't quite figured out why it doesn't work with Decentraland. I'm hoping for some clarity. Um, obviously, I'm not a dev. I'm just some guy who wants to run around in the metaverse. So we're going to get there. We're going to solve it. And maybe there's there's some sort of partnership you know, with Decentraland or at least an ability to grow that will make things even open up more. And we haven't even really seen it yet because more people will be willing to adventure. Yeah, I mean, the future has got to be it has the future has to be easy and it has to be safe for people to adopt it. Like people in Web2, they won't do it any other way. They'll just stay on Roblox where it's easy and they don't own anything, but they feel good about, you know, playing like. Uh, yeah, we should tell somebody with capabilities that they can't do this and then they'll go get motivated to prove us wrong. <laughs> That's how I get shit done. Yeah, well, you know, again, at least we have a way to test it. Um, and I, again, I've, I have requested a few calls. Um, hopefully we jump on that call this week and, and we can say, hey, let's let's keep shaking the tree. I'm still not over the overall idea of incorporating the concept of the builder to delegate wallets ourselves. I mean, I really think that opens up like you mentioned renting out wearables which would be incredible for i would love to borrow dr drip's horns for like a day i don't know what i'd pay for them but i would do it um i i i think that really might be the true solution is like you log in with said wallet just as though i am a decentralized member i own these assets here is the wallet I would like to use for Decentraland. So when you connect said wallet, it says, hey, we're out here doing it. This agreement's still in place. And we can even set a time period of how long we want that delegation to happen. I think that would really evolve what was possible on Decentraland and put a lot of these short conversations to bed. Yeah, and you know what? Thinking about take that one step further, Here's another million dollar idea. Let's talk about Dr. Drip. He's got those cool horns. And then, okay, now mix in the VRM capability. What if we rent our wearables to people who want to create VRMs on other platforms? Obviously, we'd figure out all the legality of it. But like, let's say that Dr. Drip was like, yeah, here, you know, like $5 to rent my horns, use those in a VRM, like, or whatever cost it would have to work for all parties. But if that did work, if that allowed us to have, you know, 24 hours with the wearable or something, it could create an entire VRM market that, well, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that actually, now that I'm saying it. Cause like, I have my Ruston shark head. It's one of 10. Now if Sin goes out and makes a VRM, maybe I'm gonna get salty about that. Like, so, yeah, I don't know, but anyway. Yeah, I don't know. That'd be too risky. I don't want to like, you know, I, I like them. Like they like, oh, I want to do this one. That I'm like, oh, okay, I'm fine if you want to do this uh, one. But then like, ah, oh, I've actually also just done all of these Nikki and Rustan things that you know they would absolutely be furious about. You know that you you letting people just take their art to do whatever they please. But I'm with, wondering. I think what I'm I don't... thinking like a rental market for like VRM creation, where let's say that I make a giant. I'm just like, um, what's what's stupid and I'd never do it. Let's say I make a llama 
like a pinata for my head or something. I don't know. I've just looked at a llama. And I don't have that for sale, but you can rent it through the smart contract so you could use that. And then it comes back to me. So now the only way to have my asset is actually to rent it from me and create the VRM. So I do own, like, I own it all. Like, I didn't, if I didn't sell it in the wearable market, I own it. You can rent it, make yours. I don't know. I mean, I'm just like trying to visualize, like, what is this going to all evolve into? Like, I don't know. There'd probably be no market for that. Might as well just put it on the marketplace. But the point is that, like, holy crap. Yeah, like, that That could, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. I 100% think there should be some kind of just standalone app where you could just make outfits and export them if you're, like, of your own items. Like, a, there should absolutely just be a standalone, like, wardrobe, like, dress up the central land app where you can go and buy the wearables you want and make vrms and they also need to and the the foundation needs to incorporate more heads and body types because like they like the standard ones are pretty like corny i would just jump in and say as much as we are you know the vrm when it was just like hyperfy jump or you know uh insert your other metaverse here that let you moniverse or you know whatever it wasn't a big deal right until it became like when you import your wearables you know you could resell them i gotta say though from what i'm seeing and this is just a bird's eye view and my personal opinion but like i decided to do a pretty deep scroll of what was available currently on nifty and I think their overall concept is good, but the reality is there is so much IP that is not healthy for Nifty Island. Cause at some point these bigger companies, again, i.e. Pokemon, i.e. you know, uh, Dragon Ball Z, or I saw some Voltron stuff I saw. Um, that goes on way past, you know, just even our personal feelings as artists and like, the fairness of that, I truly believe they're going to have to take a step back and and maybe not have, you know, Decentraland's process in place, but they're going to have to have something that says, like, this isn't okay. So that's A. Uh, B, I really think now we have to evolve more when, when it comes to building anything, where we, we have to lay out the terms of an agreement as wearable makers, as designers, as hopefuls that say, hey, these are the you these are your IP rights, these are the limitations of said purchase. You know, and if those are baked into the VRMs, which I know uh I always mispronounce it, but Synex Syntex from Vipe, when that information is there, um, it could be responded to. So some sometimes we all have to grow based on how the world's growing right and here's an here's a great opportunity for us to do it i agree that any platform should be like for protecting themselves against random users you know infringing on disney's ip because disney will hammer you into the ground if they like start to if you get big enough it will you're jeopardizing all of your success because you know Someone wanted to be Donald Duck. So yeah, definitely better safe than sorry. Well, and it is interesting just to note that like, if you, you know, if you do get a wearable published in Decentraland, you've got to, you know, make sure that your IP is protected. Like when I wanted my, the Brandon Manis um, hoodie that I have my beast on, like they were like, nope, we need to see your, your ownership. I like, you need, we need to see your IP rights. And so I, I knew they were going to do that. So I was like, yep, here we go. And then just forwarded them you know the um information section for a kid called beast and then they're like okay cool you're good so like they you know they're they're doing their job they're taking it serious they're going through and you know making sure that everything is is copacetic so and they have a legal team and my quite i wonder you know does nifty island do they have their own legal team like or is this going to some, at some point, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, when, when somebody notices uh, and maybe, maybe big corporations don't care, but my guess is that it, uh, the more that they're coming into, you know, gamification and like owning your own assets and web two coming into web three, I think they care. And 
I wouldn't be surprised if their lawyers started sending letters and I don't know. I just, it seems like Nifty's small enough that that would be like, I don't know. <laughs> Legal battles are not. Yeah, they, they don't reality. care because they're small, but like the second Nifty's making a million dollars a year or whatever, like, or, you know, there's, there's a threshold of money. I don't know where the line is, but there is a line where they will care and they will absolutely come and get a big juicy bite out of that, you know, profit because like, you know, like at the moment, it's just probably because it's small enough that they don't care. They're like, whatever. There's like, you know, someone made Donald Duck or whatever, the, whatever Disney IP infringing or like Voltron, you know, like, you know, they're, they're like, whatever, too small to worry about right now. But like, there will absolutely come a time where like, you know, the lawyers run out of things to do for the day and like it's brought to their attention and they're like, oh, hey, stop it or else. Because, you know, that, because that they, they have to for, do that. Because if they don't challenge every person who does infringe their IP, like that eventually weakens their claim. Like, not Disney necessarily, but like, you know, depends on who you're infringing on but like you have to protect your ip if you want your ip to be protected because the more like as soon as you let like one person step all over it it becomes like more legally easy easier to defend for the next guy who steps all over yeah it. like don't fuck with lego guys like i got lego got me i was selling um i was selling teaching resources on a website like you could have your students follow a pattern make a green lego red lego green lego red lego and i got it i got I made, I made like $30 off of that product and I got a cease and desist letter from Lego. So I'm like, dang, <laughs> one, I must be a baller. My teaching resources are pretty badass. And second, like Lego, are you serious? So now I have to call it my interlocking block um, resource. And so it's funny because it's like, it yeah, 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 I, I, you know, I, I didn't play with Legos for a while just because I was a little salty, but um, you know, like, so you don't even know, you don't know that like Lego is going to come after teachers making a, a, you know, something that they sell for 99 cents, but they do. So like, who knows? They really did you a favor because the knockoffs you can buy in China, the knockoff interlocking blocks oh, way wow. cheaper than Lego. Yeah. So you could be, you're, you're, you could bump that profit margin up big time. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, my com then people kept doing it. You know, there's competitors out there that use the Lego word, but you know, I don't know. It, it made me feel good. It made me feel like somebody saw me. I was validated. But yeah, I think it's just a matter of time. And what they're going to look at also is just like pre existing cases. Like, what other lawsuits have been filed? What other lawsuits have been won? Have they been won or lost and like this is yeah it's wild west we don't have precedent to look at and be like okay well like oh my gosh guys like ip in this world and lawsuits it's it's like a it's like a tsunami that hasn't hit us yet make you know it's funny but when it comes to education and ip that's like where they start believe it or not so like one of the most famous stories, at least that I know, is there was like a guy who was doing an after school program, something like kids so the parents could go out and go shopping, you know, and he went ahead and played a movie. I think it was on Netflix or something during the school and he ended up getting sued for like literally playing a movie in front of people. And, and that is something that we also have to be aware of as decentralites as people like to listen to music it's like end of day like even right now if you are in a discord channel like talking to someone else and you have music in the background they now block it right these are our opportunities for web3 music to succeed or not succeed um and even ip all these nfts we buy this is what we're fighting for um so it's like, how do we evolve through each pro step of the process? And this is a big one, but it's a big one that right now we have an opportunity to try and maybe not fix, but be a part of the change. So we keep our eyes open and we grow with what's going on. And, and that's what we got to do better or we hope to do better, right? Within the Dow, within what we do is how do we move a little quicker for the way that these things are happening? Well, that's nuts. They probably come after teachers because they know that we got the money and the summer vacations. So they know, like, they go, <laughs> they go for the big fish. 
hopefully everybody knows I'm joking. My, my grandma was like an English teacher her, my entire life. And I just, and like much of her, all her sisters were teachers. And like a bunch of my like aunts, uncles, and their cousins are teachers. And it's just like the most hilarious joke to me. Like, oh, the, just the, I mean, and to be fair, like if you were a teacher, like too, because when you started in the 60s, like, you know, you could actually like buy a house. Like she did okay for herself. She had like a pension. Like, you know, by, by many of today's standards, you could definitely be like, oh, yeah, like grandma did all right. But like by, by comparison to like anyone else in any other profession of that time frame, though, like you're like, she could have done a lot better if she got into banking. Well, yeah. you know, like most of the movies we all used to watch, especially if you're old like me, <laughs> um, its schools were purchased by the school, like through, you know, a program, right? So you're literally buying a license back in the day, even back in the day. Um, VHS, you were buying a school copy of said stuff. So now, where you have like routers and school routers tied into like licenses, right? For movies and stuff so that they're not buying VHS. They're literally, you know, buying within a program based on like what, um, whatever they call like your Wi-Fi IP address, right? Or whatever. Um, so it's actually easier to catch people doing bad at schools than other things right now, right? It's like buying, copies of software that are meant to be used for school um and th these things are getting tighter every single so day so teachers need to learn to use and VPNs. so that's what i'm here no well <laughs> there there is that choice or the schools have to be buying what the the, the buddy need. my school the told us don't don't print any more paper because we don't have enough paper to get to june so they are not gonna buy us movies like no 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 um yeah it's not the first time that we have literally run out of the basics um so my question if you take that and like think about movies but but in this case like music i mean how are djs allowed to play music that like i'm thinking not like their mixes but they're mixing other artists music and broadcasting it they're not S first so Knessa, first and foremost like you're not um you are supposed to buy into a few different programs there are you know dj pools and there are different systems you could buy into where you could play them but technically speaking you're not allowed to like like if I go ahead, cause I'm a wannabe, absolutely fake DJ trying to make it in this world. Um, yeah, you gotta buy into, not even Spotify will let you do that. You gotta do, there are like four different ones where you could get base licenses. And when it comes to even like clubs, like nightclubs, they have to pay a huge license to pay, play music all year long. Just like if you were a restaurant and you wanna buy uh, football, you know, a football package, if you're a bar, you got to pay like 12 times the money that like a regular person does. So the answer is very honestly, when we go and we're all within the DJ section, if they are not on the up and up, yeah, they're breaking the law. So, so how, can, how, like, how can we have like a wearable committee that has to go past legal to make sure that this is okay? And we're not doing that for music because I can Ooh. see like that being like a major liability for our friends. I know here. the answer to this question because I've read okay. the terms of use too many times because God. the wearables are sold on the marketplace that the like foundation builds and supports. But the, the terms of use and the content policy make it really clear that like you own your parcel. So that like if you're per if you're streaming a DJ who is breaking this law, like you personally are on the hook. So like that's the like the difference. So like. I, I, now I wonder if like DG makes sure someone like tracks, you know, is doing that up, up and up. Cause like, and that also explains why someone like, you know, like, like DG, like, cause like, I know like a lot of people complain like, oh, like, you know, track, like Buffalo won't perform unless he gets $200 or tracks won't play unless he gets $300. Like, I don't know if those are exact numbers. I've heard people like, so quite quote, fairly large numbers, but like you would have to assume therefore that like part of the reason they are asking for that much money is because they are acquiring these li the needed licenses to make sure their music is on the up and up. Because like, you know, I love Billy T coin, but I have a sneaking suspicion. Like he doesn't have permission to play, you know, uh, what is the awesome sax man? I you know, so like that's, but that's the reason is that you as the parcel owner, cause like 
it's just very really well defined who's on. So the there, list. there are a few parcel owners who have actually gotten the rights to play like BMG or different groups of music, and they've paid for licenses and negotiated. Um, I heard that Crypto Minotaur just did it, and I'm not calling anybody out, but it. This is a huge thing we're coming into at warp speed. And like I said, Discord is already taking direct action. So like, say the only way you could hear music right now, if you're in just a chat, would be if you both own uh, Spotify Premiere and then you could hear each other Spotify. There are ways around it, you know, but again, you're taking big risks and Another thing, even if you do use, say, say, DJ pools or like, God, I can't think of the name right now. And I apologize because I'm trying to drive and everything else. But there are ways to do it, but they're very expensive. And, uh, you know, that's why even when somebody streams, if they're streaming a DJ set, that doesn't mean that they could save it as a video. And that's why you, generally speaking, don't see like somebody who's not influential who has some sort of contract right to do it you don't see people with their dj sets staying on stream you'll see them stream more than once but these things are changing so fast and the loopholes that are getting blocked right now are moving so fast i bet we see within three years obs saying unless you have said license you can't run that audio through it so all of these things are happening and they have to adapt and the truth is, all these things have been this way for a very long time. Yeah, so OBS, you know, I've had like videos to where I have movies on my computer and it'll block it. So I can't even, you know, whether it's like HBO Max or whatever it is, it, it won't even allow me to record those at all, even to send a small clip. When we were doing uh, Angzar, you know, we were looking at audio and OK, we wanted to have audio as part of the experience. And how do we do that? And so. What we ended up doing was, you know, we had we looked at Audius, we looked at all a million different things, and we actually had our own team, you know, create an, a real audio team, create fresh audio, you know, their own sounds, their own music, original pieces uh, that could be streamed off of Audius that we could then port in through the API. And so that was the only solution that we could come up with at that time to really have cool and great audio uh, in a scene for people to to use. Bitfiend is saying in world, um, just playing music NFTs because then like music NFTs playing sets with music that is technically copyrighted. Um, yeah, my brain's just like comprehending it. Uh, oh, make somehow got dropped down, adding you back up. Um, yeah, like I, I could imagine that people, so like if I hosted, let's just say I have, um, Simple meat stick come to my land DJ a set he uses copyrighted music my guess is that I the landowner would be the one held liable it would probably oh, depend yes, on the contract the you have though wouldn't it like if you had the contract you have with the performer like I mean assuming you have a contract with your performer yeah and Mies you think Decentraland or me <laughs> no I don't think Decentraland's liable at all they pass on all their liabilities to other people so I'm so I better make sure like if I'm a landowner and I have people come and play that that they wow that would yeah. be hard. it's extra work yeah you got to do your research and know all kinds of shit and trust people and yeah me there are some some light loopholes too you know what I mean like if you weren't selling a single thing like a wearable or anything like there are different licenses and different ways that are fine. But like, if you were doing a party to drop a wearable that people were paying for, then that's even, all, that's a whole nother license. Um, and and again, I, I, I go heads and tails on this stuff, right? Cause I've been a freelance photographer since, <laughs> basically since I was 17 years old. And God, I'm not 17 anymore. Peter Pan has gotten quite old. Um, so I've always been pissed when people reused our stuff and then you turn around and you're like, oh, well now everybody just reblog shit or retweet stuff and it doesn't matter. 
So there's some gray area, right? And there are even ways like if you go, say, get all your music or if you stream from TikTok with the video in the background and it has the logo, they have the license so you could go there and as long as that stamp is there, you could carry that over to say Twitter. Um, a great example is Gentle Tornado. I don't know if any of you remember him. He was very popular for the last few years on Twitter. Super positive guy. And in the morning, he'd be like yelling and doing a dance. You know, he had like 40,000 Twitter followers. He got banished from Twitter and his account taken away because he had music playing in the background too many times. So this stuff is very real. Um, and, and it is worth noting and worth understanding to a degree. Uh, it is why if I had to be really honest, like, yeah, I'm trying to DJ. I'm not a full-time DJ. I pay for my music. It doesn't mean I pay for my license and, and God to even suggest that I'm a DJ is ridiculous. But I mean, I like to play music in front of y'all. Um, I'm learning, damn it. Old guys learning. Uh, and yet, so here are your options. Web3 music. I also ask as many artists as I can uh, for their music. Trax has gone to playing a lot of Web3 music, like more than ever. Um, and we, this, these are our final battles we could have for the metaverse and Web3 to win. Like, we should have a metaverse jukebox where you could pay to use in Decentraland and we could upload those songs and DJs can find a way to do it there in line goes right back to that delegated marketplace we talked about like there are opportunities not to let these big companies and licensing companies just step on our throats and take us down right now that there was, was a grant at one point to buy licensing and to like give them to different venues in this community but everyone got like well not my decentralized space kind of vibes on yeah. it that was brought about by um, kind of a certain period of time where um, <laughs> I'm trying to be uh, selective with my words, um, where the music industry did come into Decentraland. I think they were invited in to take a look at things and they determined that the people playing music, everybody was out of compliance and that they were going to have to pay like back pay of a certain amount for every show that they ever broadcast in this venue had like hundreds of shows and so um i don't know what actually ever the outcome was other than that i know that individual doesn't really participate here openly maybe they do on alt or something but i wonder what happened because that was a i remember that was a big deal and a real, lot of fear um that was a really big deal some things i just want to add on you know so we like with inworld builder um we're working on making it so that people can use integration with Audius in the future. So that's something, you know, eventually we're, we're working on. Um, so maybe we'll have some basic playlists to start with that are maybe our ones from Angzar. You know, I really want to see um, some of that music played because it's just so great. And there's like 28 plus tracks. In addition to that, um, expanding on what Make said, as far as, you know, you have commercial rights, commercial use and things like that or limitations. And something to think about, yes, if you're making money, whether it's like in the scene or at the event or whatever it is, you know, that's that's one way to be commercial. You know, another thing is if you're getting paid for like a grant and your scene is a grant scene or whatever it is, you know, that's that also it, it, you encounter certain things with that as well. And so that also limits commercially what you're able to do because you can be considered a commercial product for there as well. So for anyone who has a grant um, or scenes that are getting, you know, money from grants and other things like that, whether if it's directly, um, you know, these, these are things to keep in mind as far as if you're using rights of certain, whether it's audio or 3D objects or whatever it is it may be, you know, there's a lot of limitations out there. And so just keep that in mind, um, you know, to, to try to limit your liability. Yep, totally. But, and again, it's not like Big Brother's coming directly right now for us, but it doesn't mean they're not aware or they're not coming um, because they like their money. And these things are getting tighter. I don't know what happened, but the, I was in Ohio like for Christmas and literally I was going to play a song and it said, you cannot play this song in this region. And I'm like, what? My phone said that. It, I, I, I still haven't really figured it out. 
I, it might have just been a glitch in the matrix, but the reality is, I think if you look at Discord already taking those steps and Discord right now is a much bigger entity, but it's already happening. Um, I will, if I, if I keep pursuing it, Audius is one of those ones. There are DJ pools. There are a lot of ways around it. For one thing that I, I have been trying to do as much as I, I personally like hip hop and stuff like that, I'm moving to a lot more dance music. Like, not that I've gotten fully away from licensed music, um, but I'm really working hard to find ways to, to do it. And the dance kind of techno, you know, it has a lot more on licensed music or DJ pools. Audius, like he said, is a fantastic option. There's another one. I, I would love to pull the name and I'm, I'll run down to the computer, but it's on the tip of my tongue. But there's one which is literally for streaming. Um, but it does come with stuff. Even if you, you have the right to stream for the event using those things, you can't record it. So these things are becoming aware. And, and with these conversations happening, even starting with VRMs, I think we're getting to the crux of the things we're fighting for and why I personally feel I'm here. So, you know, one answer at a time, one suggestion at a time will help us grow. Also, something to think about and be concerned about is AI. So right now there's so many AI tools out there. You know, I wanted to do additional audio for uh, our in-world builder and just make some myself and try it out. And I thought that I was able to have CCO rights um, through a certain program that I made my own music through. And unfortunately I did not. And so I wasn't able, it was restricted from commercial use. And so because we had it for a grant and it would have been included in our builder, I was unable to do that. And so I wasn't able to use that music. And so as of right now, just to give you a heads up, uh, I think that I'm not, I haven't found an audio AI program yet that will actually create audio that you can own the rights to in a commercial aspect, even if you're not trying to make money off of it specifically or directly. And so just using it in a commercial environment. So if anyone knows of any, or they come up or things change, please let me know. I'd love to make my own music through AI and be able to use that, um, you know, in, in Decentraland a lot of different ways. So thank you. So not to like get off topic here, but I just want to jump in and uh, say thank you to Al Mal Music. I see your raid just came in. You brought 26 of your friends. Thank you for the raid, man. And uh, anyone listening, uh, yeah, this is our weekly community building space. Um, you're always welcome to join in the conversation on Twitter. If you would like a link, just uh, just ask. You know, independent artists who aren't signed to any of the major labels are always, you know, are, you know, are always a great places to reach out to ask if you can use their music. Like, two of my favorite rappers are independent. And, like, I know, like, I suppose you may know him as the one song you can't use is the one you probably know is like "I'm Awesome," which was his like one hit wonder like a decade ago, um, which you can't use. That one's still owned by a major label, but like all of his other music, he's like on the record as saying that like you can absolutely use his music and like your stream as long as you're not making a boatload of money, he's totally down with you using his music. So. You know, consider if there's independent artists you know and love, like consider reaching out to them to ask if you can use their music. Now, you know, if you can't afford to pay them, you should absolutely pay them. Don't take advantage of independent artists. Obviously, you know, many of uh, your friends in Decentraland are independent artists, but that's a, that's a good viable option. You know, it's crazy that even like people who are assigned to labels, like I had my friend from VHS or Beta here the other day. Um, big band definitely had their you know top 100 track and he's like yeah well i sometimes i'll be djing and i'll throw one of my songs on or whatever i'll, I'll go to put it on a youtube and they block me from it so you know again the bigger players that are already dealing with this like youtube and and like unless you go private but there are ways to pay into things like soundcloud pro and you know, Audius again was mentioned, and I'm going to find <laughs> find the one I'm looking for right now. But it it's up to even permission doesn't necessarily stop you, even if you know someone great, if somebody else has access or has that contract, right? So it I really I really feel strongly about like a Web3 jukebox for or a Web3 usage. Um, space i mean that could be a real growing point for for decentraland 
At the end of the day, most of us spend time hanging out, going to listen to music in DCL. So I think it's kind of a no brainer as this stuff gets tighter and evolves that we start reaching out to those around us and, and try something out. Also, I just want to add, a lot of people may have forgotten about it, but there was a smart wearable created it with Audius official. Unfortunately, you know, it's just the current state of smart wearables in Decentraland that things just don't really work the way that they're supposed to. So eventually that might come back and, you know, be a, a, an additional option for some people. It's not really shared, but, you know, it's just individual. Well, now I want to know if the streams that DJ Tracks has through through the Vita TV uh, smart wearable, which I still think is a really cool idea, and I'm glad someone made a cool, like, you know, portable TV experience you can move around. But now I want to know if that stuff is, let, that's, uh, you know, that's on the up and up. I mean, I assume it is, because like, I feel like, like Tracks performs you know, like, Tracks live other places, me. but... So, I can tell you he uses Audius, and I can tell you he's really shifted to Web3 Music. I talk to Tracks a lot. I've been learning a lot from him. Uh, not mentor, but friend. And I can tell you, he does go out of his way to use uh, safe stuff. Well, I've, I've also heard him play like Faxby Poison in sync a couple times. So, I mean, I mean, you know, I know he, I know he, I, he must have some but kind if of... If you hear me get on a set, I could guarantee you right now, I might as well be slanging pounds of cocaine because I have, I have not taken that step. But... I'm also, generally speaking, if I'm playing in front of people, the one thing that it might not be perfect, um, but I'm also usually not a part of anything selling anything too. So there's a gray area. Also, welcome my hazmat and beast brother. Treats down there, one of my favorites. He recently had his uh, accounts taken. He's a great follow and a great person. Treats, what's good, family? Anyway, it's, it is a bold topic, but this is one topic I think we, as a community, as, as seeing all of this happening around us, I think this could be a real pivot for the long term of Decentraland that could tell a real story for Web3. Um, I would love to see like Web3 music on the wearable platform like as an option to like purchase and have a place to play it in our spaces. I think if we, if we made our marketplace, like why couldn't our marketplace be the same as OpenSea? Like all it is is NFT contracts, right? So right now we're selling wearables and land and names, but why couldn't we also sell our art? Like if I'm an artist and I want to sell my art, well, I could go to Tezos or I could go to OpenSea or I could support my native home and have this is art that's only available on the Decentraland marketplace. And therefore people would have to buy mana and in order to buy and sell and then take that in the next step, use it for music where maybe, maybe this little ecosystem is actually like, maybe it's these little side projects or side creations like vrms and, and music nfts that that give decentraland like really its most um like usage or the most utility i swear there was a proposal once by like aaron loop to uh make that a reality loop hey i think i don't know i was i've only read it i've never heard someone say it out loud i don't think but uh i, I feel like there was a proposal about, about like adding more content type different types of content to the marketplace once yeah, I think, yeah, I think there was. maybe a poll. I remember seeing it too. The problem is, is that I like Aaron. He's a bro. He's been he's he's been kind to me. He's been he's a good dude. I've never I got no beef. But he always he's got a little troll in him, and he's he's also like he's definitely you know I mean I I, I can smell my I know my own. It's uh, a troll foo. He's definitely yeah he's he's made some enemies so to speak. I definitely think like you know he attracts the no votes. For sure. Like, even his good ideas, like, he just sprinkles a little troll foo on it, and it definitely gets, you know, the, the just immediately, like, a toe big HP coalition of no's will just come right at him. So. For, for me, it's like, I, I love the guy to death, but, like, I've noticed that a lot of the times, like, when he speak, when he explains his proposals verbally, 
it's it, 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 he says like something completely different than what the proposal says in words so i'm just like confused so i just don't vote uh, yeah i mean I, yeah i don't know i i need to i, I so, someday i need to talk to him and if i ever get a chance to go to the quest could you really have meetings with aaron about his ideas and like endorse them and tell him they were good and to work on them because he says you did and if you did that that you know gives him so much more validity than he currently has in the space when he's going up. But 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 that said, I, I you know, a good idea from a from a from a crazy person or a troll or uh, you know an un, an unusual source doesn't make it an, you know just doesn't invalidate the goodness of the idea. Uh, and you know, and I get why Aaron is frustrated sometimes. You know, like I, if you've never been frustrated with HP, that just means you haven't really dealt with HP a lot. Like, I like HP. I have a lot of respect for HP. I don't want to sound like I'm besmirching HP. I, you know, I, I think he's a smart dude. I, I genuinely believe if he ever leaves the Dow committee, that's like the word that'll be a tail end of the, the sign of the end times for the Dow. Like, but um, I just think that uh, I get why Aaron's a little frustrated with him sometimes. So Aaron was one of the people I took a call with, with the Link wearables. Gave me some insights, gave me some outsights, but I do like him. I mean, he's another person. Like his way, is it Waifumons officially? Can am I butchering that? Waifumons, like yeah, you're pretty waifu close. Mons. I might be saying it wrong, yeah. but I think it's waifu. But you know, again, like there's another person who got a link wearable through who couldn't get the the process through, and. You know what, when you, you go through the process, and I'll just say, right, I don't know him that well. I've taken one call with him. I have said hello to him. Um, but when you go through that whole process and you feel like, okay, we're through the gauntlet, right? Like we got public opinion and we got support and we have a, a roadmap for success and this is gonna work. And then it doesn't, and you really want it. I mean, there are definitely days I have pulled out my damn hair over this. I, I have never gone through more emotions when it comes to just like, dude, it's not like I'm getting a scent from anybody and I don't want one. I just want it to work, right? And, and I think when more and more of those things happen that get approved and you're like, all right, we just need this and then we're gonna get it. And then you're like, ah, oh, now we need this. and. You know, it's really hard. It's hard on the, the psyche. It's hard on your, like, how you feel. Um, I got to say, like, this process of going through the link wearables and just finding the roadblocks that have been there that I didn't see, it hasn't soured me, but it's it has taken such an emotional toll. And even, like, the other day, like, when, when Delegate Cash didn't just work, I'm like, Fuck, now I got to go start a whole nother conversation about how I'm going to make it work. I will get to the end of this process. I swear to it. But I could understand also coming the other way of I, I never went to the Dow. I never wrote those things. I never had these high expectations of what was going to happen. It really does. And I've got a great support group. I mean, Knesset has been there standing next to me. Sin has stood next to me. Rustan has stood next to me. Drip has stood next to me. And and that doesn't happen all the time. I mean, that, if anything, like, is is such a silver lining to what has gone on with the Link Wearable process is to see these amazing people stand tall with me, you know? But it it's a hard road, and it, it really does take an emotional toll when you feel like you've gotten through a process and then... It, it's fighting against you still. Oh, um, I believe it. It goes back to what so, Vanessa was saying earlier about grant people who like pour their heart into a grant, it gets rejected, and like you just feel so defeated. Like it must be even worse when you succeed and then you're just getting smashed in the face with technical obstacles and like no one who will help you. Well, and also timing. Like timing is everything, as my sergeant major would have said. Um, and ours sucked um, to to be seeing make go through these battles and. I'll, I'll just be blunt then have a, a proposal created by just a proposal just a poll to see if we should get away with the entire linked wearable system well we that was that was 
that one hurt. I had to take was- a couple of days off. I laid on the couch emotionally to win that. And it was just written wrong. I'm, it, yeah, they phrased that so aggressively. Fixed. And then, they have to be fixed. Yeah, and then that same the same week or the next week, um, <laughs> Nifty Island opens its doors and everybody's running around in their beasts. I mean, it's it's okay to talk about this stuff and say, hey, you know what? This really hurt. Like this, um, why are we fighting so hard? Look how good Make's idea was. Like, they can, look how good your idea was, Make. Like, look at it. Look at it. You can see it. You just have to go to another platform. It's a real bummer. Listen, well, I can run around as five different, four or five different VRM characters in there. And uh, it's really enjoyable. I got to say, like, using your IP and running around is fantastic. Um, the funny thing is, right now, a Kid Called Beast, you have to make your own VRMs, which Rustan actually was the one who helped uh, emancipate a lot of beasts that way. Um, but the base one's not there. And then as a Ute, which is interesting, um, as some as most of you know me as, um, they have a very different s- setting set up where there was a secondary company called Metatope, who I respect a lot, and I, I definitely had a lot of calls with them. And they are not giving the assets out to the people, to the Utes, um, not because they're doing it wrong, because this is how, you know, once you have that T-pose, you have the entire IP, right? Um, And so there's some interest there too, like in how they're doing it, where again, the Utes, which I love running around as my Ute in um, Nifty, but, Besides like five of us who have a different version of, of the Utes, there is a secondary company who's handing, handling relationships and allowing access. So that's a much more governed approach, which I don't necessarily agree with or not. Um, but you see how this is all starting to play out with these different groups. So I still think we are in the lead with how it works right. Like I gotta say, if you take a wider view and you're like, okay, Decentraland, Spatial, Nifty, et cetera, I think Decentraland actually offers the safest experience and the most attributes to using VRMs. Like even if it's slow roll, um, we just got to fix the import to welcome people. That's it. I really think we're going to do it. Um, I think it was Lastrum and then also who else was talking to me about it? They were telling me about the contracts that there are actually contracts between delegating a wallet to another wallet, right? So was it, and future, maybe you change your PFP and it was you. I apologize. Um, and that's interesting, but I still don't understand. So And maybe somebody who delegates some of their uh, land could explain this clear to me. But it's like, well, what happens if there's a contract between two wallets? Can what happens if the person who holds the land sells or can they does the land get locked up in that contract for that duration? I believe it's for the duration, because if you rent land, yeah, the owner can't just go sell it because I paid, you know, my ma- mana until that contract ends. Oh, I know the answer. Yes. And they now have to go and pay another fee to end the contract. And then they could sell their land. So it essentially gets staked. So therein lies why it is not a easy brush for this solve. Like the concept exists, right? But then the way it's executed is more like a lockup pass off for duration. So, but it still applies because then let's say you rent your wearable, right? It gets locked into a contract agreement and then, you know, that time, that time vests and then, then it's over, right? It's interesting. I mean, we're getting we're getting there and we're getting there also, by the way, we're getting there for music. We're getting there for VRMs. 
and we're finding a deeper truth that says this is the real battle Decentraland is having for all of us and for all these other platforms. Like I guarantee Nifty and I love Charles. I think Charles has been fantastic, inviting, caring. He did listen to us in a big group when we talked about the risks to the art makers, which really set my mind at ease. But I got to say, I think having people in place to make things approved for a platform is a way better approach. We just need a better welcome. Yeah, <laughs> so much to think about. Like my brain is, I can I can feel the gears turning. So I had more chocolate to make sure that they're all, you know, lubricated and they'll still do all my thinking for me. Um, Pixelia, we haven't had you up for a while. Um, welcome. How are you? Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Hola, Carissa. That's a nice, happy, be- uh, happy, nice happy belated was... birthday. I'm Thank sorry you. I missed it. I, I fell asleep in my desk. Um, I, I wanted to go back to what you said about why can't you sell your art in the world? Uh, I believe the right answer would be like no one has created something to do it um it might be an interesting uh, approach to get like a community uh, marketplace for you sir a platform grant creators huh a platform grant to update the marketplace to incorporate not 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 not, 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 yeah a platform grant to create a community marketplace where the central and um you know <laughs> players or users or whatever they can go on and sell you know their art or whatever you know OpenSea takes a commission for it why can't the central and create a marketplace mana based uh that maybe takes a commission that it's far less but still can um um, it, it, like the, the way I see it, like, it's like you can create this in a way that it only takes one round of funding and then it becomes self-sustainable. Like the, the these fees that usually um, a, a marketplace like OpenSea would, would take as a profit, uh, they would just uh, feed the, the marketplace as a whole, right? Uh, so I think that the, the answer to Kanessa's question is I think no one has really thought about it and I I have been you know playing with the idea for a while um, but I, I think it all comes down to properly drafting a proposal because um, it would be like a platform upgrade type of thing um, so could you like I don't know anything about the you know the dev side but like could you do that for like visual art but also nft like music nfts look um on on my journey with the radio station with with hit so many walls in the process one of them being um the licensing issues that meta was referring to before right um if if you are streaming playing uh, in any way even if it's for free uh with the purpose of, uh, you know, with a, another purpose other than just, you know, playing the music, then you need to have a license. That that's plain and simple. It's just how it works. Um, what type of license? Then it depends on on what you're gonna use it for. Like he said, like if you're gonna use it in a bar, then it has a cost. If you're gonna use it in a club, then it has a cost, right? If you're gonna use it in a radio station. It not only has a cost, but it has uh, like a specific list of things that, like a checklist that you need to clear so that you can get the license, right? Um, So our latest uh, uh, setback was that here in Europe, to purchase a license like that, you need to be an, an actual company. So we had to make a company like we're in the process of doing that so that we can get the license and we can now stream music that it's copyrighted and this license that you're paying for 
basically like it, it's a it, you're basically paying for the permit to, to play the music but the way it works in the back end it's like they have like this huge pool and based on their customer database and the amount of of plays x song gets like you would have to like pay pay back the artist like they take care of that but ultimately speaking that's more or less what the license is doing like there, there's a pool that kicks back uh, the artists for you playing their music um but it, it works differently in each country we had a conversation of, like a long time ago about this you and i and and i told you like it all comes down to the country where you're based at and by by you you are based at i mean um he who plays the music or she who plays the music right and there's a set of things that will derive from that but mainly is, is where you're doing it right um there's also the factor of where you're streaming it if you're doing it in the central end then you need to think in legal terms what is the central end and where is it based as a company because ultimately speaking for legal uh, matters the central end uh, like if, if you want to sue me for something in the central end um, you will have to get them involved in the process as a like as a part of the legal uh, uh, conundrum and that that will lead you to you know file the whatever lawsuit whatever the central line is based as a company so th there's like a like many many factors to take into consideration um when it comes to like copyrighted things and i think that that is the reason why the foundation didn't include it in the first place um as this is the fast just to not deal with it uh, because it is like a legal knot let's say uh open c i know that I, I don't know if you've seen that when Snoop Dogg started releasing like this is the music NFTs or whatever. Like his music NFTs and all these big uh, artists' music NFTs, when you go to the terms and conditions, it says there specifically, like, you don't hold the rights for this, you cannot play this, you cannot sell this. Like, you can sell the I'll token, you but you cannot, like, make copies and sell it. It's very specific. Uh, because they as a as an artist like some of them they have contracts that are valid and ongoing which won't allow them to even do this so there's always a way but that's why you have this bunch of music nfts that like you ask yourself like how can this be an nft like i have zero rights over this but it's still being traded with the nft well because while you own it you can play it so these NFTs, they give you right to play it. Like you can play it as long as you are present there. It's like you can play it, but you cannot commercially exploit it in the real world. Um, so ultimately speaking, um, I, I would say this. The legal aspect related to what we're doing is still in it's baby uh state right it's it's a, an ongoing uh issue i like news being developed right now so i think that the way this is gonna you know end or evolve into is whatever we as a community and and i'm not saying we as the central and like we as in everybody that it's involved somehow in web3 and is taking advantage or using this technology uh in you know in the ways that it allows you to uh you will eventually hit this like crossroad so i think that it all comes down to how we approach it as a community and what we do as a community to set uh, a precedent for future usage because right now in the winter it's easier to set a precedent that no one will, you know, debate on. 
Uh, like if you have a bunch of people, you know, you can organize something and, you know, set a precedent somewhere that someone can, can use. But it, it, all, it all comes down to, you know, an actual legal process. Uh, so my uh, perspective on this is, I think that we as a community, we get to use it and exploit it while we can. But if we hit a gray area where we, we don't know if we're breaking the law, usually if you feel you're breaking the law, most, most of the times you, you are. So, you, you know, just stop doing it unless, uh, you know, it's... That's not going to help it, my anxiety at all. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the thing is this, like, the, the, the law punishes that which is explicitly forbidden so as long as it's not forbidden it's technically allowed right so my guess is this like we either do something as a community uh where we you know figure this out legally or we wait it out until someone gets sued and it's you know <laughs> done <laughs> Uh, in a court somewhere in the world, most likely wherever the central land is, is based, right? Uh, that's my my guess. Like I'm not really an expert on that type of law, but that's my guess. Um, um, Meta was talking about DJ pools. I, I I bumped into them while doing my research. They're amazing for DJs, but you know only for DJs. Not like if you're. Um, two people radio station they're not good for you so you, you need you still need to have the proper license which sucks but you know unless you want to be sued you have to do it i think that in the central and there's many people paying licenses i think the central games is doing it by the way to answer your question before jared uh on tracks i think that they are doing it um, i would hope so they they have one of the few you know, things look, essentially look, with lots of money to lose. I, 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 I cannot like really confirm this 100% because I don't know 100%. But based on what I've discussed with Marv and, you know, on what I know about the team and how they act and behave, I, I'm 100% sure that they already took care of it themselves as a company, you know, because they're just a solid honest team so they they would do it just to keep their their slates clean you know they're not gonna risk their reputation over a freaking musical license uh, it's just not worth it uh, uh, but i don't know i, I, hear that I, I don't but i don't think all venues have this or have paid this and what i would expect from a platform that has a an economical ecosystem such as the central end is that the central and as a platform itself would take care of it so that everybody in platform would be able to freely act and behave in the way they want to without feeling that they're gonna get freaking sued because they're playing music and you know smoking weed weed while doing parkour you know so it doesn't make sense so, pixel and and i agree with the the concept but i'll just give you some like rebuttals of what's going on right like one big thing that happened with um spatial right who's another you know successful ish metaverse platform they cut away streaming from apps so you could only stream directly like or from your screen you have to stream from an app so therefore they're using whatever carryover license and the fact that they don't um have anything to do with it so i have a friend has a decent small small club but with a dancing license in la and for his small nightclub like under under 500 people i think in i think he pays a hundred thousand so or more yeah or more. Or more. Easily. so i'm just saying there's a reality to to the situation but and there are ways around it i would say decentrally again if we go back around the bush this is a great opportunity to have a platform that plays Web3 music that have these determined licenses. Look, the uh -huh. thing is that there's audios and you, you can do it through an API if you want to use them. Like they already figure it out on their own. But yeah, my, my personal stand on this specific topic 
like this is a sensitive topic for me like my specific stand is that the central and like has a shit load of money like they can afford a freaking license that covers and protects all of its users from any bullshit like they I, can I do would, it I, i think that would be a like half the standing revenue over time i mean i think the reality is if you're going to be a professional like playing music that you take the steps necessary to do so oh, and of and course. i I, I, actually, i agree with you i i believe that every single dj in the central land should have the proper licenses to play their music regardless of whether the venue where they're playing has them or not because if you're right. a professional you are a professional in every sense of the word right sure. but and i for the I, i do think that really this is a community issue right I agree with you. First of all, I agree. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm I, I'm learning more and more about this by the day, just because I have a a desire to play music for other people. Um, I think I just keep taking those steps, right? Like, I'm literally canceling subscriptions, but like, not for the family. Like, they can keep their Disney Plus, but I've taken away like five different subscriptions right now to ultimately be able to try and do this correct. So I I fully agree with you. I just want to do it for the most independent people I can. So I'm I'm spending my time like Audius, yes, but also like SoundCloud where there are a lot more independent artists that you could pull from. Um there are solutions, but unless we talk about them and find our way, we're not going to get there. I'm also just learning how to do something and I'm I'm stay, sitting in the cut but this is the same reason when you asked to, for a DJ to do something like Billy Techcoin Apps Techcoin shout out with the number 69 uh you should pay, we should be paying him to perform so he has those options um it's a it's all a slippery slope that comes from bottom to top uh and and it's It's a debate worth having, but I think one of the solutions that exists in our presence and that, and again, it is happening in Nifty is they have found a way to let people play their Web3 music, um, you know, and that's their option for what music you could play. Look, the, so, the, the, like on, 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 on that aspect, I, I would tell you this, like, um, If, if we're gonna do this as a, like as a, as a platform, as users of a platform, it would not be only the DJ's responsibility to pay for it. Like if you're gonna be there as a user, you should make sure that at least you're not breaking the law, you know, because maybe you're streaming what's going on there. So like, it, it's a very complex situation. Like I'm, I, I get where you're coming from and your perspective perspective on this um i fully agree with you but i think and i'm gonna tell you this in a very respectful way i think that um there's a lot more to learn on the aspect um so you can maybe understand where i'm coming from on that I, specific topic i agree with right you, first of all i appreciate it i come from 20 plus years of of art management when it comes to production photos and no, look, I, I, have, I, I, you, you, I, fact, I can more tell, than I can tell that you you know what you're doing like you, this isn't your first rodeo but no it's um, different with music and what's going on but, now yeah but, but, the, but, the, the the, but me, music and web 3 is a, is a tricky is a tricky mix you know it's it's, it's a, a tricky, tricky mix, mix. And, and and it is uncharted waters so Like we can spend hours right here, right now discussing this, but the fact is that none of us has the right answer because this is still, like I was saying before, news in development, right? So uh, I think that what we need to do is have these conversations, like have these debates, you know, create like a like an actual stand like a community stand point on this topic so that we as a community can take action through the mechanisms that 
the platform that we root for, which is the central end, which in my opinion, that's why it's different from the other, like all of the rest, like all the other metaverses, they're just corporations in the end. Like you have zero saying on them. The central end gives you like for the better, for the worse, it gives you like that special component that makes it real and that makes it, you know, like, like clay, you know, it makes it a potential, like a crazy potential thing, uh, because it, it, it's still being developed on, you know, I've seen all these videos on, on the mobile version, 2D version, whatever. And, and, and I think like all of this is fucking amazing. And I've been running around for like two and a half years. And I remember having conversations with many of people in here about a mobile version, about like all of this shit, and it's actually happening. Like we, we used to have conversation about like, hey, it would be amazing to save an outfit or whatever. Now you have it. So like for the better, or for the worse, like even if you like, let's set aside for a second all the bad shit that the central and has all the bad shit, even if in their worst days, they don't outweigh the good. You know, that's why we're all here. And, and I think that the way we all approach all of these key issues that will affect us for the better or for the worse in the future is what we need to maybe you know, rethink or change, right? Because, um, yes, conversations will be uncomfortable. Yes, they will be awkward. Yes, they will be heated. But in the end, the result is a community standpoint on key topics that will be essential for the future because the central end is here and it's gonna stay where it is. Um, and there will be a moment in the cycle of a market where eventually gaming, you know, I, I think gaming is the bridge for web three adoption, like mass adoption. And, and that's, what's going to happen. Like web three gaming, it's just going to bridge the gap. And it's going to take the parents and, and all the people that not, not necessarily game into web three, because if, if your 14 year old wants to spend one ETH on a gaming NFT, then as a parent, you will be forced to learn freaking crypto and ETH and Met and MetaMask and all this bullshit, you know, like it's just going to happen. It's meant to be. So eventually it will take you there. Now, the question is, if you know where you're going, like how, how are you going to write it? And, and that's what we need to focus our attention on, because regardless of what you think or, or what I think or what Jared thinks or what anybody thinks, we're going to get there and we need to just write it properly so that when we get there, web three is still web three and it's not just some fucked up version of corporate, you know, web three takeover, like, you know, last of us type of shit. You know, I, I don't want that. And I don't think it needs to go there because there's a lot of committed people in this space, you know, working for it. And I think that at some point we all need to like, like take a stand on certain topics and use the mechanisms provided to us by the very platform that we use to freaking answer these questions because they all matter for the better or the worse, you know? Does it make sense? I guess. I think we should just play what we want and wait for the uh, SEC to come and shut us down, even though that is not the department of the government that enforces music <laughs> copyright. Uh, I, I always love like calling your names and wait for them to explode. So I, I am with you, Jared. But <laughs> like from a rational point of view, I think that like th this is like the, the how we write it is is what's going to matter in the end. Like we need to fix these issues be before they are so big of an issue that the consequences are far worse than what we can even foresee because uh what if i don't know 
one day ex artist let's call it the weekend the weekend comes to the central and and he goes to i don't know true band room and there's mr sui you know playing the weekend he's gonna sue their ass off you know and oh. and if we wait for that to happen you know it's gonna go bad because we like the the, the resources <laughs> they, they won't match like it won't be a fair fight but as of now it's not even a fight so we can take measures to prevent a fight from happening and i think it, it's a responsible way of doing things as people who actively rely on this technology to do what they do like i you know like there's many well, ways to monetize the metaverse and i think that somehow everybody here does it uh so i think that it's in everybody's best interest to do it like we all go to parties we all go to things what if all parties cease to exist like would the central and be as fun as it is <laughs> you know it's it's a, it's a it's a matter of a pu public health i would call it well public. just like all all things Dow and corporate bullshit related. This conversation has gotten very boring and very dry. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to solve the issues of copyright infringement. I think that uh, I think what Knessa should do is she should use Crown Utility. She's a DG Ice Poker Crown. She can uh, throw up a DG logo at her event, and whenever she's got a performer playing, she can just be, "Oh, I'm using uh, the DG license. That's my. I'm good. We're uh, my my performers undercovered by the DG music license." And then that will, I think, save. We can you just run that by Miles and you know Murph just to make sure that's how it goes. But I, I mean, like, yeah, that that's good. Finally, the crown has some utility. Yeah, if you're actually, a chapter holder or a crown holder, you don't even need to run it by him. He, he'll just like pre-approve it. I think. Yeah, I don't. I mean, w I, it would probably be good to just double check to confirm they have one, and they're also not just you know planning on paying their lawyer. But you know, like something. You know, I think that that seems like the best bet. I think you know just. So fast that, and loose. That, that would be insanely funny if they were like just like balling it, like fuck it, we ball, you know. Because like of, technically, <laughs> like I mean, they can't. I mean, I, I would, I would have, I don't know anything about the law, but I, DG has many venues where they play music. I would assume, therefore, it wouldn't be absolutely unfathomable to think that you know, Knessa could throw up some DG branding and like absolutely pull that off. Now, technically, could I um, wear could I wear something that had DG branding on it and appear in the shot, and then would that be admissible in court that technically DG branding was in the shot? Being Probably played? not. Dep depends on the jurisdiction. <laughs> Listen, Mike. I don't. Your, I your, so? your facts are either Panama. <laughs> hey, Panama hey, fun. <laughs> hey, fun. Can I welcome someone really fun? Harriet, AKCB, one of the most lovely beasts out there. So I just want to give a quick shout out. Welcome to this issue of the law in music and VRM tech. But Harriet, you are a legend. We appreciate having you with It's us. usually less boring, Harriet, I swear. We don't usually let a monologue this long about boring legal stuff. But it's, you know, it is an important topic. I'm, I'm sorry, you see, but, but, all they had to it, do it, was it, approve it. my link wearable. <laughs> I'm with you. That, that is if I just got my link wearable approved, none of this would have happened. And we would have been all ended this early. But no, we're still in the mud. <laughs> God damn it, guys. Get them the linked wearables or they're going to take away her music. Uh, I'm going to step down so someone else can step up. Please. Big silly. Oh, there's plenty so of much. space for I... other people. There's, there's only five of us Yeah, you don't here. have to step down. You can wait to talk about some other thing besides, you know, something you're passionate about, like music. Yeah, before you go, actually, I, I had a thought that um, hit me while you were talking. So I'm just like, you know, we were talking about the marketplace, like having our art on a marketplace and our music like within Decentraland so that the, you know, royalties could go to the Dow. They can, you know, everything is good. But then I remembered that if you publish wearables, the IP of that belongs to Decentraland now. And I thought, oh no, if I publish art on a Decentraland marketplace that doesn't exist yet, would they then own the IP to my art? And if I publish music NFTs, 
would they then would those same you know like laws go into place where they would own the, the, those so assets? Depends on the smart yes. contract that you create the art with. Well, no, for the terms of service and the terms of use, they wouldn't own the IP of your art. They would just have the they would have the ability to do with your art whatever they wanted and like repurpose it and re you know craft it and do whatever they want. But it's very clear exactly, they don't exactly, own the IP. Exactly, you, yeah. you you uh, would they, own the IP. They, they whoever they bought it would own the IP. The IP but, they just can, they do can do literally whatever, whatever they want with it. Yeah, they, they, they can do exactly. Oh, the okay, wait, 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 wait. Here in line, let's run it all the way back to what what I started with. If we just started a, a Web3 music opt-in jukebox that people could even purchase the jukebox for a certain access, low-bearing fruit, mana a day, and you have access, it tracks for the artist what they're missing in Web3, which is plays that they're getting. It gives them an actual tool to use it. And it extends what Decentraland is fucking about. We don't even need to go to the make a whole new space. We need to make a thing and some rights to let people do what we want. Brother, I'm gonna add and you I right now because it's actually in the makings and it's a smart item, uh, a radio, <laughs> so that you can play a radio station and and fuck around with the music that you feed from there. Didn't and that's why, and that's why we're trying to get the license that so music? that you can do it, you know? I'm pretty sure huh? KJ already released a, a, a radio that plays music. Yeah, Am no, I no, crazy? Th th there's already one, but the, the way we, the, what we want to do is we want to create the smart item once we become an illegally constituted company in Europe and we want to release it as, a, as an asset for the company so that it's covered by by the license and whoever holds it can actually fuck around with the music they play on the smart item doesn't make sense you know what else is great? um since i don't have a parcel sticky subject i know another conversation for another time i'm still cranky about it um in the mrt they have a radio and it's great like it was great they had at least one dance channel and that's 99% of the time when i'm in my apartment that's what i listen to so so hopefully soon you will be able to listen to ours bro so well i just shot you a follow if you could let me demo it i'm in and shout out brandon mcnaz out there with his vibe just going mm -hmm. off on the socials he's got a little dancing character if you missed it that's just fuck boy he's hanging out with me too oh oh brandon you're back uh last room wants your feedback on the in-world builder and things that would make a second version and it like a future grant for things they should do to make it better and appeal to your inner nifty island loving self he was really he specifically called you out by name i think he might have gotten your last name wrong but um he did say brandon manis with like an extra syllable somewhere. So just so you're aware, hit him up, check that out. He seemed very earnest and genuine. He's a good guy. He tries his best. It's a little opinionated, a little stubborn. Not 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 characteristics I can possibly tear a person down for having either of, so by any stretch. Um, um, and this week in DG News, they, I, I don't know if anyone has ever heard of the Blaster uh, L2. That there's going to be a new ETH2, uh, L, a Layer 2 in this world, because that's just exactly what we need. But I guess Decentral Games is going to, they won some kind of uh, competition, so they're going to get some kind of like, you know, airdrop funding from this L2. And like, as part of their new relaunch of their casino and wearable nonsense, they're going to be going, part of it will be available on this L2. So if you haven't checked out a, uh, Blaster underscore L2. Uh, they've got a that, that's a thing. They're doing some kind of airdrop. I don't know if there's airdrop farmers here. Uh, every once in a while, I convince myself that's how I'm going to make a buck, and then I give up within like a week because it usually involves a lot of retweeting and chilling. But uh, but I do have a, a sweet referral link that you can go and find on my timeline. Uh, but uh, or you can just go and find it organically. But uh, but it's or you can just use Brandon to get Wisher vodka, bro. Of course, use your use code Brandon Ten, assuming that still works at Wisher Vodka. But uh, but no, but the, actually the blaster layer actually sounds really interesting. Like only I only because like Miles is 
a meme lord, but like he's he and Scott, the founders of DG, are pretty like you know smart cryptoy bros. And I guess the like, what what Blaster does that's interesting is like just having your ETH or stable coins on it will like automatically be yield bearing, which absolutely sounds sketchy to me since generally anything that promises a yield for just existing sounds like a yeah. scam waiting to happen. I I was gonna say, you know, I think BlackFi had a really good yield bearing system too. Thanks. But Sam. um, but, but you know, I don't know. Either way, it's uh, it's worth checking out. Uh, this is not investment advice. This is a uh, this is silly nonsense token farming advice. I I don't I don't advise you to move your currencies there. You can you can get some three hundred tokens just for like you know signing up for their early access the, the chain doesn't even go live until like next week or something i don't know but uh i don't know that's the big thing in dg and the reason only reason i'm even into it is because like dg bought a they bought the, the when they bought their malta compliant license which they still haven't actually gotten to officially clear for their casino but when they bought it they bought it from this like other poker product that had like a token that i didn't buy until again it skyrocketed like two thousand percent and i'm just bitter that i missed out on an opportunity to have my first like two thousand percent increase in crypto so i'm like i'm buying blast i'll buy like at least a hundred dollars worth of damn it because i'm not missing out on a, my the next so naturally since i'm gonna get into it it'll go down because that's how crypto works if i don't buy it it goes up if i buy it it goes down but uh anyway that's i was just rereading about this but it does it does absolutely sound too good to be true because anything that promises a yield of any kind, because you don't even have to stake it. There's no like, you know, pair your coin with this and put it in a pool. You just have it existing there and you get, I don't know what it is. I'm assuming, I hope to God it's a small yield, like a one or 2%. I don't know what the actual numbers are because if it's if it's 10% or higher, that's absolutely scam territory. Cause you know, free money doesn't just come out of nowhere. Though, that's I mean, Bernie, Bernie Maddow. Shit. Yeah, though it's but though it could actually it could absolutely be a birdie man off thing where like they've gotten investors, so maybe they use that investor money to like seed this like you know a tricky so like you know every so maybe it is real money. It's just uh not like gonna last forever. I don't know how it works. All I know is is that generally, well, all my DG assets have gone down. Anytime every asset they stand next to seems to do really well. So I'm gonna try to like get a couple of those. So there you go. That's the. That's Jared's alpha corner. Uh, please don't ever spend more than $100 on anything I ever recommend because generally it's a terrible idea. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you're looking to gamble on some nonsense. Because, like, also Blaster is, like, a, a terrible name. I don't know. But I feel like bad names are the key in crypto. You want a bad name. Like, a good name, you know, that never works. You want something absurd. Like, Pepe, Pepe coin, that's doing great still. Like... So anyway, so. we have moved into a place where you have just continued down a rabbit hole that is so off the st I like it though. <laughs> I mean, thanks. I needed that good coin. Show. It is, it is, um, it is and I'm not adjacent. Any advice from you anyway. So ultimately, uh, we should do a talk show. We'll play illegal music and we'll do it in spatial. So nobody cares. I'm, I'm just down. kidding. Do um, I'm down for your illegal music. Dude, all spatial really needs is a god. I uh, just give me a call. I still have a great house in spatial, and none of you. I don't know. And P.S. Who has even? You haven't even been over to my house. They have poker in my house. I, I don't think you can gamble, but you could probably work something out. And I'll DJ. Can you play? Can you we'll play like fun money poker? Like the poker table works. I mean, I ha I don't play poker. So you just said there was poker. Play. No, there's a poker table, oh, and you could play in the Central Land. Oh, you mean at the in the mm. in the residence tower? Yeah, in my penthouse, my little apartment in my favorite metaverse in the That's world. That's on the 90th floor, right? 92nd floor, okay. gang, gang. Let's go. And I leave my house unlocked in case anybody wants to play poker. But I have cameras. No, I'm just kidding. No cameras. Um, anyway, I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Um, thank you for thinking through tough, tough c concepts and things. It's this is such a broader brush than Decentraland. Like this is the critical concept of what three Web three is. All of these subjects, you know, that aren't really pleasant to talk about. 
but we're fighting for not just us. We're fighting for my two kids and what they're going to be able to do versus what they're going to have to pay for the rest of their, their life for a subscription for, you know, like this is our chance at independence and we can either squabble amongst ourselves over petty shit, which sucks because we don't even want to do it. Or we stand up and we keep pushing forward for what we believe in. And that's why we're here. You give the best more than goddamn disciples. speeches. I am so ready well, now to go to battle against WME. I wasn't even, I didn't even know it. On, um, I'm just saying. We're here for a bigger purpose than, than what this land says. This is about what the future holds. So I really appreciate the hell out of y'all. Sinful Knesset, thank you for holding these spaces, even the tough ones. Um, you know, I appreciate you. And that Harriet, if you don't follow Harriet, I don't even know what you're doing out there because she rocks. Made of sarcasm, wine, and everything fine. That is a really great buy. That is a 10 out of 10 buy. 10 out of 10. I friggin' told you. She's a fucking, she's a rock star. In fact, if I had another high CC, it might be Harriet. We would be fucking, you put me, Harriet, and, and Jer- can you come up here, please, and say hello to these wonderful Decentraland people? Please, if you have time, Beast family, uh, because they deserve to, to have some of that fine wine. Jared, though, that's like, that might be live from the MRT kind of teamwork right there. Okay, I'll follow Harriet because you said so. Our, what's the beast floor at? I mean, it's not, not one financial yet? advice to follow Harriet, by the way. It's just an enjoyment of a good human. I, I got to look at the beast floor because I got I to gotta know if I regret not buying one yet or not. Okay, it's still right around where I, it was last time I looked, so I don't, I don't feel hey, bad. Hey, just yet. wait till we have those uh, link wearables. <laughs> yeah, save me. Yeah, Jared, don't you want to be able to share our pain and c- complain it's about stuff? Then, then you this can be complaining about Link Wearables. solving a fucking problem. What we're, we need to do is change the direction of it, work with all of the parties involved, and make it work. Because this is silly. You, I mean, you have the most diehard people in here. We have permission. We have a team the beasts have done a lot of work. We have some work still to do, but it's like, let's just build a fucking bridge and get this done, fix this, so we can welcome other fucking people. Brandon should be able to run around in his, as his bike. He has earned it. And not to go mint one, because it uh, it's already ready. I'm actually but confused when you... why they haven't done a linked wearable yet. Because if anyone could pull it off, Polygon Because it's a can... pain in the ass. Yeah, but if anyone can do it, Polygon it's not Mind even. Can do it. Listen, Jared, unfortunately, the truth of the matter is it's not safe. I will not bring, I will not bring a single fucking beast a single goddamn time into Decentraland until it is just as safe as going to Nifty or anywhere else as my damn self. This is silly. In this climate, we've all, I've got too many bags. I have fucking eight beasts, eight bit beasts, and, and, and wearables. You think I'm ever going to attach that wallet to Decentraland or anywhere else for no just cause? There's no way that I'm going to make that happen. Oh, yeah. I have like the worst wallet security habits. So, like, I'm like, the Listen, well, that's shame on you. I have one wallet and I because just I've it. already been taken. All of all of my good friends have been drained because we're all here chasing opportunities as creators because that's what freelance creators do. So it puts us at the highest risk for people trying to scam us with opportunity. I never, I never, I so, never, I just assume everyone's lying to me when they want me to. So right, I never... but so there's no rhyme or reason to connect a direct source to your bank account. That's valid. Like, I, it's just the end of the day. It doesn't mean my metaverse, but like, I'm to the point in my metaverse wallet where I'm like, great, I don't want to use it anymore because I have too many things I like. I don't want to move them to my ledger. I'm going to start a new me again. And it's like, great. Now I got to go follow every fucking buddy. Like, there are just ways to make this smarter for like real people. See, 
and where we're not putting everything we do at risk. So there, there is no way in hell that they, we are starting to build an IP like the back end that we need to maintain at a certain speed and pay for that call out at a high level, which is also not the smart way to put stress on NFT projects, you know, servers and what they pay for and how fast they have to be like, you're eliminating so many people who just can't make the calls. That's literally what it said when it should, they said to cancel. And I hate to say it, sitting here right now where I stand, I don't, I don't not disagree with them, but I don't agree with what they said. I agree with that it does not work for this current climate. It's not the best thing to do to welcome special people and we can fix this. And the proof is there's an entire platform that just fixed this. <laughs> so I want to help. I, I have put so many at working hours into this emotionally, physically, socially. <laughs> um, I've asked so many effing favors of special people who do not have a lot of time that are like, just, you know, it doesn't have to be this way. Like these guys have VRMs. We have T poses. We should already be walking through the front door as ourselves as safely as possible without any fucking risk. I mean, the way it works is it just, it's not valid. And, uh, I mean, you know, it's a reasonable I will, stance. I, I will go through the entire process. I'm doing it. I'm going to make it literally a hundred percent safe before they go through the front door. If it comes to the point where there has to be integration with delegate cash or somebody, I might go back and ask and people might say no, because at the end of the day, that's the only effing way. But the problem is there's an API call out that lives on in this subject, a kid called beast that has to be done at a certain speed, which by the way is like way more than it should be. It's like at the end of the day, if I sell a beast, right? They can, they can do a pass through in like five hours. It doesn't have to end somebody's life that they sold something. Um, this is a, this is a broken process. The process should be acceptance, either landing point in the middle, like a token that says you have a, or you delegate it on, on site, which is what I think the smart thing to do is for the entire population. It's like saying as a backup wallet, like I would have so many dope fucking things from the first, I still have, thank God I put my um, first music festival wearables onto my ledger just cause I was like, I really don't want to lose those. And so when I got drained, I would have lost those, but I was forgotten. So if you can delegate a wallet to a wallet as almost a safeguard for your damn self in this day and age where everybody gets fucking drained and you could delegate between those two wallets, that's fixing a solution that doesn't involve them spending money on someone else and it makes the platform better, which is the whole point to why they stop stuff. I'll get off my soapbox, but I have some thoughts. Either way, I'm not going anywhere. I am going to finish this for the beast and for Decentraland and for the good of everybody here. So I fucking love y'all. Fuck I like you, Jared. Let Harriet talk, make. Bye. Bye, make. Or well, see, I, um, GM, GM. I had 10 minutes, but now I think I have one. Thanks, make. Harriet, how are I'm you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I don't think she can hear I'm me. Great. I'm great. After Harriet. all that. Hi. You've talked here before, right? I feel like I recognize your voice. Um, I don't, yeah, maybe. I know Canessa, so um, it's possible. Um, make Ellie Powell wallet is um, air gapped 
and it links to MetaMask and MetaMask reads your Alipal without connecting to the internet. So you could use that, just saying. Um, I'll give you Bloody some information this, but... if you like. I had a space on security and wallets last weekend, last Friday, with Wallet Garden, um, Stacky Robinson and Sarah. It was really good. But um, Ellie Pal, I bought one. It's amazing. It's air gapped. So what that means is you don't have to ever connect it to the internet. Um, and it can point to MetaMask and link to MetaMask and you just put your MetaMask wallet into wherever you want to log into and it'll, it'll act as the um, medium. So yeah, there you go. There's some alpha for today. And no, I don't work for them. I just like what they've got. I've been in Bitcoin for a long time, so I like cold card and I like the air gapped cold storage so that's what I looked for and that's what I found um yeah so I'm getting ready for work so I've got like five minutes and then I have to go but nice to meet can everybody I just say, can I just say hi hi hello uh yeah you uh, I'm just so you know you're already trapped I'm adding you to like three chats <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like you so much. And I, I'm i not kidding. Jared, me, you, maybe Sin, Lil, look, that would be a power hour. Well, let's do it. Poor, poor Sin would literally never get a word in between you and me, Meg. I mean, it already is. It, this is his space, and he hasn't gotten a word in between you and me. So I, I but I mean, I'm down. He um, has the mute button, though. Like, I'm just going to jump in here. Harriet, I can't hear you. I didn't you, think so. so. I, I could see your mic was on, so I didn't say anything. But I don't want and I'm not ignoring you. I don't know what you said, but I bet it was awesome and profound. And hello. Man, I'm going to so cool when they fix I'm gonna drop down and come back up so she can hear me. Vanessa, she's going to drop down and come back up so that she, you can hear her. Oh, awesome. Well, and it's always hard to, like, say, like, uh, am I rugging or is somebody else rugging? And... Yeah, so I figured it's always just better to shut up and tell Sin that I can't hear her. So at least then if she says something, then she can be like, hey, she asked you a question. Well, you you nailed it. You were perfect timing. Testing, testing. Hello, Canessa. Yay. <laughs> I can hear you now. How are you? I was just roasting Make for taking all the time that I had when I only had 10 minutes. And then I, now I've got one <laughs> because he kept on his soapbox. I approve of roasting make. Not too much, because, you know... I know, he's he's one of my faves, so I'm definitely yeah. not going to roast him for too long. His Just most annoying little... quality is how absolutely likable he is, which is like, you know, I, I would kill for that. I'd trade in a heartbeat. <laughs> okay, that's enough love for make today. His head will swell and he won't fit out the door. <laughs> Just but hear me out. Here's my approach to wallet security, okay? I only connect my wallet to things the central games recommends, and I don't keep enough in my wallet that I don't feel like I couldn't guilt the founder into replacing personally. I think this is a killer technique and doesn't require having 16 seed phrases. Uh, I mean, it does mean that my wallet is pretty anemic and it's not worth stealing, but I've, it's gotten me this far. But Make has a point, though, like... When you collect beasts, like he has eight, I have like 11, I think. And if I connected my wallet to some web page, because that's what it is, and lost all my beasts, like seriously, I'd be in a oh. corner crying for weeks, months, years. And oh, yeah, I mean, I would, uh, I would agree that myself. if I had, you know, four ETH worth of cool things worth stealing, I might probably switch up my style. <laughs> exactly. When I tell you that is the, I mean, I paid two ETH for two of them each just i i still think they're worth it i have youths i have beasts um i have some of my favorite people as youths they brought me into this mess um but i'm a beast like creatively raf has dude like raf made me prove that this was a decision for them and and he didn't even know he had to do the dev work and he still stood fucking behind his people. And like, while he's making his own game and people are welcoming him in and putting him on the fucking home screen. And I can't even get, you know? 
it's just it's a it's a bad it's bad timing, but it's perfect timing. It's time to look around of the things that you know what Web three does. It pivots, you know. Like Frank the Gods, wherever this is, that man knows how to fucking pivot, and he knows how to get some amazing people together.、Um, Raph has given us the freedom as long as we stay within the rules and keep it fucking real. And it was a messy start because every cool kid, like influencer, was a part of it, all wanting everything from him and his attention, and everything going wrong. And he instead put together one of the coolest fucking projects、um, that I've ever seen in what I believed in Web three, and that's my fucking per- like my feeling. But it's also like he gave us the chance to work with the entire project. We this shit should have just been done. And I, we didn't even ask for any fucking money. Yeah, no,、uh, I think your point's pretty valid because, like, one of my you know favorite traders, I well, won't name, but they had pointed out that like within you know within a week they'd like already had multiple meetings with like the founder of、um, of Nifty Island, and they've been in you know creating in Decentraland for years and have never had a meeting with like you know Esteban or EML or you know any of the leadership of DCL. So I definitely agree that I think it does highlight a. An issue that Decentraland has, and it's you know. But it's not bad. It's not. They've got enough to deal with. It's about highlighting the things that happen. And again, Nifty's done a fantastic job. They have. That's okay. People can do good. But there are also things to say. Hey, there are some great things Decentraland does, like put in the place, like. Some awareness and a team that says, "Hey, is this the right thing to do?" And that's why it costs money to do it. So you hire that person. I commend them for that. I bang on the drum. But now we also see what it means to onboard a lot of Web three communities and welcome these people. And look, it was a rocky start also for Decentraland. They were bought by all the influencers and all the cool kids, and the money was running. And then it looked like a rug. I got a guy who literally has a a state. They're called estates right next to Rustan's house. He was my first client, and I wanted that land. He's like, it's a you know. He he just never wanted to deal with it. It just sits in his wallet, dead. It, so they have bad feelings too, right? But this is a golden opportunity, and we just ha- saw how well it worked. You know, we gotta open our doors and open our abilities to work with those doors. So, first thing is for us, a either a secondary wallet or a pass through, which is just a no fucking brainer on the site for the safety of Knesset and Sin and you. Where if you don't, you know, right to be forgotten or it's a burner, that's just common sense. And then an easier way in the door, which is some sort of middle layer. Like you agree to let Decentraland read the contract, okay? The contract pulls the API, the data, and it's got to live somewhere easier in the middle. It doesn't have to be this instantaneous thing where if Harriet sells her beast, two minutes later she can't use her link wearable. Believe me, if she sells her fucking beast, the last thing she's gonna go run out to look for is her linked wearable. So it's just about adapting and then pivoting about what is working. And clearly, we've just seen the biggest use case ever of it working. Let's do it. Make I have to drop down to listener. I've got to leave for work in like ten minutes.、Um, pleasure to meet everybody. I will send you the Ellie Pal information because it does what you just said,、um, and have a look at it. I've bought one, so if you need any more info about it, just hit me up. And Sketch is a friend of mine; he doesn't buy it. He's had his hand up for a while. He only buys it sometimes. Like sometimes you just gotta jump in and make sure Mike and I don't get too too mo- too us、uh, much steamroll. <laughs> I、um, I'm definitely interested in what Mike has to、up. say. 
Make I'll talk to you. I'll send you the info. I've got a jet. Hey guys, real quick, mm -hmm. Metaverse Monday. Mm -hmm. We're kicking off Security Month. We'd love to have you come say hi. What time come, is it? Come meet the, send me the link. It's uh, I'll, I'll send you the info. Yeah. You are the best. Thank you for the intel, and I appreciate the soapbox. But this has been a f how long has this battle been? I mean, we're talking about what five months mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. Canessa, thanks for having me. Much love, girl. Keep. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Have a good day. I will. Take care. And sketch a sketch. Later. Thank you for coming up. Thank you for being patient. Uh, I think this is our first time hearing from you. So uh, welcome. How are you today? Doing all right. Doing all right. Yeah, this is your first time here for me, my first time up here. Um, I followed Harriet in here because I saw she was here uh, having a chat. And then when I heard what Make was saying about the delegate wallet and security in, in gaming and, and your asset has a so, higher importance to So before you get too deep, uh, uh, Knessa can't hear you. <laughs> Uh-oh, well, let me uh, jump around. I'll be back. Yep. It's so awesome the way how just perfectly this tool works and that there's never any bugs. Well, it's funny that it's the same bug today. It's like if people come up, I can't hear them. They leave, they come back and I can't. So at least we're getting some stable results. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but why, why would the host want to be able to hear what the people are saying? Nah. That's crazy. Nah. <laughs> I'd say it makes me feel better about DCL cast, but no. Nope. Still, still a better option to be here. Welcome back, sir. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Microphone, check. One, two. Loud and clear, One, sir. <laughs> Thank All you. All right. So, yeah, I was. I'm, I just found it fascinating what he's talking about, especially with the delegate wallet, because I'm very interested in how that works and how you can you know share assets with another wallet and just use that to kind of be your quote unquote uh you know prophylactic when you're out here so you're not just raw dog and you know game fi and uh i'm very curious at what kind of demands or necessities users are are finding or problems that uh are need a solution for when it when it comes to those kind of things Well, in Decentraland, we have land parcels. Like if you're looking at why there would be a delegate wallet, um, well, and I'm not sure if I, this is really a good example, but we have land parcels that we can rent. And so having that um, ability to take the utility of the NFT and transfer that to somebody else, um, that's just a you know passive income stream. I can also do that for my land I can delegate it to myself so that I can build on my own land but it doesn't you know it's not on my main wallet so those are kind of like right now the the ways that really that works mostly what we're talking about is having nfts um, as a linked wearable so it's kind of I guess a little backstory on that is that we could have our kid called beast avatar um, and have that as something that we can wear in world but in order to do that the contract has to go back and check our wallet make sure that we have the nft there reads the api says yes or no if it says yes we can come back and wear it the problem with that is that we don't want to have a valuable asset on a hot wallet we want to have those stored away you know maybe we've got them on you know 10 different wallets so that they're not all in the same place um, and we, but we don't want to be running around with that on our hot wallet. And so that's what makes talking about is getting that to a, a point where it can be safe. And we've talked about like the utility that once we figure it out in this instance, we can use that for, you know, possibly a variety of things, but b bottom line, just keeping it safe so that it's not, you know, not on our hot wallet because in, in this whole idea of having linked wearables and having NFT projects come in, we want to be able to like... <laughs> you know, have everybody, every 
project, including, you know, possible blue chip ones that are worth, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. Not saying that's not what that's not our not the goal here. But the idea is that anybody should be safe coming in, no matter no matter the size of their wallet, no matter the size of their PFP project project. If we can't say that it's safe, then you know, really nobody should be here. Um, and, and it's not even necessarily the question of, is it safe? Like, let's also add, you know, Decentraland is relatively safe, but it opens a very slippery slope to like management of said assets. You know, it's like all of a sudden you got to connect to Decentraland. You're doing it all the time. So you leave your wallet out. It's on the table, you know many things open up it, it just opens up a slew of bad practices you know and at metaverse monday even before we got drained i've been doing that for at least i don't even know how many shows we see and at the end of the day um i've preached every single time to have a hot wallet and i still got that one drained and thank god it was that one because if it was the other one i would have been bust you know and not there it's not just for me this is common sense for for web3 practices let alone we should all be delegating again it works in nifty in the sense that you can pass through that wallet but it doesn't necessarily let you take your claims and stuff which goes back to the dangers of having just anything go you know you claim you know there has to be a process um so there's a lot of things coming out right now people are making for nifty that you have to claim with said wallet and you get you can't use your pass through doesn't necessarily work so there's a lot to be discussed i actually think this should be an internal system where you basically say hey it's the same concept how many names do you have in decentraland that you could use well why can't you at least if you just had a secondary source, you could have, if you got drained, A, you might be more protected. B, you could be, you could be reinstated instead of erased. You know, like that was the hardest part. It came at a bad time because I also lost, but they closed alt space. I don't want to see another platform close ever. It's not fun. You know? Speaking of names um, in Nifty Island, an update to that. I don't know if you were here earlier when I had mentioned that someone had asked about getting Decentraland community incorporated into Decentraland or into Nifty Island. But Nikki Fuego replied to them saying that she'd spoken to Charles, the co-founder of Nifty Island, for those who don't know. And I guess they're actually in the process of integrating the Decentraland community tag, which will recognize name holders instead of just land holders. So I don't know if that means it will also do land holders or not. But name holders should, in the, at some point in the future, be able to have be part of a 50 island community well and you should have a way not to be forgotten and right now in nifty i have three technically three wallets attached to it so therefore if something happens to one of my wallets i get to keep being myself on there instead of having no island start over all your shit gone there's still a chance and i think that is a no effing brainer that we can have a general account that lets us pick and choose what we want to do, including delegate wearables. The difference between now and then with link wearables is none of the blue chips after all the metaverse crash wanted to really do anything in the metaverse. I've been, you know, the flip side is we've just seen that they've all now made 3D assets, at least one, and that there are some great projects who are into it. I let my son build my island. It's not that style isn't for me personally. I like to, you know, hang out with my people. But, you know, that's that is a simple part A to this solution. And part B is a simpler solution for all that should really happen is they should say this should this is how it should work. Here is our blockchain. Here are the parameters of the assets that we are pulling from in this. Okay. Decentraland pulls that data. It recognizes that data, pulls that chain, 
and the, then you're in. That's it. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way because of how it has to go out. It should, it should only be a read process instead of an API call out. It should be a blockchain read. All they got to do is say, Hey, we are querying. I've even learned about querying data. This is how painful this has been. I spent my entire Christmas learning about the process. It, it was painful, Jared. Um, it doesn't matter. All they should have is a reader and then an acceptance from the, from the contract. And that's it done. You cut out fucking all the 90% of the problems. And by doing that, just having an, a re a reader and a contract reader agreement, that's it. So much easier. So I have a question for sketch of sketch, just cause, um, have you been to Decentraland? Have you, um, visited us or had much experience in there? I have visited Decentraland. Um, it was not a hard barrier of entry for me, but I'm pretty tech savvy and I spent 90% of my life in front of a computer. So I'm just used to onboarding into many different things. I By think the way, Knessa can't hear you even after she asked you a question. <laughs> uh oh, yeah, it's just it's rug city over here. Uh, it's yeah, uh, it's just it's uh, being very difficult with us. Maybe it's Karma's people. way of being like, you guys have been at this for five hours. It's time for dinner or lunch, whatever you call it in your part of the world. He yeah. has he has been to Decentraland though, Vanessa. He didn't struggle. Good I'll be your interpreter. <laughs> Thank you. Sketch, I'll have you over. Uh well, I took my daughter skiing. I left at 5 50 this morning and then I drove through the mountains to you know. I really appreciate this conversation. Sorry if I vented. I hope I did not offend the foundation or anybody else, but I really feel like I'm seeing the field so clearly on this right now. And it's, it's great to have some, like I've been in my own head about this project and, and begging for conversations for five months. And so I think I see the field pretty clear. And I, I think there are some simple solutions that would make the platform better. And I think that's what this whole pullback on on funding and how what they're going to focus on this is how we be supportive you know and see what sticks so make are are you are you i came in late into what you when you were talking about about two-thirds of the way through your your first uh part of your conversation are you in the process of creating tools or solutions that will allow for a, a easier safety or, or wallet delegation inside of you. I mean, it seems like we're heading down that path quick, quickly right now. Um, no, uh, what we are doing for a quick recap, uh, Kinesa, Sin, Biometa, um, it, one existence, we all are beast, uh, sinful and we got together and we pulled our energy to get a proposal passed to bring every, a kid called beast, their base head. Uh, lead artist Rustan has carried a lot of weight in his shoulders. We got that approved and we're going through the process. The reality is for this all to work, um, and forget all this, the schematics, but you have to connect your beast, you know, the wallet that your beast is in or however many beasts, and then it has to go and read it. And then it has to, like, you unlock it while you're in Decentraland. It doesn't just become a single asset. Mm -hmm. It's it's basically soul bound to the contract. Gotcha. Uh, there are a lot of hurdles. And the reality is, in this current climate, the, without question, connecting to anything like this, the, the lowest barrier to that is delegate.cash. And that, it's called delegate. I don't like saying links, but delegate um, dot X, Y, Z is what they are now officially. And you basically write a contract between the two wallets that it'll let you read what happens. You cannot send something back to that wallet. So that that also opens another conversation 
about you, you then become your beast. And if you just do delegate cash that nobody could send you a wearable, which is another fail. So that's not going to be quite the solution we have in mind, but it's opening the door to what needs to happen. And it's going to, we're going to do it. So is there, I'm telling is you, is there some concept of like tunneling or some kind of two way delegation? Um, that, that is the, I think that is the, the low hanging solution that I think the central land should adopt anyway for its people. Cause they don't ask for email addresses. There's no recovery. It's like we're walking a tightrope of sanity that once you get tapped and it happens, starting over sucks too. We, sh you know, so if you could just delegate a wallet that says, Hey, here's my shit. I'll let you see it on Decentraland. But it's also like a, a seed phrase for your own self. So nobody could just turn around, steal all Knessa's shit and run around and say she's Knessa. Because we all know her more by her shit than we do her name. So it, it's like, this is a no brainer solution. That's another thing that should be added to Decentraland and it exists now on multiple platforms. Like you either give your Gmail address or whatever, but then you're not, you have proof of self. Right now, Decentraland is 99% stuff is the proof, right? So I, I, th these are solutions in a bigger conversation than I think anybody wants to have. I'm having them because we already opened Pandora's box. So I figured to shoot my shot. Um, either way, I love you guys. I want to go listen to music. Sheesh. My kid's playing the violin upstairs, by the way, right now, and I'm here having a debate about <laughs> friggin' wallets. <laughs> well, thank you, Meg. Uh, like there's solutions uh, at least being thought about. Hey, this is legal copyrighted music. Oh, you're gonna get the space taken down. I, I feel like Elon wouldn't care. I feel like he'd say, suck it at WME. Oh, now he stopped. We made him nervous. Good job, Jared. You couldn't come in quiet. Now mom's got to re-record. Sheesh, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> nah, Elon's pretty based. Uh, I mean, I stream with copyrighted music all the time. I think I can still hear it. Uh, thank you, Make. I really appreciate your time, especially on vacation. And um, I do think uh, perhaps it might be a good time to start winding down for, for the day just to just to go have some dinner. I'm I'm hungry <laughs> um sketch thank you for for coming up here and introducing yourself um you're you're definitely uh more than welcome to join us uh up here and speak whenever you'd like uh and also i mean we're always uh having community events on decentraland uh if you're ever interested in joining us like just uh just jump into my dms and i can send you some like listings from any event pages that may be happening for the day or whatever it may be um and yeah join us on the metaverse i, I don't know what your how your initial uh the central land experience was like i know you mentioned before i rudely cut you off my apologies i'll probably let you finish the thought um you mentioned that you got in but and then uh, I cut you off. Uh, did you ever make it to any parties or or get to do any events, make it to any games? I was I was at a party. Um, it was with a what was his name? Crover nine thousand had a it was like a music thing going on. Um, oh, cool! It was pretty we're, pretty interesting. <laughs> we're we're gonna. Uh, that that's actually happening right now. Uh, like so, after we close down here, probably some people will be uh, jumping over there to True Band Room. Oh, very cool. But uh, but yeah, like there there's always uh, community events happening, and uh, would love to you know would love to have you there, and really thankful that you came up and and spoke today. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm real, really interested in where games can go and where 
these kind of uh, what I like to call like super lobby experiences uh, can be like and what they can uh, have added to them over time. I think it's really uh, some interesting way to interact with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mo most definitely. Like, um, <laughs> uh, like for for personally for me, like um, I say, like metaverse experience is kind of a little bit better. Like, like imagine watching something on uh, like a show on Netflix, like you know, on your computer by yourself, and then like compare it to like watching that same tv show with like a room of friends on a metaverse platform whichever it may be but like you know being able to enjoy that experience together and and kind of interact with each other that makes it so much that makes like the movie or whatever you're watching so much better and enjoyable so i agree that shared shared experiences can can enhance them so uh what's the best way to do that is to lower the barrier of entry of you sharing with anyone regardless of where they are and i think all of these platforms are doing their best to achieve that when it comes to this new way to interact and i, I just can imagine that it will only become deeper and more rich uh I could see a day where regardless of which space you're in, you can travel between them. Similar to being able to travel between apps on your mobile device, right? Like you're in the browser and you can share a link really quickly with X or you can be in X and save something to Dropbox really quickly. Uh, I could see a time where there's the ability to walk through a portal in nifty and it fires open decentraland and you walk into a place and i mean it it really already happens i have my decentraland hideout you know attached to my spatial you could jump through mm -hmm. um you could do it with on cyber and mona uh it's coming together it's is it seamless no because it's they're different platforms but you could go right to like we so not again no shill but for Metaverse Mondays, we start at Spatial and we jump to DCL. We jump to Roofstance HyperFi. I mean, from in world. I mean, it's getting tighter. Right. We having fun either way. I just want to say thank you, also Sketch, for stemming it up and coming in with Harry, who's one of my fam faves. And uh, shout out, little brother, Biometa. I'm going to try and have a little party in my own apartment. See, not in somebody's place, but I have a condo. I'm not doing it at the bar downstairs. So somebody, by the end of the week, I'm throwing a party at the house. I'd love to see y'all. Thank you, Meg. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, and I guess um, on that note, uh, yeah, let, let's uh, start closing down here. Um, Sketch, any final thoughts? No, no final thoughts. Uh, everybody just, you know, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Be good. <laughs> Thank you, Sketch. And uh, I just followed you back. So, you know, we'll we'll be in touch. Uh, Jared, final thoughts? Fancy released a mythic face as made by Doki, the dapper doll. You should all consider getting it. There are only six left, I believe. 200 mana uh it's a, it's a you know it's a gem it's a gorgeous i haven't bought one yet because i'm i'm just a broke little little baby but uh i'm just seriously considering it and uh, everyone else should consider it too that is my uh fancy shell of the week he left so he doesn't even know but you should all think about it knessa got one uh zesty got one and then Fancy's Holt keeping one, and Fancy gave one to Father Finn because I believe it started out as like a Father Finn collab with uh, Doki. That is my final thought. You should all buy things made by Doki as published by Fancy because they're DCL OGs. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. Uh, Make final thoughts? 
Uh, I really, really appreciate you two hanging in there so I can stand as far as I could on my soapbox. I really, really appreciate you two so much uh, and the entire Decentraland community of thought makers, rebels, and grifters. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Biggest love, biggest love. Come debate some more. Security Month begins literally on Monday. 3 p.m. East, Metaverse Mondays. You all like CC better than me anyway, so let's go. <laughs> Thank you, Meg. Thank you. Uh, yeah, make sure to tune in to Metaverse Monday. Um, and yeah, on that note, um, oh yeah, going back to Tuesday, uh, the, the Centraland uh, party. It was a success, everyone. Great, great success on, on Tuesday. Rustan was amazing with uh with like you know taking care of the build and stony uh played an amazing show for all of us and just the vibes were awesome like um like i i was gen i was personally worried about holding an event in a dcl world and then like i was like oh it's okay there's probably gonna be only like 30 people to show up but no, we like peaked at like 65 or 64 um, people on parcel while while Stony was playing. And so that was really awesome. And yeah, I, I don't know if that's the highest number we've gotten on Worlds uh, to this point. Not, not sure yet, but like I know that the limit, at least in the event page, is 100 users. And I mean, notice worlds load up faster and yeah i i i, I don't know I, I i kind of am not afraid of using worlds anymore for events hopefully we start seeing more people use them and uh yeah those are my final thoughts pass it over to Knesset. well you guys that that was i was like speechless for most of the party just because you you got me so good i was not expecting that um yeah and to have like stony you know who is the reason i didn't sell my land like i was literally trying to sell my land and stumbled to a stony party and i heard like my favorite music way back when so to have him there and then he puts on my song and you know like you got your favorite band but then he hit my favorite song of my favorite band and like uh just you know there's no words, you guys. You 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 are my fam. So thank you so much for for all of that. Sin, <laughs> you're nuts. Thank you. Can't believe you put that on. But you got and I can't believe you guys got me. So good. <laughs> <laughs> so so I just realized I got a I, I got a not sketch email. Not at all. Not sketch at all. Hey, I have a tool that can help you scrape thousands of emails from your target audience on Twitter. <laughs> so, I mean, if anyone wants to scrape thousands of emails from a target audience on Twitter, um, I don't know. I'd be scared to hit this guy up, but whatever. Let me Connect know. Connect your wallet. <laughs> think, yeah, think it's easy I, enough I to do problem. with a Selenium web driver on your own, so. <laughs> hey, you weren't supposed to tell anybody about that. I had a coupon code. Canessa, happy birthday. I feel like that was two weeks ago because it's been that kind of week, but. You are the best. It was fun. I have a video of us three dancing, so I'll send that your way. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. And yeah, and happy birthday to Centraland. So those are my final thoughts. Go out, play, yep. have some fun, get some fresh air. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, Crover Space is happening now. Uh, and at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, uh, ABC Decentraland Tours will be live. Uh, and, um, oh yeah, the pinned tweets up at the top, um, a little more information about Yolantis, uh, the, the exhibit that Yolantis was, uh, featured in. If you want to go check it out, hit her up, or, or, um... You know, check out uh, the links that she posted. I am commenting it right now on the comments since, so everyone can take a look at it. And uh, yeah, I'm done. <laughs>